Hello, and welcome back to the Open Chess Anime Podcast. I'm your host, the Anime Collector, promising you that tonight will definitely not be a shit show. Joining me tonight... Maybe. We're definitely on time, guys. Don't worry about it. Yep. Hello, everyone. And Fudno. Yo. And I'm pretty sure we sent the link to Lance, but maybe we didn't. Also, Reese is here. Yeah, I'm here. We did. I'm glad you remembered me. And Greenline. Hello, Morning everyone. Morning, month. I am. <laughs> Believe it or not, it is still July, even though it's been 18 days since our oh, last podcast. I forgot. I'll change <laughs> yeah. my avatar. <laughs> yeah, you guys oh, weren't crap. patriotic <laughs> enough for uh, for Canada Month or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> well, Canada Day is only one day of, of the year, but I'll not still as, change. Not as good as America. Anyway, Weakling. so if you guys would like to support the OCA podcast, there is the OCA podcast Patreon. I would very much encourage you to donate to this because it will make these shows more frequent. (laughs) (laughs) Because uh, although I spent practically every single waking moment, uh, including most of the time I should have been asleep working on prepping for this podcast, uh, I did, in fact, have to go to work a couple of those days. So if we could just bump those numbers up, maybe <laughs> I could kick uh, work to the curb and uh, do this more on a full-time style basis. Also, the Anime Collector Patreon uh, will never charge you, so you could just donate as much as you want. And <laughs> other ways to uh, support us, you can donate to us directly. Uh, you can do the Patreons I showed, and then there's the affiliate links and whatnot. But moving on from there, uh, Random Eleven and I were guests on the As Art podcast. So this is in the description. If you guys are in the description, it's in the uh, it's in the doc. OCAPodcast.com/slash OCA dash two hundred. By the way, this is episode two hundred. Can you guys believe it? Wow, yeah. we've come Incredible, a long right? way. It's, yeah. it's almost like last podcast was one ninety nine. So yeah, I can believe it. Believe it or not, it was. Believe it. <laughs> it's the the double uh, century extravaganza. Yeah. Bicentennial so, um, extravaganza. So Random Eleven and I, I like recorded, double century better. Random Eleven and I recorded a uh, podcast um, with uh, my friend Nick for the As Art podcast. So if you're interested in our discussion on Stranger Things theories and predictions, you can check it out. Um, moving on from there. In tangentially related to Vic Mignogna news. Do you guys remember the Duncan Wentz account? The one that said, you guys are reaching on your conspiracy theories. We totally logged into each other's accounts. And uh, uh, I definitely made up all the accusations and everything. It's totally not real. I reached out to Anime News Network because I wasn't in the best place. Remember all that? That account has been deleted. Oh, we're shocked. Shocked. Shocked, also, to tell you. shocked on the discord uh courtesy of jt unlimited monica real was in corpus christi comic-con uh, she was in corpus soul. christi for corpus christi comic-con uh mm-hmm. over this last weekend and jt unlimited had his uncle call her on the phone while he was uh getting an autograph from her and jt unlimited asked her when is the next episode of the in touch podcast coming out and to summarize her answer, she said that Jamie and her are very busy, but the next episode of In Touch Podcast is still on their list and in the works. You so, brave bastard. Yay. <laughs> just, just like that Ryan Johnson Star Wars trilogy, trilogy. It's still in the works, guys. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's going to be a thing that I'm going to need to... Uh... She have asked her opinion on the OCA podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that... Uh, I really hope that it's not, you know, like next week or anything, because the amount of sleep I've lost preparing for tonight's show is insurmountable. Unparalleled. And I just don't want to have to uh, jump right into that again. <laughs> also, Reese was joking. Don't actually ask them about anything. Yes, please, please, <laughs> legitimately, like full seriousness yeah. here, please do not bother them. Okay stay away from them if you're going to support them if you want to get an autograph that's fine but yeah please do not throw in little quips do not do like that idiot did at that one convention where he called out jamie markey in the middle of her panel he did not look good that didn't make vic look good that doesn't help anybody 
it, actually it helps them. <laughs> it helps them because they can point to it and say, look at the harassment we're getting. So just take it from me, please, especially on our behalf. Do not bother them. <laughs> now, moving on. Anime Matsuri has created a new dubbing studio with Vic Mignogna. Oh, look at so, that, ladies and gentlemen. The pendulum is swinging in the opposite direction, or at least starting to. So I'm going to play. I actually I actually edited it down, the video here, uh, and I'm going to play a super chopped up version of it so we can discuss it. Uh, but just before we look at it, does anybody have any thoughts that you'd like to share about, like, how do you feel about this? This is kind of the thing that I was... Uh, like saying before that theoretically i'm like yeah they should just ha make a studio out of all these like actors that you know aren't uh for lack of better words like cultists that it's like oh you have to be with with us or you're against us or they won't hire you type deal like they these people will hire you based on your merit not on your social check boxes or whatever i'm assuming so i so, do like that idea on i Friends. agree with that from the perspective of um in theory right like in theory this is everything you could have wanted so to speak um in practice i'm a little bit more skeptical so i'm going to play this video um feel free to unmute if you want uh because it when i play it, it's going to mute you guys um just so you know the person that they're talking with is denise lay the um wife of the founder, uh, you know, the co-owner of Anime Matsuri. Uh, in the top right corner is going to be Jacob Takanashi. And of course, you're going to recognize Vic. People have been asking, Vic, when is your next anime? When are you getting back to voice acting? So we created our own dubbing studio. And this started in November. We actually started recording. We built this studio. I don't know if you guys know, but Vic is not just, you know, a voice talent. Vic is an ADR director as well. And we asked him to be part of this. And he just dropped to the floor. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. I'm and, still on the floor, actually. I'm still on the floor. John and I went to Japan. We got to collaborate with a studio over there, Nippon Animation specifically. And Nippon Animation gave us two previous shows to dub in America for the first time. And we are going to be sharing this with you today. Woo! <laughs> Boy, do you have any idea how long we've been sitting on this and how good it feels to finally say it out loud? Yes. What everybody needs to know is that the, the Japanese company created this Yes. specifically and specially for yes. the anime matsuri world premiere that is yes. coming up in a week and a half yes so we're gonna unveil the visual right now for you and not just one show but two shows happening you got it boom oh we have for <gasps> you Yo! Genba oh Nojo. my gosh this is the first time that these guys are seeing this. Oh my gosh. And How this, cool is that? <laughs> and this is Oh Nick my Chimeza. god. <laughs> look at him. It's your boy. They look amazing. <laughs> so, Nippon Animation presented by Anime Matsuri presents Gen Manojo and Zip Shimezo. Mm. Featuring the voices of Vic Manana, immediately mispronounces Jacob Takahashi, Takahashi Morgan Takahashi, Beer, come <laughs> Crystal Laporte, Ashley Nichols, Jeff Johnson, Linda Young, wow, Cynthia Krantz, past that Tiffany really Vollmer, quickly. Haley Todd, Brian Zaki, Karen Sharp, Nola Klopp, and the ADR director, Mr. Vic Manana, right here. And so we are premiering this live for you at Anime Matsuri. Yes! On Friday, on Friday, Woo! July 29th at 8 p.m. And we are premiering this with the cast at Anime Matsuri. And mind you, I have to say this. Guess who else is coming? Nippon Animation themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, everyone out there, all of you that are watching and listening right now, I need you to know something. We love you. And we, yes. we made this for you guys. I want you to know 
these two projects are so beautiful. They are so endearing and and yes. encouraging and fun and funny and beautiful funny. and uplifting. Yes, every new thing you and make is yes, innovative. So Jacob, Jacob did the most amazing job. And did you see that list of voice actors? Yes. There are some amazing, talented people that oh, yeah. have been have become a part of this project. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to say, if you don't mind me saying, Denise, uh, I believe this is the beginning of a lot of new wonderful things. Yes. Um, we this, need oh, the yeah. fans Absolutely. to support it to yeah. do so, to continue Yeah, this, this isn't journey. just like, oh, we did these two things and now bye. No, this is the <laughs> premiere of a lot of things yes. that are yet to come. And, and yes. these two pieces, we have been dying for months to share them with you guys. Yes. And we know you're going to love them. I have gotten literally hundreds of emails from fans saying, are you ever going to voice act again? When are we ever going to hear you in an anime again? Right. And I'm telling you, Anime Matsuri, John, Denise, their staff, Nippon Animation, Jacob, all of these people came together to create something really beautiful. Yes. And I can't wait for you to see it. Yes. And to absolutely. really reiterate on Vic's point, I just want to drive home. Like Vic said, this isn't a one-off thing. Like, oh, we're doing a premiere. And that's it. Oh, AM a a did, did an anime. No, 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 no. This is the beginning. This is the start of a new venture. Um, like I said, we're out here in Japan. We're working on licenses. We're grinding and going and this is just the start absolutely you know? so absolutely. next year at am keep your eyes open for the next one and maybe <laughs> yes. throughout the year who knows and maybe throughout the who year knows? so you guys have to come and support this in order for us to continue doing this because without you this would not have happened in the first place uh, and, and you guys can absolutely probably uh, you know uh vouch for me when i say that the, this is absolutely for the fans Oh my goodness, yes, yes. <laughs> but you know what? I I would wager, Denise, when when yes. people watch these two shows, mm -hmm. they are going to literally be able to feel the passion and the love that we put into these. You know, there yes. are a lot of there are a lot of companies out there that they they kind of do their thing, but there's right. not a lot of real passion or heart. Oh um, no, there's heart behind it all the working, way. I can tell you from working with you guys and from working with Jacob and these other actors and actresses that so much love and passion went into these projects. And that's the way it's going to be with everything we do. It's right. going to, it's going to be the best effort and it's going to be because you fans deserve the best. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Good enough is not in our vocabulary. It's going to be the best. It's going, right. to, point blank, it's going to be the best. There isn't going to be a single take that Vic directs or that I deliver or that I direct or, or any of our ADR people does it say, nah, that's good enough. Let's print. No, 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 no. Every single line, every single time, tra every translation, we are going to put our best foot forward and our best effort towards oh, because you guys deserve Absolutely. that much love and care. Uh, you guys uh, love this and we are honored and humbled to be able to bring this to you. The fact yeah. that we have this opportunity, we don't want to squander it. We don't want to squander this opportunity. So at least as far as I can say, and I know Vic feels the same, any project with the studio that I'm involved with in terms of directing or, or voicing, and the same with Vic, good enough is never going to be the standard. The standard is always going to be the best, the right. best right. that we can do. Right. I want to ask you, how do you feel when you were back in the studio like, and, and working on this project? Well, you know what? I think Jacob can tell you. Uh, <laughs> I came in... Uh, down there to, to to work on Genba Nojo with him first, and yes. he was he was behind the console, and I went into the booth and put the headphones on, and it was the first time that I had done that, in probably, you know, two years, um, wow. and I teared up a little bit, I have to say, yeah, um, it was a pretty emotional moment for sure. It was an emotional moment industry, for you probably. Yeah, yeah, being a part of this industry has been. Uh, such a great joy in my life for the last 20 years that I've been in the anime industry. And, and uh, I love it so much. I love working mm. on it. So it was a, a real, a real humbling opportunity to get back into it. Awesome. But not only Vic, like um, in the, not only, and not only in the studio, a lot of our voice talent with technology these days, uh, we, <laughs> one of our talents recorded in from the Netherlands, for example, you know, right. with source connect these days, we aren't limited to, one area, you know, and that's what's so beautiful about Ooh. recording and dubbing in the modern era is we're not limited to one talent pool. 
We can be a global studio these days, and it is 100% possible. Like um, with Zip Shimezo, majority of the recording was done remotely. Right. The vast majority of that, that film. And just the technology these days is amazing. And it, I personally, I'm really excited about having a global talent pool because there's so much talent out there. So much right. talent, so many voices that deserve to be heard. Yes. Hey, Denise, is there, is <laughs> yes. there going, is there just the one, the one premiere showing Friday? No, it's both shows. It's both shows. No, I mean, shows. I mean, is it, are they just showing Friday or are they yes, going to be yes. showing? We're going to show it again on Saturday in the, in the theater area of the convention, but we are premiering on Friday. Gotcha. Yes. Yes. That's actually pretty uh, ambitious, and uh, I do like the idea of making it uh, a global pool of voice actors. Mm -hmm. So real quick, um, I hate to uh, I hate to play another video. It's not as long, but um, I, I wanted to point out before we jump into our discussion on this, um, I want this to go well. Yeah. Know? I'm very apprehensive about it. Something that Anime Matsuri has done in recent years is John Lay has sort of faded into the background a little bit. Um, here is something that I said on a stream on Hero Hayes channel. Um, God, like in early 2019 sometimes. So I'm going to play this real quick. I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of stuff, for instance, um, with Anime Matsuri coming up. You know, again, I've, I've been in the, the anime fandom for a long time, and I happen to know a little bit more about Anime Matsuri than a lot of people. So when, when Vic was uh, invited to go to Anime Matsuri, it's like, that can be a double-edged sword for Vic. Because on the one hand, somebody's standing up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, anime Matsuri is standing up, and they are extending, let's say, an olive branch. And that can be the thing that is the first domino to fall to other... Uh, conventions uh, like Kamehameha and all them uh, coming back and, and changing their tone. Right. right. Um, but uh, on the other hand, anime Matsuri, uh, the, um, the owner of anime Matsuri, John lay has uh, he's got like way worse stuff uh, allegations against him than Vic. And they have like DMS and whatnot attached to, attached to them that have leaked, you know, huh. um, really weird stuff like him talking to a girl and this the conversation gets into a weird place where he asks her the last time she orgasmed and it just gets really creepy so um i'm just saying that optically um on the one hand there's some good stuff about anime matsuri you know letting uh vic come back and and sort of being the first to allow that to come through but there's also on the other hand we have this weird thing with this sort of tribal stuff where oftentimes when things go on long enough we end up becoming uh the straw man that the anime makes you out to be but what ends up happening is the perspective mm -hmm. of the opposite side ends up seeing things that feeds into that cognitive dissonance and that preconceived bias that quote unquote you know the i stand with vic people are rape apologists and blah 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 yeah. right and then it 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 ends up um uh, perpetuating the straw man rather than the actual argument that, that we're making. So again, that's something that I, that's a conversation I had with here. Hey, on a stream that had been deleted almost immediately after it occurred um, due to uh, some issues. I don't know if you guys saw him um, change the camera over to him briefly. The whole stream was trying to figure out how to get it to switch automatically because the way he was doing the, the Google hangout didn't, provide that um i have it downloaded i'm gonna archive it at some point but um but what i was trying to get at in that conversation is the idea that because the people in this case the anime matsuri reached out to vic and basically held him up during his you know um his canceling uh it on the one hand it's good for vic because a convention stood up to the cancel culture. But on the other hand, it just happens to be the con whose showrunner has way worse stuff. And it's almost a deflection of his own yeah. shortcomings to, um, to bring Vic on. Right. You know what I mean? And um, in the case of anime Matsuri, 
like I said, they've kept sort of they've laid low with John Lay. I, I couldn't help but notice when um, when Anime Matsuri came on uh, that Umbrella Guys uh, channel and did an interview that it was Denise Lay, not John Lay, who came in to do the interview. Um, although in this video, right towards the end, John Lay does show up. So again, I'm apprehensive about this. And it's, look, there's a lot going on with Anime Matsuri. And I just say, you you will be tempted to say, oh, that's just the kick Vic and the boycott Anime Matsuri people making shit up about them. It's not. There's a lot there. A right. lot that if you look into it, you will actually see that they are not the best business partners. And specifically, John Lay has a history of things that I don't want to splash on to Vic. Let me put it that right. way. Okay. Now, I want to I want to start by sort of. Um, I, I want to give you a biblical metaphor. So um, in the book of Genesis, um, you find the story of uh, Abraham. Now, there's a whole thing uh, in this story about um, Abraham and his wife's name changing. And I'm going to I'm just going to use their their later names to make it simple so I can make a point here. Um, Abraham was in his 80s and he had no heir. Uh, his wife was in her 70s. Um, and so they were distraught over the fact that they were getting up in life and he was he was worried that he was actually going to have to leave his estate to uh, one of his slaves. And God um, spoke to Abraham and promised him that his descendants, that he would not only have a son, uh, an heir that would take on his estate, but that his descendants would be so great that they would be uncountable like the stars in the sky. Now, uh, Abraham was a man of God, but he, as time went on, you know, he's only getting older. Um, he uh, continued to worry that God wouldn't not be able to fulfill his promise. So Abraham's wife, Sarah, she had an Egyptian maidservant named Hagar. And as they grew impatient with God, Sarah told Abraham that uh, God had prevented her from having children. So he needed to sleep with Hagar so that they could obtain children through her. Naturally, Abraham fucked that bitch and uh, she became pregnant with a son. Now, Sarah regretted that decision pretty much immediately and she drove Hagar away. While in the wilderness, the Lord came to Hagar and promised her pretty much the same thing that he had promised to Abraham, that because her son was from the seed of Abraham, he too would have a great multitude of descendants. So Hagar returned to Abraham and bore him a son that they named Ishmael. Now, Abraham was 86 at that point, and Sarah was 76. 14 years later, when Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 90, she bore him a son they named Isaac. Now, Abraham's descendants through Isaac were the Israelites. In modern day, they're the Jews, right? And it's said that the descendants um, that he had through Ishmael are the modern day Muslims. So his descendants have effectively been at war for thousands of years because he and Sarah doubted God's promise. Now, over the years, Vic has, uh, has proved himself to be a loyal servant of God, right? He's not perfect, but other than Jesus, what servant of God was, right? And as we wait for the appeals, I really just, I can't help but feel like we're being tested and, and God is testing Vic, right? Like he's in the wilderness for 40 years, so to speak. Which now that I think about it, Moses probably would have been a better metaphor here, but we're going to roll with this. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that I can't help but feel like God is clearly asking Vic, do you trust me? And when I look at things like the Human Animals NFT project, I just, I can't help but feel like Vic getting in bed with them and Anime Matsuri may come back to bite him. So I'm apprehensive about this. I want the best for Vic, but what was presented in that video, I think is unfortunately a lot of hot air. And I'm going to, I'm going to break down why I think that is. So um, let me, let me pull it. It sounded, they, they sounded very 
boastful. Vic and a lot of other people, to be fair to him, uh, do this too, where it's like they try to talk a big game, like a bigger game that is required for like the two movies that they got. It's like, okay, we got two movies. Yeah, so here's the thing. These two movies are two shorts that are only 24 minutes long. (laughs) Oh my, really? Oh, never fucking mind. Oh my God. Exactly. Oh, geez. So here's the response we got. And of course, this is Kick Vic. They're going to give you the response you expect. Here's the, um, here's the list, right? And again, I love how, um, I love how they misspelled, uh, Cynthia Krantz last name. Number one. Uh, I think, um, I think somebody else's name was spelled wrong. Jacob Takanashi was pronounced Jacob Takahashi by mm-hmm. Denise Lay, who supposedly knows him so well, right? Uh, it's just, and it, granted, she's clearly a little nervous to be on camera. And there are parts, if you watch the full live stream, which I've linked in the doc, um, where you can actually hear John Lay behind the camera giving her prompts, like, talk about this, right? to remind her this is the next thing you got to talk about, right? You can hear him behind the camera doing that. So granted, she's nervous. You can't fault somebody for being nervous. It's natural, right? But, um, but these are the, these are the people who are going to be voicing, right? So Vic, Jacob, Uh Morgan Berry, Crystal Laporte, Ashley Nichols, Jeff Johnson, Linda Young, Cynthia Krantz, Tiffany Vollmer, yeah, yeah, wow, that's a name we haven't heard in like forever. Haley forever. Todd, Brian Massey, Karen Sharp, and Nola Klopp, right? Uh, interestingly, Chuck Huber is not on that list. <laughs> right? This is literally the worst possible time for Lance to get to come in. <laughs> Buddy, your camera's on, by the way. Face reveal. Should we turn off his camera? And I, I don't know if I can do that. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till you get your camera switched over to the uh, avatar before I jump you in. Um, so anyway, uh, Mars girl had this to say a Voltron of bad people coming together. So Vic can return to anime was the only way we knew it was going to happen. So that's not surprising, which I love. I, I, I like to reference this as Mars girl makes the, the classic supervillain mistake of giving the hero, the cure, to the curse, right? Let's just come out and say, yeah, it's going to take this. It's like, well, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, all right, so Lance is here now. Oh. Uh, what's up, buddy? Hey, guys. I'm trying to switch over to my Bluetooth. Uh, internet basically shit the bed, so I'm going to be You're here back. while I can. <laughs> okay. Well, we're talking about we're talking about Vic's new uh, dubbing studio. Oh, no. All right. I, I don't know if you've heard of that. but um, I have not, actually. Yeah, so this is going to be awkward because you're going to have all these questions now. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, Mars, uh, well, uh, me and you can talk later. Go, yeah, buddy. We'll talk, we'll talk later. So Mars Girl says that other VAs are on board with either Anime Matsuri or Vic is extremely disappointing. Vic is the ADR director, and this debuts at Anime Matsuri in less than two weeks. Now, in response to this, Monica Rial said this the list certainly makes blocking easier. And I will just confirm for you, (laughs) I checked every one of the accounts and she has in fact blocked all of them. So, uh, so there's that she, she made good on that threat. (laughs) Jeez. She kept her word at least. Now here's a, here's a funny one. So let me know when you get off this train of thought, but I'd like to know, uh, I'd like to go back to the cast list for a a minute when we get the chance. Sure. Let me uh, pull it right back here. Morgan Berry is a part of that list, which was incredibly surprising. (laughs) Was it to me? (laughs) Because I've got this right here. (laughs) Okay. From Morgan Berry. A lot can change from the time you record a project to the time it premieres. And sometimes we have no clue who we're going to be working with at the time. Oh, we're not even a full list of all the people involved. (laughs) Freelance work is unpredictable. Oh, so naturally, trying to save face. Yeah, at the first first sign of pushback. Why does Lance work free? Continue. I was just surprised because, well, now now I'm not surprised anymore. But like I was, it's just like Morgan (laughs) Perry agreed to this along with. Thank you. I guess I could see Cynthia Grant. I suppose, but like she immediately, she immediately, uh, you know, 
about faces, right? Well, now, I apologize if you were going to bring that up later, but no, I, that's all right. I, no, no, no. I, I noticed it. I was like, you're wait good. a minute, Morgan. Like, why? <laughs> so get this though. I love this. Morgan Barry. I'm not surprised to see they've already defended other abusive VAs in the past. Blood in the water, Morgan. <laughs> Oh. Now neither side wants you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Right. So, is that in refer in reference to uh, like Damon Mills or something? No, I don't think so. This was uh, this is the Mars Girl tweet in reply to the Mars Girl tweet with this. Um, by the way. So anyway, um, yeah. So they uh, they've already come out against uh, all the people here. Monica Real says this list certainly makes blocking easier. What a bitch. <laughs> like, I have no seriously. patience for anyone willing to associate with someone like that, especially after they saw what me and Jamie went through. Uh -huh. by yeah. association. Well, that's not even like I went down the list and block. Healthy boundaries are necessary. So yeah, effectively, uh fuck with the click and you and you get burned, right? That's, that's exactly what I was referring to earlier about mm -hmm. like this being a new studio that wouldn't have this crap about like, oh my god. You have to obey the rules, uh, now, which are non-existent or whatever, or get out. Think about this. Let's say that Monica Rial has the pull around Funimation to blacklist all these actors. Oh, no. Where which, are we going to get work? Press X to doubt. But... Right? Like, <laughs> literally, you can drive people to this studio because that's where the work is going to be. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So this could actually help. Anime well, monster, get I, I'm, I was surprised to not see like Eric roll on mm -hmm. in there. Yeah, but maybe the next one, you know, now look, yeah. I, I just want to say about, about the, uh, the video we watched in the full version, which again, I cut down as much as I could. Jacob Takanashi talks about how, you know, he actually, I think it's in the clip, the, the version I showed where he says, you know, everything is going to be, top notch like we're gonna go every single line everything every everything that uh vic directs or that i direct every line that i give right so he says that i direct i think it's possible that vic didn't adr direct solo and i yeah. i might even go so far as to say that anime matsuri for people like look i think i think linda young uh, is probably I, I believe I have reason to believe that Linda Young is not kick Vic, that she is on good terms with Vic. I've seen videos of her driving in the car with Vic in the past year. Yeah, wasn't okay? that with, like uh, Kent? What's his name? What about Cynthia Kranz? Like, I haven't heard from her in a while, and it's like I don't know, damn, but I've been, I, I I've thought... been itching to hear her voice again since the funny leaks, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> she, she's a what's her name? For sure. and, um... Gigi. No, 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 no. And you yes. have to show. Oh, Botan? Botan. Botan. Yeah. yeah. But she's teaching um, a Dragon Ball as well. So, so hold on. I'm Dragon Ball open. Oh, wait. No, is it this one? Yes. Ah, oh, amazing. Amazing work here. Look at me. Pulling a source. All right. Look at that. Oh, maybe I should make it so you guys can hear it. <laughs> That'd be nice. That'd be very amazing. Helpful. It'd be a miracle. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try this. Again. My dear Stacy, I am so sorry that you didn't make it to the Oklahoma Con, but guess what? Oh my gosh, I think you're gonna get better than you might have even gotten had you come to the convention. Yes, it was great. Yes, there were a lot of wonderful people there. Linda Young, <laughs> Kent Williams. I mean some major awesome people and we had a wonderful weekend and we're sorry you couldn't make it tracy was sorry that you couldn't make it too so she thought it would be nice to get you a little cameo but here comes the surprise i'm riding back home with kent what 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 look what's up and look it's linda young You've got all of us in the car together, and we're heading home. And we missed you this weekend. We had a fun time, but we will be back in your area. Am I right? We'll Kent is waving his finger in a powerful gesture of <laughs> definitely. Yes. And, and Linda is chewing a lot of food right now. 
She didn't want me to put her on camera while she was stuffing her face. The freezer face. (laughs) We'll be back. (laughs) See, you heard it. We'll be back. So we love you. We'll see you soon. Okay. Take care. All right. So there's that. And that's just me sourcing that I'm I'm pretty sure um, Linda Young is uh, at at the very least um, indifferent in the in the She's not hungry. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) well that's what I mentioned to you like months and months back, where it's like I bet you there's plenty of people at Funimation and you know these dubbing studios in general who are just indifferent to Vic. They know neither well, good nor bad. They're just like, oh, whatever, I guess. Maybe. Guy- but yeah. I, I would point out that Tiffany Vollmer, Cynthia Krantz, well, actually, maybe not Cynthia Krantz, because she's still voicing Chi-Chi, right? I believe so. But a lot of these people got pulled out of Tiffany Vollmer and, and Linda Young, at least, got replaced, right? Mm-hmm. So um, they're out of the click anyway. But I don't know. I just wanted to share this. I, I don't. Let's see what the chat. I haven't even addressed it yet. Well, wasn't Linda replaced as Frieza like a while, while back? Like this was like forever ago, right? This was like she. Yeah. Oh yeah, she like... was replaced after Z because um, they replaced her with uh, Chris Ayers. Um, slash yeah, because it was Mills. just really, it was just taxing on her voice, is what I read. No, I, um, according to my sister in law's sister in law, who is a vo- voice actor at Funimation. The reason that they that they took out Linda was because they went more Shakespearean with um with Frieza and she couldn't provide the uh, okay the she didn't have the range for it because she still works at uh, or it worked at Funimation as far as I'm aware she her uh, her son is one of the one of the big big wigs over there Justin he he voices T N um I forget his name it's not Justin Cook right? Justin Michael T no no oh, hold on that's not. Justin Dragon Cook's been balls. there for ages. It's not Justin Cook. It's somebody else. I'm trying to remember his name. Hold on. Sean Michael T. That's what I said. Sean John Bergmeyer. That's what it is. John, John, yeah. John, John Bergmeyer. He um he's uh was a head writer at Funimation for a while. So anyway, um yeah, so that's her uh, her son. Anyway, um let's see what I have to say here. Oh my god, there's so many chats. All right. Hello, chat. So Luigi the Metal 64 says Anime Matsuri should better accurately translate the Japanese into English since that is what sells and gets love. We get that Japan is different and anime used animations to ignore the mouth flaps. Okay. Um, I, I think uh, if nothing, like if we can somehow get contact with them, um, I, I want to ask them, are you guys, uh, <laughs> are you guys interested in putting those, uh, those animation esque uh, like, uh, what do you call it? Using terms, uh, you know, the millennial whatever Zoomer oh, terms. Look, I, I, I think I think we can. One thing we can guarantee is that they're not going to go woke, right? Anime and Matsuri would be the last place to to, to no, wokeify their their localizations. I'm not, I'm not, but but I'm in terms of the lingo, like the current year lingo. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know. That would be. Uh, that's what I want. To, that's what I want to like uh, uh, press them on. I want to say. Can we like not do that, please? If we can help it. <laughs> would you want them to, ref- would re- to reply with the shizzle? Mm. Our word, dog. Well, let's let's hear the uh, the dub before we uh, start burning them down I'm just over, over using the shizzle in their dub. <laughs> oh, God. I don't I don't know. How, I, I, I think Vic might actually shizzle. say it. Yeah. Uh, let's come back to this. This isn't. I would be all for Fertigil. I, I wonder what the pay will be like with this global pool. So I bet you a benefit of this is that if you hire people from places where the cost of living is lower, you can pay them less and they're not going to complain because they're getting, you know, they're getting the same amount you they would have gotten if they live somewhere more expensive, you know, and that's going to save mm. anime Matsuri money. There's a lot to this that could be extremely beneficial to um, to anime Matsuri for sure. You know, like this could actually revolutionize the dubbing industry if if everything lines up. You know, I think yeah. the one uh, benefit they have um, because you know dubbing remotely, Funimation was talking about like, oh, it's so so logistically yeah. uh, awful, blah blah. But the one thing that Funimation does is uh, 
Dubcast or whatever they decide to trademark it as, um, mm -hmm. which that puts Simultan. a lot of pressure on on the whole operation. But if this company doesn't bother with the Dubcast thing, they can take whatever time they need to get things right. They don't have to, you know, rush it, rush the development, so to speak, or anything. Mm -hmm. So I think that could work well to their advantage if they decide to just continue with that. Yeah, Sweet Hone Girl 95 says, um, the fact that they are open to remote recording puts them one step higher than Crunchyroll already. Again, they're, they're completely I, right. This, like, so, they have such so a I approached this previously. From. I approached this previously apprehensively about how I hope Vic isn't getting in bed with the wrong people. But you guys are helping me to sort of look at it from the other angle of all the things that the Lord has already lined up to make this a win. You know what I mean? Like... Like th we just reported on this, like you know, like a month ago, about how they tried to unionize the dubbing industry, and now they aren't doing remote dubbing for all these different reasons and stuff. And that actually opens up a tremendous opportunity for people who might previously have been adversarial to um, to joining this to be like, well, it pays the bills. Let's fucking go. I don't give a shit about Monica Real. Why should you? Anyway, that's great. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. We already covered this. I don't know. Maybe you. This might have. This comment probably came before we covered it, though. Um, let's see. Sony plans to be a global, which is basically censoring their works to match other countries' censorship views. Yes. And it is Netflix the lowest. Is owned by Sony, so the lowest common like denominator uh, approach. We would have hey, uh, felt that by now, I think, because Anaplex is owned by Sony and all that, and Funimation is owned by Sony, but um. Hey, who does um, um, just who does Morgan Berry play on My Hero Academia? Uh, I believe she plays. Who does she play? She plays. Um, I just had it on the page. I think she plays the the Lala girl, the uh, La, La Brava. I think. Oh really? Yeah. Is she even still in the show? No. No. <laughs> no, she plays thirteen. Morgan play, Morgan Berry plays thirteen. Oh, thirteen. Excuse me. The one who just did. before you guys. Continue. Um, Christ, Lance, Lance, what are you doing? Can, can you mute your mic while you're in your I'll, kitchen? I'll mute him. Jesus. Morgan right. 13 is the one who looks like he's in a, wearing a uh, space suit all the time. Yeah, is the, the astronaut. The, the black hole hero. Or whatever wow, how often does that space character show up since hardly, season one? Uh, not hardly at all. All, yeah, all right, um, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> it's going to be in the sixth season coming up, so... She's in a she's Moroha and in, in the Inuyasha. Uh, oh, Moroha. Yeah. Uh, in uh, the what? Yashihime. What is the new Inuyasha called? It's called uh, Yashihime. 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 Yeah. All right. Anyway, um, so that'd be interesting. That'd be interesting to find out if uh, if they actually cancel her. Right. Well, and it's funny because I I was watching the only thing I remember her from Funimation aside from Thirteen, oddly enough, is Funimation's stupid woke ass like three years ago pride thing where Morgan, I think is gay or something like that. And so that she was, no, no, I think uh, Morgan eventually became a, they, Oh, right. Never yeah, mind. I think, uh, yeah. Oh, she, she plays Nefria in, uh, over uh, they play. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So, um, uh, I will come back to your Luigi, the 64. I'm going to come back to this comment. Cause we are going to cover that tonight. Um, I'm going to start, in fact, so I don't forget. Either way, it's still funny to see Kick Vic meltdowns. It's great. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm I'm actually much more optimistic about this. Ha <laughs> having uh, having talked to you guys, I'm glad I'm glad you guys have steered me more to the optimism <laughs> side. Um, nobody saw what Monica and Jamie went through. They never saw what Getty Lee's parents went through. <laughs> this is not a proper correlation, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love how often it gets brought up. We know they lied since there is no proof what Vic did. Johnny Depp won with solid proof. Yeah, and now and now people are claiming that Johnny Depp won because of Twitter bots. Yeah, that's uh -huh. why. <laughs> Nostalgia critic must be happy that Mars Girl is away from him. Um, you know, I think he always has to keep an eye out behind him just in case her arms are there, though. Oh, my God. I wish Vic Mignogna hugs and handshakes. Kids do that. Veronica Taylor did a similar thing to me. I have no regrets meeting her. 
The whole keeps bringing that back up. Like he actually <laughs> is traumatized. And he's trying to like Veronica Taylor has him locked up in her basement. And he's just like, <laughs> Mars Girl must have no idea what Voltron is. That is like if Sean Chema were to say a Metallica of sushi lovers. So I love somebody in the comments said uh, in reply to it, which one is the ass in this Voltron, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, in this Voltron, who forms the ass? <laughs> no, I, uh, I think she please. uses it somewhat uh, like accurately, you know, combining multiple forces together into one big force. Yeah. I'm sure down the road, Vic would want to bring in people like uh, Ezra Wise, who have still had his back. Oh, I'm sure. Look, I'm sure that Vic, you know, down the line, like we're going to, this is going to be the line in the sand that finally makes people pick a side, so to speak, you know, because it's easy to not, to not work on Vic's projects because he doesn't have any, you know, but right. now that opportunities are there and money's on the line and people have opportunities to you know record remotely it opens up a huge world of opportunity for people um to uh, get away from the funimation click that has been so toxic you know so uh so jt loves code Leoka says uh if ezra gets involved with vic miraculers will go ballistic oh is that is that why they're from um miracular miraculous ladybugs or whatever uh carry Karen. I don't trust people at Amy Matsuri, so I don't trust this dubbing company. Um, yeah, I'm I'm apprehensive at best, right? But I am optimistic that the people whose well. hands it's been put in, because it seems to me, and this is this is something I've been I was talking to Fudim about. Um, I reached out to Anime Matsuri, though they of course didn't reply. Hey, Do I think I know why we can Here. get a response. Remember if you email uh, Vic. <laughs> remember to uh to go like and uh and retweet this post <laughs> i just posted it in the chat um but uh but basically i asked anime monster are you guys planning to distribute gen Bonojo and zip jamezo on dvd or um and blu-ray and if so are you looking for people to join your team doing packaging design and whatnot because i feel like there's a possibility I feel like there's a possibility that I could get Fudnam a job working remotely doing this and that would be freaking cool right that especially would. um especially okay uh my wife just sent me a text it says ignore okay <laughs> anyway um <laughs> so uh i, I think uh, i've totally lost my train of thought now um well what i was gonna say i guess is uh i think when it comes to vic anime Montsuri gained access to somebody who's a pro a veteran in the industry who knows how to do the ADR work and the, and probably the sound mixing and all that stuff because he was canceled and hung out to dry. Dude, I'm not, some of the I'm mixes... not sure. I'm not sure that they're going to be able to get people to do the packaging design and, you know, authoring for the Blu-rays and all that <laughs> stuff as easily. So I'm hopeful that maybe, you know, Maybe we can steer them in the right direction because the last thing I want is to not be able to support these DVD and Blu-ray releases I hypothetically mean, they because the right they're fucking enormous time. Voltron uh, Garfield sets. You know, they like, make literal <laughs> Voltron pieces <laughs> <laughs> with anyway. one DVD that has four episodes in each piece. Or it would be even worse if they release Gambonojo and Zip Shimezo together. Which is what I expect them to do because they're twenty-four minute you know, yeah. shorts, yeah. a double yeah. feature. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's that's uh, what I'm sort of thinking. Yeah, they there. call the release Matsuri Movie Night or something. Oh god, shit. that would be terrible. <laughs> so this is why you need to hire us, Anime Matsuri. <laughs> you guys saw in the clip for me on Hirohei's channel. I, I haven't had the backdrop uh, in a while because all my shit is in uh, storage unit. But um, I, I've been collecting for like twenty years now, so. <laughs> Anyway, um, moving on from here. Oh, I was still in chats, wasn't I? Um, also, I got Monica Ray's, Monica Ray's autograph. Yes. We, we By the way, uh, in that. regards to Vic, probably knowing yeah. how to, you know, mix the audio and all that. Um, so many of the, the anime that I've watched as of recent and all that, the mixes are like, you know, some scenes it's like, oh, I can barely hear the dialogue. So I increase it. And then later on, it's like, oh, it's sufficiently level, so now I have to, have to de decrease it. You have to play this game, and then the explosions are way louder. Blah blah. blah. So I'm just sitting here, like, honestly, well, who, yeah, but who knows? Who knows specifically who mixed that one? 
Yeah. I don't know, GD. but all I'm saying oh. is all I'm saying is that if that passes their quality, their Funimation standards, mm -hmm. I could probably right. have a shot at doing that too for this company. <laughs> what did uh what did Monica sign JT? Uh, was it the froppy uh picture that she was holding up? What's up? Oh, in the I'm, in the I'm asking JT what what Monica signed in the uh <laughs> On his, his uncle's thing. chest on his behalf? I don't know. <laughs> uh, that was here. I would also just like to point out that... Uh, I thought so, yeah. Cool. Vic was acting like a... Uh, he, he was taking the role of the cringy... Uh, convention he was. panel uh like i bet yeah, like he just like he does he's, he's like, like this over embellishment of just like yeah he, he's like oh you know they don't have a live audience to hear feedback so i'm gonna be that cringy audience mm -hmm. that i normally have <laughs> during my panels <laughs> yay <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're making me relive a, a horrifying experience i had with um what's the voice of gohan um the adult gohan um, fuck Kyle oh, Haybear. 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 Yeah, when he Eric. did uh, no Eric Bale's trunks. Kyle Haybear um, hosted uh, AX Idol one year, and I never went back. <laughs> it was so cringe. Oh, it was that bad. Damn. <laughs> I, I, to be fair, I feel like he would. I think it was dumped on him at the last second, and he okay. agreed to do it. And if that's the case, he did a tremendously good job hosting. But I felt like I was at a pep rally and it was cringe as fuck. Like, <laughs> anyway. And it was also because, like, the, the venue that they had it in that year was, um, like, the fold-out chairs. Whereas the first year I went, it was literally in the Staples Center. Where we were, like, at, like, a fucking opera house, you know, kind of thing. So, anyway. Um, Sweet Hone Girl had us covered with John Bergmeier. I uh, should have just read the chat next time. <laughs> uh, yeah, we already covered that. Uh, JT, let's go. The Oko Rush is a lot more pleasing to listen to than Monica and Jamie. The rape fucks. Wow. <laughs> hey, uh, that, that's his words, not ours. But <laughs> Jordan Avant says, I have never heard it put that way. This year. Me too. Veronica is a fine woman. I am year. actually okay with her. Blink twice if there's a gun to your head. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, SpongeBob did a good job at even track volumes when characters scream. Oh, that's good to know. I, oh, <laughs> I'll check about the that. Show. I'll, I'll be sure to listen to it next time. <laughs> All right. So moving on from here, do you guys have anything you want to say? Um, oh, actually, I, I pulled up Nippon Animation so we could look at the potential things that they might have access to. Oh, I um, have I have one thing that I I failed to bring up earlier on, and I don't know if you have the earliest thing up open still, but on the sidebar, it said, uh, "Future Detective Conan coming to 4K DVD." Oh yeah, that triggered. That me. was uh, that was um, this one. Yeah, I I also saw that. Where is it? Uh, where the fuck did it go? Rip, rip. It's on it's on this uh, page. This is a uh, clownfish. Well, they're ripping on the DVD uh, um, website. Shout out to them. Shout out to those alt-right Nazis, according to Michael Tool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, so Nippon Animation. So um, I've highlighted these, and I've highlighted them in different colors, uh, depending on if it's already been dubbed by another company. And I, you know, kind of thing. So, uh, excuse me. So 8-Man TV uh, has been dubbed. It's extremely old. I think this is from the 60s. It's in black and white. And it's cringe as fuck. Like it dubs funny. that version. It's so old. If this is the one I'm thinking of, I mean, if it's eight, if it's eight man after, then it's already been dubbed. Wow, this is sure a great internet connection I've got going on right now. Anyway, yeah. um, 80 days around the world with Willie Fogg has partially been dubbed, but not the whole thing. Uh, and by the way, I'm only looking at the ones that say production, uh, hmm. because that means that they probably have licensed. Uh, ability yeah. uh conan the the boy in the future movie right um corrector yui the dog of flanders has already been dubbed so is dog tanyan uh but not the dog of flanders tv to my knowledge so that's something we might we might be able to to get them to get 
Dragon Quest Saga Emblem of Roto. Fantastic Children. That's already been uh, been dubbed. Future Boy Conan TV. That's coming out on a 4K DVD. Um, <laughs> Grimm's Fairy Tales has already come out from uh, uh, Discotech, and I'm sure that's already dubbed, right? Hikara song, yeah. Here Comes Miss Modern, movie one and part one and two. I know Nozomi got that. The Harp of Burma. This was uh, released in uh, like a compilation set that was released, I think, by Genion. Uh, Hunter Hunter, the OVAs. That would be nice to finally get over here, especially since they like to uh, to do these twenty four minute, you know, shorts. Like well, I, I say, we push on those. <laughs> well, I'll wait. The, the I'll OVAs, wait for them to actually come out with the old TV series release oh, altogether first. The OVA. That's. The uh, Greed uh, uh, Greed Island. We got Green Island, Green Island final. OV is that the pilot? No. All of this comes after. Oh, that's wonderful. It, it's it's like oh, yeah, three so it is it is things. the uh it is the sixties. Nineteen sixty three to nineteen sixty four for eight man. Cause for Hunter Hunter, there's only the two OVA Okay, so no, may, the, no there's, three. there's three here. There's I this one. The it's, it's got um, no, no. Cholo Lucifer. Uh, the uh, what is it? This group called again? The There's Spider Gang, Phantom, Phantom Troop, Phantom Troop. Yeah. You. So yeah, this has eight episode titles. <laughs> That's for this OVA. Okay, uh, let me break this down because I own this goddamn thing. Thank I you. it's eight. It's like eight, eight, and ten or something, and they all come after the TV. There you go. I thought there was only the two. Uh, uh, hmm. No. BTFO. Anyway, so Jungle Book Stone and Mowgli, that was released by Shout Factory. Most of these things already have a dub from ages ago. Like they were dubbed and they were serialized on TV at some point, and then they got released on DVD by Shout Factory later, right? Uh, Legend of the Condor Hero, that has a dub for season one, but not two and three. Oh, yes, you're right. Uh, let's make a mug two. This is um, like a really recent, this is that DIY uh, anime. Yeah. That just came out. Um, that, as far as I know, has not been dubbed yet. Uh, Lock the Superman, the movie, uh, and OVA, I think, have been dubbed, but not New World Command. Um, Mahojan Guru Guru movie and TV series. That could be interesting. Maya the Bee has already gotten a dub, I believe, uh, but no physical release. Um, New Adventures of Maya the Bee, which is like the, the more recent sequel series, um, uh, is up in the air as well. Um, then that's the Grimm's fairy tale Papua. That's already got a dub. Uh, Rascal Raccoon, Raccoon Rascal. That's that's something they could get. Shaman King special. I don't think they would get that, uh, but that's something I don't think we've had over here. Uh, Vicky the Little Viking episodes 53 to 78, but that would be cool. I think that has a that has a dub in Afrikaans. I don't think it has a dub in English. Huh. I'll have to check. The Wallflower, that got released by ADV. Anyway, and so those funny. are the ones that stood out to me. Um, also, they did in-between animation on Yashihime, but I don't think that has anything to do with Morgan Berry being involved. Viz isn't going to let that go. Right, of course. Anyway, so let's see. What have we got here? Vicky the Little Viking. English cast, none. Yeah, I don't think it's been dubbed in English. Um it says it's licensed by Studio 100, so maybe they don't have. Uh, well, maybe for di for physical distribution though, versus internet streaming, maybe it's still up in up in the world. Anyway, so that's it for that. Um, so uh, Shinzo Abe got assassinated. <laughs> <laughs> in other news, <laughs> not not as important as Victor in his own studio, but in other news, I, I just need to remind you guys that I have a tremendously stellar track record for not making people's deaths awkward. Yeah. And I am going to go further beyond tonight <laughs> because I started to research this. There's a reason the show has been delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed, even till today, delayed. And it's because of this topic. Now, this is very serious. I feel tremendously bad for Shinzo Abe and his, and his uh, widow. Um, but every single thing I looked into on this just got funnier and funnier and funnier. So I'm going to showcase. I, I'm not prepared for this, by the way. We just, it literally came down to the wire. It was like, fuck it. We got to go live. So uh, it's going to get, it's going to get wild. I'm just letting you know. 
Uh, so full screen me, bitch. All right. <sighs> Japan's former prime minister, Shinzo Abe, was shot. Quote, I was discontent with him. So. So Japan's former prime minister, Shinzo Abe, has been shot whilst giving a speech with the suspect allegedly using a homemade shotgun and immediately causing many to theorize the motive behind the attack, as such violence is rare in Japan. The vicious attack occurred whilst Abe was giving a speech in Nara City, and it was believed he was shot in the chest and neck from behind with a homemade shotgun. 41-year-old male Tetsuya Yamagami was believed to be the assailant and has now been detained. Now, just real quick, um, they misspell his name as Tetsue in a couple of their articles on Sankaku Complex. It is Tetsuya, just heads up. So uh, Abe was giving a speech as the election uh, for Japan's House of Councils was set to take place on July 10th, and it is said that he entered into a state of cardiopulmonary arrest while being escorted to a hospital. Now, just a heads up, I saw this from um, Tim Cass contributor Adrian Norman said, former PM appeared to be in cardiorespiratory arrest, a term used in Japan indicating no vital signs and generally preceding a formal certification of death by a coroner. Now, um, you'll notice that he said cardiorespiratory instead of cardiopulmonary, but in the replies, somebody pointed out cardiopulmonary is a more proper term. So I think that's what he's talking about. That's the, the proper way to translate the Japanese that was um, clarified here, okay? Let's see. Uh, law enforcement say that Abe was able to respond after being shot before then falling unconscious. Let's see. Witnesses in the area mentioned hearing two gunshots uh, one to two minutes after Abe's speech commenced, with the former prime minister then collapsing whilst covered in blood. Others also mentioned seeing the suspect wearing some form of headgear before he walked up behind the prime minister. So far as I've seen, the killer isn't wearing any headgear other than a face mask and glasses, and he doesn't really walk up behind Abe so much as he moves from the street corner into the middle of the street to line up a shot behind him, but whatever. Uh, the Ministry of Defense officials learned that Yamagami was a member of the Maritime Self-Defense Force for three years around 2005, and Yamagami testified saying that he was discontent with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and decided to try and kill him. Now, um, what the fuck? I just lost my, there we go. Um, uh, this particular article doesn't say it, but as we now know, he did succeed in killing uh, Shinzo Abe. So. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was just an attempt at first. And then, you know, we confirmed that, oh yeah, no, he's gone. Yeah. I mean, like, oh, it was oh. at first. It was an attempt. It just right. it succeeded. <laughs> So uh, interestingly, all five major Japanese newspapers use the exact same headline with the exact same wording to report on Abe's death, saying former Prime Minister Abe shot and killed. So I thought that was kind of interesting. You don't see that every day. There's a couple more where people are pointing out like one character difference and whatnot. But what do you mean you don't see that every day? Fun, <laughs> fun person behind the scenes and all the, all of these. Come on. What? Okay. <laughs> you don't see uh, Shinzo Abe murdered every day. <laughs> yeah, but he's like all, all major newspapers have the exact I, same wording. All major, in Japan, this is yeah, in Japan rate. maybe, but okay, yeah, come I'm on. just saying. Um, you don't see that every day, <laughs> especially due to the uh, yeah. Well, we see it every day in the U.S. because they they read off the same script that Media Matters provides. But uh, anyway, um, back to uh, back to this. So um, let's see. Uh, hold on. No, actually, I want to go here. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so um, Nichiban reported that Shinzo Abe was struck twice by the second round fired from the suspect's homemade shotgun, once in the back and once in the neck. When medical assistance first reached Abe, he was reported to have been responsive, but became unresponsive when CPR had begun to be performed. When he was loaded into an ambulance, it was reported that his heart had stopped. Uh, when he arrived in the hospital, he was actually resuscitated, but was later pronounced dead. So, um, so NHK 
actually confirmed that Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe had died after he was shot at around 11.29 a.m. in the morning. So he was shot at around 11.29 a.m. Medical professionals at the Nara Medical University Hospital where Abe was airlifted to by helicopter following the incident told the media that Abe was shot in two places, his neck and upper chest area. Abe was said to be showing no vital signs upon arrival at the hospital at 12.20 p.m. Uh, He was in a state of cardiopulmonary arrest and suffered a subcutaneous hemorrhage from his wounds. Doctors attempted to stop the bleeding and conducted a blood transfusion of 100 units, but they were unable to save him. He was pronounced dead at 5.03 p.m. Okay. Okay. Hidetara Fukushima, the doctor who treated Abe, said the gunshot wounds were located on the front of Abe's body, and though the bullet wounds were small, the heart was penetrated, causing serious damage. Videos from the scene of the crime show the shooter approached Abe from behind, but it appears that upon turning to face the sound of the gunshot, Abe was hit at the front of his body. So um, I'm going to play this video for you guys. Uh, I've decided to do it. By the way, did we ever um, let Lance get unmuted he's not even here okay (laughs) i guess i'm not gonna unmute himself at some point all right i'm gonna play this video viewer discretion is advised it is not actually very graphic uh but you are watching a person uh attempt to murder somebody else You can hear the people who have no fucking idea what's going on because gun violence in Japan is so exceptionally rare uh, that they resort to crossbows and swords usually. <laughs> so, Yeah, when, when you first sent that, I said, what the hell is happening? Is he shooting a cannon? <laughs> what's and a homemade then, gun? <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, yeah, well, it's yeah. an improvised uh, friggin' weapon. Explosive device. Improvised adaptive <laughs> I love, I I just have to embrace how bad we are at, at, at like somebody fucking died here, <laughs> and it's the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> so Fukushima says there were two rounds at the base of Abe's neck and a wound. I'm sorry, there were two wounds, not rounds. There were two wounds at the base of Abe's neck and a wound on his upper chest area near his shoulder. They were unsure how the heart was penetrated, and though they were unable to find any remnants of a bullet inside his body, it is believed that a part of a bullet flowed from one of the damaged veins and um, from one of the damaged veins to the heart, causing the penetration. A team of around 20 doctors treated Abe, conducting open heart surgery to locate the site of the bleeding. Though they were able to stop the bleeding in the large blood vessels, the loss of blood was too great, and he never regained consciousness. Fukushima says Abe's wife, Akie, had been informed of his condition and arrived at the hospital shortly after he had been pronounced dead. After he had been pronounced dead. He was shot, once again, at 11.29 in the morning and pronounced dead at 5.03 p.m. That's almost six fucking hours that his wife wasn't informed of his condition or able to see him. Now, I do believe that Abe lived in Yamaguchi and the drive from Yamaguchi to Nara is about six hours, but I imagine Abe's wife should have been flown there immediately. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't. And I that's mean... just, that's presuming that she was in Yamaguchi and not with him in Nara, you know? Regardless, it sucks. It does so. indeed. At the same time as the press conference at NAR University Medical Center, the police involved in the investigation found possible explosives in the suspect's home at around 6.30 p.m. They asked nearby residents to evacuate the area as they continued to carry out their investigation. As of, uh, let's see, at roughly 10.30 p.m., the excavate. God damn it. The the evacuation order at roughly 10.30 p.m., the evacuation order around the suspect's apartment was lifted by the police. What were thought to be explosives have possibly turned out to be more homemade firearms. 
as you can see, this one appears to be a nine barreled variety, which is a bold strategy for the killer to limit himself to only two shots with the weapon he actually brought with him. But I imagine it would be far more difficult to conceal this monstrosity. So I guess he went with the one uh, that he thought he could win with and uh, succeeded. Anyway, so back to Sankaku Complex's article here. Let's scroll down. <clears throat> Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno was quoted saying, quote, a barbaric act like this is absolutely unforgivable, no matter what the reasons are, and we, uh, and we condemn it strongly. Shinzo Abe was the longest prime minister to ever serve, holding office from September 2006 to September 2007. That's so long. No. And then again from December 2012 to September 2020, only to then step down because of chronic health problems. If you guys remember, it was uh, ulcerative colitis. Um, now, uh, this is actually like, you know, 2012 to 2020 is only eight years. Um, but uh, literally before he was, before his second term as prime minister, they referred to the prime ministers as like, there was like a revolving door policy happening where every year they were switching out. So um, him hanging on for eight years was pretty fucking spectacular. Now, uh, China's legion of hateful drones were quick to wish death upon the prime minister, perhaps in hopes of boosting their social credit scores. So uh, the Daily Caller tweeted out, users on Chinese social media platform Weibo are celebrating the assassination of ex-Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. They are praising the assassin and sending death wishes to Abe. So there's that. Uh, now, we've also got this. Twisted beyond words, a bar slash dance club somewhere in China did this to celebrate Abe's death. Are you guys ready for this? I mean, come on, that's Whoa. fucking funny, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just love that they, that in a matter of hours, they whipped up those graphics. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking funny to me. Wow. <laughs> Are we going to get copyright flagged? No, I tested it already. <laughs> Another dance club in China had a good day written on each side of Abe's photo here. Right. Oh, continuing, uh, we've got this one. This Chinese tea shop says uh, to commemorate the murder of Shinzo Abe, buy one and get one free. Oh my god. Let's see. Uh and then let's see, I got more. Oh god, yes. Oh somebody <laughs> sculpted the assassin in Zebrush <laughs> and is oh selling it god. as a figure for 128 won, which is uh about 19 US dollars. No, that's not I mean, a bad price. <laughs> it's so fucking awful, but it's also fucking hilarious, right? Like this, this is the world we live in. They <laughs> they got his fucking like nose poking. Oh, it's too fucking funny to me. So why do the uh, why do the Chinese hate Shinzo Abe so much? Are, is anybody wondering this? <laughs> Uh, uh, are you, do you have an answer? Yes, I wonder. <laughs> do you guys remember? <laughs> I, I you guys would remember have no in idea. Podcast 43 when we uh, talked about the company known for Pokemon cards being under fire for a tweet about visiting Yasukuni Shrine? No. Yeah. You, we've covered Yasukuni Shrine like eight times <laughs> since we started the well, podcast. Why'd you ask the question if you thought you knew the answer? <laughs> All right. So I heard that visiting Yasukuni Shrine is one of the many reasons why Chinese people hate Shinzo Abe. So I looked it up. Uh, just I just had to share this with you because everything I read about this was fucking funny to me. And it's so awful. And I'm sorry for being such an awful person, but it was too fucking funny. So first of all, Yasukuni Shrine is a Shinto shrine located in Chiyoda, Tokyo. It was founded by Emperor Meiji in June 1869 and commemorates those who died, 
including war criminals, in service of Japan from the Boshin War of 1868 to 1869 to the two Sino-Japanese Wars to the first Indochina War. The shrine's purpose has been expanded over the years to include those who died in the uh, in the wars involving Japan spanning from the entire Meiji and Taisho periods and the earlier part of the Showa period. So basically fucking everyone, okay? Now, first of all, uh, it was it was founded in 1869 to commemorate those who died in the Boshin War that was the year prior, 1868 to 1869. Now, the Boshin War, where are we? The Boshin War is sometimes known as the Japanese Revolution or Japanese Civil War. Uh, you guys remove. You guys remember the movie uh, The Last Samurai? Uh, yes. I remember you made Begley. a review on it. Yes. So that I, movie, I haven't seen that review yet either. That movie technically takes place in 1876, but the guy that Tom Cruise's character is based on was a French officer named Jules Brunet, who was sent to Japan in 1866 to train military forces, um, and he ultimately ended up fighting in the Boshin War. So. Basically, think about the conflict that happened in The Last Samurai. That's what the shrine was founded to commemorate, the lives of the Japanese who died in that civil war. Okay? Now, the shrine lists the names. The shrine lists the names, origins, birth dates, and places of death of 2,466,532 men, women, children, and various pet animals. Among those are 1,068 convicted war criminals, 14 of whom are A-class, which means that they were convicted of having been involved in the planning, preparation, initiation, or waging of the war. Now, first of all, I just want to point out that 1,068 is only 0.04% of the names that are listed there, number one. And had Japan won the war, I mean, we wouldn't even be having this conversation, obviously. That's just how things go. As they say, you know, when it comes to, like, uh, conflict, it's like, uh, if you win, it's a revolution. If you lose, it's an insurrection kind of thing. So anyway, uh, to put it into perspective, though, um, I I really like the idea that at some point we come together, uh, the whole world comes together in the name of world peace. And we create a monument that lists every person on record who has ever died in any conflict so that the world can just see the toll that war has wrought. And so people come from all over the world to appreciate this massive monument to putting aside our differences. But then some guy notices Hitler's name (laughs) was also included and a riot breaks out. Right. And it just like leads to World War Three. Like that's that's I like I like this future i am putting out into the universe because that would just be the funniest fucking world ever <laughs> even funnier if it's, it's like not even real hitler it's um that guy from namibia adolf hitler Unona. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> god that would be funny <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, that's basically what's wrong with the shrine. It includes the names of generals and people who initiated the war. That's why it's taboo. So what exactly did Shinzo Abe do regarding the shrine? Well, if you click on controversies surrounding Yasukuni shrine and you scroll down to Shinzo Abe, you will see under Prime ministerial visits. Uh, Obviously, visiting the shrine while in the capacity of prime minister is seen as the Japanese government honoring war criminals, right? So it's uh, it's not exactly it's not exactly the same thing as Joe Schmo doing it, who nobody cares about. But if you're at the fucking company that makes Pokemon, then fuck you. (laughs) They'll get you. (laughs) So anyway, um, let's see. So as you can see, it starts by talking about um, Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumi, and then it goes into Abe, right? So Koizumi's successor, Shinzo Abe, visited the shrine several times before and after his first stint as Prime Minister, but did not visit at all during his first term as Prime Minister from September 2006 to September 2007. Get this. Abe not visiting the shrine prompted a Japanese nationalist named Yoshihiro Tanjo to cut off his own little finger in protest and mail it to the Liberal Democratic Party. 
this is too funny to read. <laughs> so, so in April 2007, Abe made a ceremonial offering to the shrine, but did not actually visit it himself. According to official reports, the offering was made by Abe as a private citizen rather than in an official capacity. But it was reported that the card attached to the floral offering was signed Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. <laughs> Which I just fucking love. Like, who the fuck actually incorporates their title yeah. into their signature? <laughs> it, it probably was one of those, like, stamps. Yeah, that... like a honkos, y'all. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why this is so funny to me. Oh, God. So, although... Although Abe publicly supported his predecessor's visits to the shrine, he did not visit the shrine himself during his term in office. Okay. In August, 2007, the 16 members of Abe's cabinet declared that they had no intention of visiting the shrine on the anniversary of, ja of uh, the Japanese surrender. Abe, who at this point had not disclosed whether he himself intended to go, commented, quote, paying homage at the Yasukuni temple or not is up to the individual, even for a cabinet member. I expect people to use their own discretion. Sen uh, Sanae Takaichi, minister in charge of gender equality and Okinawa-related issues, ultimately visited the shrine in an apparent effort to avoid a rare absence of all cabinet members at Yasu uh, of all cabinet members at Yasukuni on the anniversary of Japan's official World War II surrender. So I guess it's extremely rare for not a single person from the cabinet to go. So she's like, "Oh fuck, I gotta go!" Right, uh, which just sounds like a uh, simp trying to. Uh, uh, excuse the actions of the gender equality uh, lady, right? <laughs> now, while campaigning for the presidency of the Liberal Democratic Party in 2012, Abe said that he regretted not visiting the shrine while prime minister. He again refrained visiting the shrine during the first year of his second stint as prime minister in consideration for improving relations with China and Korea, whose leaders had refused to speak with him or had refused to meet with him rather during that time. Now, he said on December 9th, 2013, that, quote, it is natural that we should express our feelings of respect for the war dead who sacrificed their lives for the nation. But it is my thinking that we should avoid making Yasukuni visits political and diplomatic issues. So in lieu of visiting, Abe sent ritual offerings to the shrine for festivals in April and October 2013, as well as the anniversary of the end of World War II in August 2013. Now, I just want to point out real quick that <laughs> how fucking baffled I am. <laughs> While I was doing my research for this topic, I, I couldn't help but notice that I am now currently four out of six paragraphs into reading about Shinzo Abe's controversy surrounding Yasukuni Shrine. And the only thing that I can surmise so far is that the controversy is that he didn't visit the shrine <laughs> as prime minister. <laughs> But surely the Chinese must have a good reason for hating him, right? So I continue reading. Now, Abe's first visit to the shrine and Chinresha as prime minister took place on December 26, 2013, the first anniversary of his second term in office. So at Yasukuni Shrine, they have another memorial in the main hall that commemorates anyone who died on behalf of Japan. So it includes all the Korean and Taiwanese people who served Japan. And the Chinresha is an additional, that's not it. The Chinresha is an additional shrine located directly south of Yasukuni's main hall that was built to inter the souls of all the people who died during World War II, regardless of their nationality. So a year into his second term of being prime minister, Shinzo Abe visited Yasukuni shrine and the Chinresha, right? Now, it was the first visit to the shrine by a sitting prime minister since Junichiro Koizumi visited in August 2006. Abe said that he, quote, prayed to pay respect for the war dead who sacrificed their precious lives and hoped that they rest in peace. And said he had, quote, no intention of neglect, uh, no intention to neglect the feelings of people in China and South Korea. 
The Chinese government uh, published a protest that day calling government visits to the shrine, quote, an effort to glorify the Japanese militaristic history of external invasion and colonial rule and to challenge the outcome of World War II. <laughs> I just, do you think that's a little much? They're trying to challenge the outcome of World War II <laughs> by visiting a shrine? Now, uh, Chinese ambassador to Japan, uh, Cheng Yonghua, stated in an article published in the Mainichi Shimbun that, quote, Japanese leaders visiting the Yasukuni Shrine concerns their understandings of the aggressive war's nature and responsibility, which absolutely cannot be accepted by the Chinese side. The Mainichi Shimbun argued in an editorial that the visit uh, that the visit could cast a dark shadow on relations with the United States and other countries in addition to China and Korea. As Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe visited the shrine, China's UN ambassador, uh, Liu Jiai, said in, <laughs> in taking the issue to the UN, quote, it all boils down to whether the leader of a country should stand on the side of maintaining the principles and purposes of the charter of the UN or to side with war criminals. <laughs> The question inevitably arises as to what Abe is up to. Where does he intend to take his country? The international community should remain vigilant and issue a warning that Abe must correct his erroneous outlook on uh, his erroneous outlook of history. He must correct his mistakes and he must not slip further down the wrong path. Bow down to China, right? So I, I, I'm sorry, that's just, it's too funny to me, right? Now, in response, Japan's UN... Uh, ambassador Motohide Yoshikawa said, Abe visited uh, Yasukuni Shrine to pay respects and, pay, and pray for the souls of the war dead and renew the pledge that Japan shall never again wage war. It was nothing more and nothing less. But I noticed on the Chinresha Wikipedia tab, uh, or in, on the Chinresha entry in Wikipedia under the controversy section, this is what that has to say. The controversy regarding Chinresha arose with the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's visit to the Yasukuni Shrine on December 26, 2013. However, in an official statement, Abe stated that he, quote, also visited Chinresha. A remembrance memorial to pay for the, to, God damn it, to pray for the souls of all the people, regardless of nationalities, who lost their lives in the war, and that he, quote, renewed his determination before the souls of the war dead to firmly uphold the pledge never to wage a war again. Despite the criticism of many media reports that sought uh, the visit as a, rem as a reminder of Japanese imperialism, in fact, the Sankei Shimbun, a Japanese newspaper, reported that Abe's visit, quote, not only sorry, that Abe's visit to, quote, not only the Yasukuni Shrine, but also the Chinresha Shrine shows his determination to world peace. And they criticized foreign media for only emphasizing the Prime Minister's visit to Yasukuni Shrine and not shedding enough light on his visit to Chinresha. Nevertheless, because Chinresha Shrine, um, because the Chinresha Shrine and its purpose are lesser known than the Yasukuni Shrine, most of the public opinion slanted toward blaming Abe's visit as an offensive act rather than seeing it as an act of historical reflection. So I don't know. It kind of sounds to me like the uh, Chinese are sore losers. <laughs> no, um, look, there's, as we'll get into in a minute, there's uh, there's definitely reasons uh, to be upset over this. Um, do you guys remember in podcast 90 when we talked about how Kohei Horikoshi was forced to change the name of Maruta Shiga in My Hero Academia because Maruta is the Japanese word for log? Something, yeah. Vaguely, yes, I do remember that, yeah. Where the fucking... Okay, yeah, so you guys remember this? So this is about um, Unit 731. Now, to give you a refresher, Unit 731 was a covert biological and chemical warfare research and development unit of the Imperial Japanese Army that engaged in lethal human experimentation and biological weapons manufacturing during the Second Sino-Japanese War in World War II. The cover story was that it was... What the fuck happened to my... <laughs> to my highlight the cover story sons of bitches changing the stupid entry on me well good thing i got my notes over here the cover story was that uh the facility was a lumber mill right that's what the whole thing about the logs was and and just to be clear this is a fucking horrific like thing the 731 is just everything about it the more you learn the more your stomach will turn so i'm not i don't mean to make light of it in any way 
Um, so it was responsible for some of the most notorious war crimes committed by the Japanese armed forces. They routinely conducted tests on human beings uh, who were dehumanized and internally referred to as logs. Experiments included diseased injections, um, controlled dehydration, hyperbaric chamber experiments, biological weapons testing, vivisection, amputation, and weapons testing. Victims included babies, children, and pregnant mothers. Uh, victims were from different nationalities, but the majority of them were Chinese. Aha. So this explains why, um, why the Chinese weren't so keen on, uh, on Shinzo Abe. Wow. Uh, it's almost like you could have led with that. <laughs> but, uh, and this explains, of course, why his, thank you for doxing me. This explains, of course, why this photo op where Shinzo Abe um, uh, was, uh, you know, featured in a plane with 731 written on the side was so triggering. But ironically, I just, this tickles me. So this is on the South China Morning Post. But every article about this sourced in Wikipedia, including this one, is specifically about the photo causing outrage in South Korea rather than China. So I don't know what that's about. And again, look, everything about this is funny to me because it just doesn't fucking make sense. Like, it's just, I, I, I can't get over it. So jokes aside, like I said, um, 731 was pretty heinous. Everyone involved was either tried and executed by the Soviets and Chinese or given a full pardon by the U.S. in exchange for the medical data that they obtained from their heinous experiments. Now, uh, Japan chose specifically, they chose specifically to start their biological weapons program because biological weapons were banned by the Geneva Convention. They believed that the ban on biological weapons verified their effectiveness. So they set up their research lab in Manchuria specifically to separate it from the island of Japan. And I think, honestly, I, I think that they believed that they could win World War II by literally killing the rest of the world with biological weapons so long as they stopped them from getting back to the shores of Japan. In fact, I think that the reason that Resident Evil comes from Japan, where it's known as biohazard, is perhaps because of their history with um, biological weapons research. Now, hmm. um, let's see. Any any questions so far? I'm, I'm going to try to get through this quickly. Why? No. <laughs> <laughs> so Unit 731 um, was in command by... Let's see. By this guy, Shiro Ishii. Um, and this guy's a fucking monster. Don't get me wrong. He actually, he kind of reminds me of, um, he kind of reminds me of a bunch of characters from Golden Kamui. Like if you were to mix, uh, what's his name? Lieutenant Surumi with the taxidermist guy, you know, like if you were to kind of combine them together, you might get a little bit closer to, to this weirdo. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's pretty fucked up, but as far as I can tell, he doesn't have any connection to, uh, to Shinzo Abe. But if you scroll down, and I'm probably going to lose my highlight here, so I don't know where it is. If you scroll down to known unit members, at the very bottom, again, these are these are the war criminals, right? At the very bottom, other suspected Japanese war criminals who were never indicted include three post-war prime ministers, including Nobusuke Kishi. What a looker that guy is. Uh, and this guy is Abe's grandfather on his mother's side. So you see right off the bat that Nobusuke Kishi was known for his exploitive rule of the Japanese puppet state of Manchukuo in Northeast China in the 1930s, which got him the nickname, the monster of the Showa era. All right. Now we're fucking getting somewhere, right? Now, first of all, Manchukuo was a massive place, over three times bigger than Japan. And uh, Unit 731 was located somewhere in it, though. So I guess there's that. Maybe the nickname has something going on. But if we look at the uh, footnote here, it says the author, Takao Iwami, originally used the nickname Monster of Manchuria in a piece for the magazine Bungei Shunji. But for the title of his subsequently published book from 1979, Monster of Showa was used. Both phrases are inventions that can be traced back to Iwami and were not used by Kishi's contemporaries during his career. So I guess that's nothing. 
After World War II, Kishi was imprisoned for three years as a suspected Class A war criminal. However, the U.S. government did not charge, try, or convict him and eventually released him as they considered Kishi to be the best man to lead post-war Japan in, in a pro-American direction. Now, as Prime Minister, Kishi's mishandling of the 1960 revision of the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty led to a massive 1960 Anpo protests, which were the largest protests in Japan's modern history and which forced him to resign in disgrace. Okay. Now, this treaty, the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty, um, is the... Um, Basically, it allowed the U.S. to establish military bases on Japanese soil. So because this guy was playing ball with the Americans, uh, he gave up more and more of Japan's sovereignty and let the Americans set up military bases in Japan. And obviously, the Japanese didn't like that. That's why they had the large protests, right? But none of this really is anything that should reflect on Shinzo Abe, right? So anyway. Right. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, and I, I, I would also like to reiterate that from what I've read about Abe, he does not sound like he was following his grandfather's footsteps to a large degree. Um, his grandfather was a statist, a German based. He, he studied German um, politics and uh, uh, he was he was against capitalism uh, to a large degree in way. So there's a lot going on there that just doesn't quite feel like it rings true that. The, the actions of this guy who again is the grandfather on his mother's side, not the, I guess that doesn't really matter. Um, but, uh, that this guy in any way is, um, related to Abe. Right. So again, I'm just, this is just, I'm, I'm walking you through my research on this and how, how much it just feels like there's a whole article written about the controversies with the shrine, but it's like, he didn't even go there and all that kind of shit for the most part. So anyway, um, I just want to say that one of the reasons that I'm apprehensive about criticizing certain countries who deny their war crimes uh, is that I think, unfortunately, there's a double-edged sword at play, right? So it's, it's actually, it's not so much about denying the war crimes so much as it is about the demand for an apology, okay? Um, I feel like more often than not these days, the admission of guilt is an intentional neutering tactic, right? So... Real quick, um, I host a uh, whitelisted Minecraft server, and I play with uh, people from all over the world. England, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Israel, you name it, right? If you want access to it, you have to yeah. join our Patreon in the description. Although that might be a thing in the future. <laughs> um, if you're interested, let us know. <laughs> yeah, but, um, but I have a few friends that I play with from Germany, okay? Now, um, back in like, I don't know, like 2013 maybe, um, when the migrant crisis was occurring, I was hearing stories about 3,000 migrants from the Middle East being dropped into German towns with a population of only 800 people. These are migrants who don't speak German, uh, that were completely overtaking towns where the citizens had absolutely no say in them being there, right? So I asked my friends, uh, who, by the way, are like 14 <laughs> at the time, I asked them what they thought, uh, how they felt about the migrant crisis. And keep in mind, they, di they didn't live in these small towns. They were in more like the big city, right? So they told me that they didn't have an issue with the migrants. They said, basically, like, they're there. You know, you see them on the street, like packs of homeless people, but it really hadn't noticeably affected them yet, right? It hadn't, it hadn't impacted their lives beyond the scenery around them sort of change, right? But when I brought up the small towns... And I asked them if they were concerned that parts of their country were being overtaken by a population that doesn't share their language or cultural values. I mean, I'll just, I'll never forget the response they gave me. They said, it doesn't matter how we feel. We can't say anything because we were the Nazis in World War II. And that's always sort of hanging over them. Like they said that no matter what we do, there's always going to be somebody pointing out our past to try to manipulate how we act now. And at the time, I really couldn't help but notice because um, uh, Obama had been reelected recently about how that strategy was used in the U.S. where uh, anybody who had anything negative to say about the policies of Obama was just called a racist, right? And that was a strategy clearly in play. Now, when people demand you apologize um, for 
the war crimes and and crimes of your forefathers that you had absolutely nothing to do with, they don't actually want your apology. They want the power that you give them once you give up the apology. So these kids that I knew in Germany, they had absolutely nothing to do with the Holocaust, but the actions of people who lived before them shackled them and made them slaves to the whims of other people outside their country. Now, I feel like in some ways that's why some people actually hated Abe. It wasn't that he you know, visited Yasukuni Shrine or any of that stuff, is that he wasn't willing to apologize. Like, he wasn't willing to admit wrongdoing and let that manipulation and that neutering sort of take place. And <clears throat> let's see. Um, in fact, by the way, uh, when Abe, when it came to, um, when it came to uh, the migrant crisis, Abe outright refused uh, to allow any migrants from the Middle East to come in. Um, and he said, uh, I think he said something like, um, before accepting any migrants, um, Japan needs to uh, work on its own issues, right? Uh, but he was in favor of, a, um, of work visas for migrants so that they could work and raise income for a limited period of time before returning home. Um, but I think, again, that... The thing about Abe is that, you know, and, and think about what that ha what happens when somebody refuses to take the migrants, right? It becomes, look at how awful Shinzo Abe is for denying migrants. But the, but the question should be, you know, it, it diverts the, the, the discourse onto Abe when what should be looked at is look at the wars that were fought under false pretenses by the United States that caused the migrant crisis, you know, these sort of things. So I think that personally, I think that this is one of the reasons why um, people really wanted him dead. Now, let's see. Um, uh, by the way, he also, uh, he also had intended to um, alter the, uh, what the fuck am I? My notes. He also uh, planned to alter the, Fuck am I? Hold on. He planned on altering their um, budget constitution. Oh, uh, the Japanese constitution. Where the fuck is... Oh, this is way over here. I skipped this part. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, um, God, how the fuck did I miss all this? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it sounded like he wasn't following in his grandfather's footsteps, right? Um, I read a lot of things about why people generally disliked Abe, and although there definitely are things you could objectively criticize him for, uh, it sure seemed like a lot of people in, in the different articles I read and the Wikipedia entries were putting in these little biting remarks about how Shinzo Abe made it his goal to contain China as it was growing into being a world superpower. And uh, you have to remember that Japan, when they surrendered in World War II, and ceased to be the empire of Japan, America actually forced them to establish that new constitution um, that forced them into pacifism. Uh, that's why the Japanese military is known as the self-defense force, right? They are forbidden from initiating any more wars. Now, wary of China's growing status as a world superpower, Abe endeavored to rewrite the constitution to more clearly define legally what it means to initiate a war and to raise the defense budget to 2% of Japan's GDP. Now, um, Interestingly, you guys remember he was assassinated while giving a speech promoting another Liberal Democratic Party candidate uh, for the upcoming election that was held on July 10th. Well, ironically, after his assassination, the Liberal Democratic Party gained enough seats in the election to form a supermajority, which means that they actually now can amend the Constitution and put forth the aggressive military buildup that Abe had envisioned. So that's interesting. And, I, and I'll just say that that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm apprehensive about criticizing countries um, uh, who don't take the shit and the the nitpicking of other countries, you know. Anyway, let's get back anyway. to uh, <laughs> let's get back to this. So we got here: Shinzo Abe's assassination exposes political ties behind the Unification Church. So we're getting we're getting back out of. We want to find out why his assassin wanted him dead. Not so much who cares about what the Chinese think at this point. Let's find out why his assassin wanted it. And by the way, this is where things go off the rails in hilarity. 
So former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was shot and killed by a man who allegedly held a grudge against an unspecified religious group, which has been revealed to be the Unification Church. I'm curious, has anybody, any of you guys heard of the Unification Church? No, Before not until I talk this about it? thing. Yeah. So it's a, it's a new religious movement founded by a Korean Messiah claimant, Sun Myung Moon, in 1954, that has faced many years of controversy and scrutiny due to their questionable practices. The suspected assassin, Tetsuya Yamagami, told the police that he blamed the, um, the Unification Church for putting his mother into bankruptcy after being pressured into donating a significant amount of funds. The fact was corroborated by Tomohiro Tanaka, who runs the Japanese branch of the church, and added that Yamagami's mother joined in 1998, then left for some time before returning that year. Okay. Now, let me go here. I just want to point out, uh, I noticed this. I, I've, I've had so much research from all sorts of places. And one thing I noticed was um, this bit here from Machiavellism, Machiavelli's Children. Uh, this book says here that the Japanese headquarters for the Unification Church was built on Tokyo land once owned by Nobusuke Kishi. So it turns out that Abe's grandfather was instrumental in in um, in the church really sort of getting its footing in Japan in that way. And uh, new details emerged about Abe's um, killer, right? According to the Yomiuri Shimbun, uh, that's not how you spell Yamagami, Yamagami's mother sold off family land and a house in order to donate nearly one million U.S. dollars to the Unification Church before eventually filing for bankruptcy. So the assassin's uncle interceded and managed to claw back around 500,000 US dollars from the church only to have his mother donate it all again. So this is why this guy was so pissed, right? Uh, and wanted Abe killed. Um, and interestingly, actually, the religious group gained attention after Yamagami told investor, uh, investigators that he had tested his gun before the shooting. Then reports from the media followed that bullet holes were found at a unification church building in Nara, just hundreds of yards from where Abe was shot. So he, in the middle of the night, presumably, went out to this church and, and fired his gun that he, he uh, killed Abe with, fired it at the church and, like I guess, damaged the side of it or something. Um, so here's the thing though. Here's how, um, how this works. The way the church preys on the Japanese is that they make their members donate money to save the souls of their ancestors. Okay. You got to understand what that means. The, this church literally tells its members that their ancestors are literally burning in hell and that by donating, they can send them to heaven, right? They call these spiritual sales. And according to a former Unification Church member, their parishioners literally scan the obituaries and knock on people's doors, telling them that their loved ones are communicating with them and they need to go to the bank and send money to the Unification Church. Now, <laughs> due to Japan's Shintoism, even though the church was founded in Korea, the Shintoism being how, how they're able to manipulate uh, the people about the loved ones and needing to pay penance to get to church uh, to, to heaven and all that. Um, even though the church is founded in Korea and has members all over the world, Japan reportedly provides 70% of the church's revenue worldwide. And hundreds of unifications in Japan have launched lawsuits to try to reclaim donations they've made to the church. Now, not only that, but uh, the church is seeking to build, this is where it gets crazy. I'm not even kidding a master race destined to rule the world by arranging the marriages of their members. Where have I now, heard that before? Now this, this is the leader of the unification church, Sun Myung Moon. Okay. He and his wife are known as the true father and true mother or to collectively the true parents, right? For their parishioner or for their, uh, for their congregation. Right. And even up until he died at 92, this fucker right here was handpicking member spouses. All right. And you got to understand, this isn't like your small town church where the pastor is playing matchmaker with a congregation of like 100 people. Okay. 
They hold marriage it? ceremonies in a giant stadium in South Korea where thousands of couples are married all at once. All nationalities. Some of the people don't even speak the same language that they've been paired up with for these weddings. And think about... And as I said, uh, they probably have a mass orgy after <laughs> as well. I mean, in a way, they kind of do because the... Uh, uh, the facility where they where they host this marriage has like a thousand or so um, honeymoon suites built onto it, so they are effectively <laughs> having a wild, you know, like almost like a cult ritual where everybody's getting getting slammed for the first time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> There's probably some like uh, black magic going on there. Now I watched a documentary on this on YouTube. And uh, it was a BBC documentary where they followed the lives of, um, or they followed, you know, they followed a couple of the people who were going to this mass wedding to be married, right? And some of these people um, were betrothed to each other, right? And they, and they hadn't actually physically met face to face before because they live on either side of the world, right? And it was so crazy. They're like so um, enamored with the whole process and they're so excited about getting married that after the ceremony happens the the interviewer the the person running the documentary asks this is so wonderful i'm so happy for you where are you guys gonna live and these two people look at each other and go oh my god uh... we didn't think about that like one of us has to move you know like, <laughs> and it's just like holy Fuck, like they jumped head first into getting married to somebody that they've never met simply because true father told them to. And they didn't even work out where they were going to live or how they were going to, you know, continue to their their jobs and shit, you know? And again, like I said, some of these people don't even speak the same language. So anyway, it gets far crazier than this. <coughs> The Unification Church founded the Washington Times. The Washington Times was founded on May 17th, 1982 by, by the Unification Movement leader, Sun Myung Moon. And it's been owned until 2010 by News World Communications, an international media conglomerate founded by Moon. It is currently owned by Operation Holdings, which is also a part of the Unification Movement. So... They allegedly have been deeply embedded in conservative politics all over the world, including in France, where uh, apparently, in addition to Shinzo Abe, they had um, Jean-Marie Le Pen, the father of M Marie Le Pen, who's currently running, I'm sorry, Marine Le Pen, who's currently running uh, in France. Um, they had financial backings uh, coming from the Unification Church for his uh, political uh, campaigns and everything. Number one, right? Uh, in the U.S., apparently, uh, Sun Myung Moon uh, has had a cozy relationship with the GOP, including Nixon, Reagan, Bush, and apparently Trump, right? And in fact, according to Business Insider, Trump spoke at a 9/11 Moonies conference. By the way, Sun Myung Moon—they call it, it's sort of it's sort of now seen as a derogatory term for them, but for a while they were referred to as the Moonies because their Messiah. This fucker is his name, Sun Young Moon, right? So Trump spoke at a 9-11 conference organized by the widow of Sun Young Moon, praising the controversial Unification Church, according to Business Insider. Now, it gets crazier from here. Oh, it gets even crazier? It gets crazier. <laughs> the full name of the Unification Church is the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification. Something you might not expect from a church seeking world peace is that they literally own and operate factories that design and build military equipment. And in another documentary I watched, Sun Young Moon's son, Justin, whose Korean name, I shit you not, is Kook Jin Moon. He talks about how his father worked extremely hard to help Ronald Reagan get elected. And he mentions how Reagan was responsible for the largest military buildup in modern history up to that point. And that the official stance of the church is that because of this show of strength by Ronald Reagan, the world saw peace instead of war. The Soviet Union collapsed. The Berlin Wall fell. These are all things that they attribute to Reagan's show of strength. So they also in the church have a similar 
um, approach, let's say. Now, I got to tell you, I uh, I stumbled on this article. Hold on, no, hold on. I skipped something. Uh, so despite how economically beneficial it's been to grift grieving Japanese people out of their life savings, uh, this guy, Justin Moon, or Kuk Jin Moon, um, was put in charge of creating more revenue streams for the church. Uh, this is what I learned from the documentary. So um, he took over all these manufacturing operations from like soda, like, I don't know, not like energy drinks, but like, you know, just they had a drink manufacturing plant. Uh, now he makes his own firearms, car arms, right? It's an American small arms manufacturer specializing in compact and mid-sized semi-automatic pistols chambered for popular cartridges, right? Um, and uh, I also found this one. Unification Church opens a car plant in North Korea. It says here, um, South Korea's Unification Church, founded by Reverend Sun Young Moon, uh, has finished construction of a U.S. $55 million vehicle assembly plant in the port city of Nampo, North Korea. A grand opening is scheduled for April 5th. This is all the way back in 2002 when this is written. And the plant expects to build up to 20,000 cars per year. The North Korean government has already pledged to buy 1,000 cars per year. Though North Korea has a population of 23 million people, there are only 3,000 passenger cars, reports Reuters. There are, however, approximately 300,000 government and military vehicles in North Korea, which, by the way, again, the Unification Church also makes, right? So, oh God, there is just so much going on in this church. I, I can't even... I can't even begin. I, to I, I want that. to be a fly on the wall when you're there researching. Go, okay, Unification Church. What the fuck is that? Okay, Dude, me... my abs hurt so bad from how much I laughed over all of this stuff. Get this locked and loaded for the war. For the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> we need to put that on a shirt. <laughs> oh, I would like is, to point that out. That is beautiful. I would like to point out he has a crown I noticed. made out of bullets. Uh, yeah. <laughs> After Reverend Moon died in 2012, his church split apart. Two of his sons, these are, these were the ones that he actually like disowned, established a new congregation and their followers are eagerly awaiting the end times and they are armed. Sanctuary Church whose proper name is World Peace and Unification Sanctuary, but which also goes by the more muscular-sounding Rod of Iron Ministries, stands inconspicuously on a country road that winds through the village of Newfoundland, Pennsylvania, 25 miles southeast of Scranton. The one-story, low-slung building used to be St. Anthony's Catholic Church. Before that, it was a community theater, which is why there are no pews. Only a semicircle of tiered seats facing the old stage, which is now an altar. On a Sunday morning in late February, 38-year-old <laughs> pastor, <laughs> Hyung Jin Sean Moon, son of the late Reverend Sun Myung Moon, entered stage right wearing a white hoodie and cargo pants. He strapped on a leather headband... <laughs> And picked up a microphone. Okay, take it away, he said, to the electric pianist and two female vocalists who function as the choir. <laughs> they launched into the first of four songs. Oh, light of gray shining above, lighting my dim shadow away. <laughs> 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 oh god everything about this is too funny <sighs> so yeah this is why Shintawabe was killed <laughs> oh my god okay Oh, let's go back to uh, <laughs> not that one. <laughs> not that one. 
So according to historians who studied the church, while it was established in Korea, Japan always has always been the biggest donor and provides as much as 70% of the global cultural wealth. I've heard in 1980, it was 80% even. Uh, a former high-ranking member of the church revealed in a 1997 report that founder Sun Myung Moon brought 800 million U.S. dollars from Japan into the United States from the mid-70s through the 80s. Moon sent bags of cash, big fat bags, stacks and stacks of hundreds from Korea and Japan to Manhattan Center. Whenever we asked where the money was coming from, the answer was it just came from father. You know, true father. Since its establishment, the Unification Church has paid extravagant sums of money to bring political leaders, celebrities, and prominent clergies of other religions as guest speakers as a means to win credibility. However, for Shinzo Abe, his connection to the organization went back to his grandfather, former Prime Minister Nobusuke Kishi, who was blamed for getting the religion in Jap into Japan in 1958. Dude, it goes so much further than this. Like, the Liberal Democratic Party is said that literally there isn't one member who isn't connected to this church, and that the church actually tried to get the liberal democratic party to make the unification church, the, the state sponsored national religion of Japan. <laughs> like it is so fucking deep. And it's like, how the hell have I never heard of this before? Like this has been the funniest can of worms I've ever looked into for the podcast. <laughs> Oh, money makes this is like on is... some James Bond shit where it's like I, a secret I, organization. I, what? <laughs> okay, you know what? I know what happened. Fuck, I, I, how could I not think of this before? CERN just, they just uh, turned on the Large Hadron Collider again. That must be what this is. We have just collided with the world's funniest timeline. That's got to be it. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking oh. CERN. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Like, that's really like, I don't have anywhere else to go from here. Like, that's just. I just oh no wait I do oh <laughs> yes, I do I do oh <laughs> <laughs> it's so a Greek news outlet there's a segment <laughs> about the assassination as they profiled the killer uh, and they included three images of Hideo Kojima <laughs> whoopsie right and um. One of them, he's wearing a, uh, a Soviet era hat with like a <laughs> sickle, and the other two feature Che Guevara. Oh, so, <laughs> this is the funny thing they knew who the killer was. They refer to him by his name, Tetsuya Yamagami, in the segment. They included the pictures of Kojima because they were trying to profile the killer as being a left wing extremist, which would make sense because Shinzo Abe was part of the Liberal Democratic Party, which, despite the, what the name might suggest in the West, is effectively the Republican Party of Japan, right? Now, these same three photos here um, were shared by this guy, a French politician, with the caption, The Extreme Left. Um, and I thought it was really funny. I actually, uh, I, I tried to put this, Le Extreme Gosh or whatever, however you pronounce it, into, uh, into Google Translate. And it detected, you know, the language. I switched it to detect the language. But on the other side, it translated to Japanese. And I learned that the Japanese word for Extreme Left is Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Satan. <laughs> um, it's actually wide, like end left. But anyway, uh, it's, it doesn't have the same meaning. But um, now supposedly the images of Kojima were first posted somewhere as a joke. And I imagine the confirmation bias of the Greek outlet and this French politician is what caused them to jump on them as evidence that the killer was left wing, which to be clear, uh, historically 99.999% of assassins are left wing. Um, but Regardless, Kojima is threatening legal action over being falsely um, identified as Tudor. And the cherry on top. Holy shit. The cherry on top. Big fucking cherry. Of this thing is that somebody else was also misidentified as the shooter. Netizens falsely share U.S. comedian's photo as ex-Japanese PM Shinzo Abe suspected assassin. Breaking Shinzo Abe shooter identified as Samzuki Hidaiko, a oh known my political God. streamer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes. I'm telling you, I Sam don't know Hyde how. <laughs> I don't know why, 
But the last 50 years, every single shooting has been perpetrated by Sam Hyde. And I don't know how he keeps getting away with it. Oh, my God. (laughs) I'm sorry. But this has been the funniest bit of research I've ever done for the podcast. (laughs) Oh boy. Okay, let's get let's get caught up on these chats. <laughs> God, I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> oh, where am I? Jeez. <laughs> SpongeBob did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is this the SpongeBob article of the night? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, he says there's also the con promo OVA of Hunter Hunter. That's the one where Rika Matsumoto voice goes. Huh. That's I think that's the, the pilot one that I was mm. thinking of. Like the pilot episode for the 90, 1999. Yes. Even with guns banned, any tool can be used to kill. Mental illness is a problem. And the thing is, honestly, guns are not that hard to make. It's you know, it's the projectile, I would say, that's the more difficult thing. To manufacture, right? Yeah. And the thing is, we've covered this on the on the podcast. Yeah, Japan banned all guns uh, for you know the only the only guns that they even allow are rifles specifically to people in places where you need them to shoot wild animals that will kill you because of where you live, right? Um, but even still, they get away with like people because they can't have access to guns. They murder each other with crossbows like it's we've covered it numerous times since starting the podcast the yakuza use knives and swords guns are rare gun bullets can go through the body yeah uh speaking of which do you guys remember that other um assassination attempt i guess it was it was it wasn't an attempt it was successful <laughs> do you guys remember this guy no. uh no so um which God? <laughs> he hits him so hard his glasses fly off. And does he not look like so this this kid was 17 when he assassinated this guy, by the way. Oh actually, oh my actually I, I take back what I said. Uh if I remember correctly, um the Here's guy it. he assassinated was the socialist party leader. So there is an example of a right wing person potentially which Japan is filled with nationalists back at this time. So there you go. There's the, there's the 0.1% right there. (laughs) Um, Anyway. So uh, yeah. Doesn't he though look like, like when you think about anime and the guy, like he's in his school uniform and everything. Like, you mean a friggin' Jotaro? He he just looks like a fucking, like a fucking badass in the, in the outfit and everything. Anyway, not to glorify murder, by the way. um, Murder's bad. This is the killer uh, of Shinzo Abe. And I just want to point out the massive balls on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? What the fuck is going on down there? <laughs> <laughs> also, um, I didn't successfully work this into my presentation, and I'm so sorry for that. But when I got to the part about the uh, about Sun Young Moon, I was going to say that uh, the killer could be heard saying... In the name of Reverend Moon, I will punish you. <laughs> and then I was going to say that, that there was... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was going to say... <laughs> the first actual... <laughs> I'm so glad I got it from the presentation. Great. <laughs> the whole time I'm giving this presentation, I'm thinking to myself... Um, did I get booted from the call? Like, <laughs> nobody's saying it. <laughs> so the other thing I was going to say is, uh, um, <laughs> in one angle, when you when you zoom and enhance, you can actually see the spirit of Sung Young Moon electrocuting Shinzo Abe. <laughs> so, all right, I'm done. I'm done with that topic. I'm sorry it was so long. <laughs> Oh, okay. <sighs> Pickups? Right, well, I want to get through the <laughs> chat real quick. Um, Otaku Bounty says, I'm not saying it was China, but... 
Yeah. Actually, um, that is a theory that's being floated, that China was, in fact, responsible for uh, what happened. We'll see. Jason Sal says, sup, guys. I don't trust myself to play Minecraft. I play too chaotically for most people. Well, you are not welcome. <laughs> the it's like a con the concept of written. Yes, exactly. Uh, hasn't the Unification Church made a few weird as fuck cult-like anime? So far as I know, the Unification Church has not. The Happy Science Cult has. They did, um, uh, fuck, what's that one called? Wings of Hermes. And the um, Secrets of the Universe, or whatever it's called, Laws of the yeah, Universe. Secrets of the Universe. Laws of the Universe, Part Laws Two, the, yeah, uh, is Universe. the only one that got a physical release. Um, I guess there aren't any firing ranges in Japan to practice <laughs> because he fucking missed the first one. It's a homemade gun. I mean, <laughs> wasn't this the exact shit that Martin Luther nailed against? I don't know what that was in context. Of. Is this better than Tinder? What? <laughs> <laughs> Swipe, swiping right on that one <laughs> most things are better than tinder got less women promoting only fans so yes <laughs> oh shit it's the world's biggest episode of 90 day fiance oh that's what you're saying about the uh better than tinder the uh the uh, arranged the, marriages the mass, right? mass friggin wedding ceremony peace through strength yeah that's literally their motto do the moons own a dubbing studio by chance <laughs> Look, I, I got to oh, tell no. you, I am dead serious. <laughs> if I didn't fully believe that I would get murdered eventually in a mass suicide or something, I would so join this church. This looks like the most lit time ever. <laughs> oh, man. Except, except I, for the part of having to pay for it to, for, to save your ancestors' soul. That part kind of sucks. Right. That's the part that I don't like. I don't <laughs> like. I, if they paid me to be a member, I would be all on board with that, actually. Uh, but this isn't that church. This is the split off church of the uh, disowned son. <laughs> Fucking. <nuts. laughs> Can you imagine? It's like, you know, yeah. The Jews had it going with the yarmulkes and everything, but we got fucking crowns in our church. We got <laughs> crowns and AK 47s and fucking dubstep on the organ. Uh, the only thing they don't have is blackjack and hookers, man. <laughs> By the way, I didn't, I didn't mention it before, but, um, you know, they call them the other name for the church is um, the other name for the church is where the fuck is it? The Iron Rod. Of the Star. Iron Rod. Yeah, you, you did bring it up. I know I did, but where the fuck is it? <laughs> Rod of Iron Ministries. So this church literally believes that the biblical reference for the Rod of Iron is the AK-47. I'm sorry, is the AR-15. <laughs> so, anyway. I am... Uh, I, I, I only hope that I can close this rabbit hole and not continue to bring it up every podcast with the next thing I find. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Korea, fuck yeah. <laughs> All these articles tell me I should start a cult. It seems very lucrative. Yeah, it does. Doesn't it? I declare myself to be a wizard source. Trust me, bro. <laughs> all right oh god this is so good oh something tells me a mysterious 4chan may have been at play that <laughs> that seems <laughs> that seems possible that it's like sam <laughs> okay all right let's get off the topic <laughs> okay pick up who wants to go first <laughs> May Abe rest in peace, by the way. Oh, yeah, Abe, we've, been, we've been shitting on Abe this entire time, laughing at his death. We want to uh, apologize and say that, well, well the it last, was pretty fucking the funny. The but... thing he gave me was the lulls of my life. Right, actually. right. You know, like a... <laughs> Pour one out pimp. for Abe, son. Yeah. All right, so if, if you guys want me to start. Sure, why not? I've got massive holes. Massive, huh? Well, maybe you should have gone last. Right Stuff sent me this very gay bookmark. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> I got one too. I threw it away. I inserted it into my very anticipated Cowboy Bebop A Syndicate Story oh, Monster. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, why? Wait, wait what is this? Because I was dying... Now? The literal only reason I bought it is because I wanted to see it say 
based on the hit Netflix series. What is but they removed say? that because the series flopped. <laughs> That's, but what you does got the sticker say? Out of it. That's, you gotta send that back. Well, it just says a Netflix series. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and fucking uh, right stuff sent me one that I don't know if you guys see that oh, crease. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> not so that I will be I will be care, Patreon though. only anime collector tipping this one. <laughs> what? Uh, Why? Why do you even care if you get that in good condition? Dude, I bought this because I I really did not think that they were actually going to print it. Because that why not? Bombed so hard. Why not read it, then send it back and be like, "Bruh, came damage." Dude, yeah, you think I can read this in the uh, in the time it's going to take? No, it's not going to happen. Remember when I played the audio book from this? That clip about fucking it literally started the clip with Spike taking a shit. Like, literally, wasn't that the thing? Like, he was like on the toilet or something. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, all right, so. First and foremost, did I already show Metal Skin Panic Maddox 01? I did, right? Uh, you might. Well, okay, that's I my did, only I did, pick up. I did because it has uh, I, mine has the two different color cases. Okay, Miss Vampire, who lives in my neighborhood. <laughs> um, Loop on the third episode zero first contact on blue, right? Yeah, what's it does. As Miss Beelzebub likes it for some reason. Satan. I don't, I don't even remember why. Um, Mrs. Pepperpot, also for some reason. I forget why. Loop on the third, Prison of the Past. Blu-ray. Bro, I've been waiting. Mine's been freaking held hostage for that for like a month now almost. Holmes of Kyoto, limited edition. What Whatever. number did he get? 805. Do you think it was 05? <laughs> <laughs> and then Hart and Yumie, limited edition, 1598 of 2000. Uh, Knights of Sidonia OVA slash movie or whatever. Uh, cause because I because why not to up my cart? Uh, and then I got the full dive. Um, Oh, limited edition. Ellie. And that's not all. Let me just put these down before I destroy them. All. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. If you call now, order now, and you could also receive double your boner pills. Also, uh, let's see Demon Slayer Mugen Train Premium Edition. Oh, wow, no. you're an idiot. I mean, Waste what? Money edition. <laughs> and. Double waste of money edition. Promise Neverland season two. Oh, you're really an idiot. Can't wait oh. to do that watch club. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Also, last but not least, my good friend Reese Reese PC sent me this. Pompo the Cinephile. Pimpo. Uh, <laughs> Pimpo. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so that's it. That's my pickups. <laughs> I Whew, have my who's ready. next? <clears throat> Fudnam appears to be ready. All right. Is my webcam going to work? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Did he just cuck himself? What happened? Yeah. <laughs> no, it just says device is not connected when uh, I don't do it right. Um, does this work? <laughs> does this work? Uh, okay, someone else can go in the meantime. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, uh, I'll go, I guess, if, if Reese doesn't have anything. My stuff's in the Discord, so we'll get to that. Okay. Well, then I will start. I got card capture. This Sakura. microphone, holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> that's his real pickup. Yeah, that's the that's the real pickup, apparently, according to Footnum, is, is, is the microphone setup. So, I got, yeah, a pop filter and a... An attachment that hopefully doesn't make me sound like AIDS, so I can do the podcast and you boob videos. Yeah. By the way, congratulations on massive success on your first video. Uh, fucking apparently, yeah. Like I looked and I was like, oh, it's it's past 100k. Yeah. Wow. Damn. Shit. 100k? What? No. 1K. No. No. 1K. <laughs> I was gonna say, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. 100k? What the? That's more yeah, than my what? entire. No, 1K. 1K. Jeez. 
And then, yeah, card capture, soccer, clear card, just the AIDS uh, complete edition, no sleeve. So, unfortunate. But Complete series one? Yeah, complete series. The one with Monica in it, but I'm sure it'll, the dub will be overall better than the AIDS fucking... Hey, you know what's really <laughs> cool? Singapore. What, what's that? Is the, the sub is better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, but I, I can't really sit through <laughs> So that's it. That's all I got. You paid money for the Blu-ray. You might as well watch the dub. Yeah. So. Right on. Is it Fudnam, Have you fixed your? Oh, oh. Let's find oh, out. I'm getting something. I'm getting something. <laughs> Lance oh, picked up <laughs> this Urza <laughs> figure. <laughs> Danny Off picked up parade. AirPods, and apparently he bought all of uh, Attack on Titan from you, Reese. Yep. He bought all four, all thirty, yeah, all four volumes, yeah, yeah all thirty-four job. volumes, and the, uh, um, no, no regrets, two-in-one color edition. So, uh, why did you sell it? Did you get a different edition, or are you just no? I just Titan? wanted to save space because I'm running out of space, and I finished yeah. the series, and I didn't think I'd ever probably, I, if I ever revisit the series, it will be through the anime, or or your life. Fair enough. Look at this loser. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait. Screenshot. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's in the Wait. podcast. <laughs> He's like, Wait, let me let me take off my glasses first. No, let me pull my boxes back up. <laughs> <laughs> so, Danny also picked up Fist of the North Star, Volume 4, and um, Record of Ragnarok, which, by the way, uh, I think season. The the part two I think just dropped on Netflix for the live, for the anime, uh, and then Jason South says, "Damn you, right stuff sale." Picked up Chivalry of a Failed Knight, or on High School Host Club, Kiki's Delivery Service Steel Book. There's a good purchase right here with the loop on the third, the hey, first thanks. Steel Book. Remember, we were instrumental in that getting made. You have this totally, podcast yeah. to thank. Hi Bonne Ren May, which is the first time well, it was on Blu-ray. Right, Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin and Mobile Suit Gundam. And Speed Racer on Blu-ray that incorrectly says it contains the Japanese language on the back, but it doesn't. Uh, oh. Princess Tutu, Tomical Market. It'd be interesting if they fix that in reprints. I uh, need to buy that so I can know, actually Jason fit South. something in my collection. Yeah, it's stupid ass. You bought the Speed Racer head? <laughs> At least I have the Japanese. <laughs> Terror in Resonance, Kino's Journey on Blu-ray. There you go. Standard on Blu-ray, but still. Uh, Wolf Children, In Search of the Lost Future, Gintama, excuse me, Gintama, the very final, K-Own, the complete collection, School Live, uh, which we should definitely do a watch club of this someday. Hmm. And Danny said, I just decided not to get anything. I guess he means for the rights of sale. Yeah. <laughs> Protecting his wallet, Coon. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lance also picked up a Mother of the Goddess Dormitory, which I will stop showcasing. <laughs> Why? And Reese. It's, got, it's very nice. It, it very is, tame. It's very nice. Uh, I also got uh, Pompo the Cinephile and The Promised Neverland Season 2. And I'm Hero sorry Academia. to hear that. <laughs> so Reese. My Hero Academia Season 31, or Volume 31. Yes. So Reese, since you just sold, um, since you just sold uh, Attack on Titan, the whole yeah. manga series, um, I can't help but feel when I see your Promised Neverland premium edition here, season two, uh, that you are like the guy who invests in Tesla by buying a Tesla. Uh, what? When you know when you buy it when you buy a new car, uh, the you drive it off the lot, it immediately loses like twenty percent of its value or whatever, sixty mm -hmm. percent, whatever whatever the fucking number is. But I'm saying is when you decide to sell that for space, I don't think you're going to get your money back. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not going to sell that for Let me space. rephrase that. You're not going to find a buyer because it's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Says the guy with a copy himself. <laughs> yeah, but especially, especially since I already opened it and took it out of the, the, the envelope bag thing and already threw the bag away. <laughs> already yeah. nutted on it out here. Okay. So, foot down. Yes, I'm ready now. I have my background. That was that was what I was missing. So my one and only pickup that was long awaited was Maddox O one Metal Skin Panic. What color um, is your case? What? What color is Blue? the case inside? 
Okay. Yeah, mine was blue too. Should I blue screen it? <laughs> um, the one thing that I'm confused about is you get two versions of it. You get includes both the new HD transfer and the original OVA. So um I'm confused as to which one is which when you select the tracks. Um or maybe maybe it did say, and I just couldn't tell the difference. Because I was like in the player, so it's like video one, video two. So I wasn't able to tell. And uh I don't know what well, else you it had, idiot. but what it says includes <laughs> both the <laughs> It says includes both a new HD transfer of the original OVA and the director's digitally restored version. Okay, that's what. I'm, whatever. Okay. There's two so, versions. That's yeah, all. But that you can't tell so, which is which. No, no, no. That's, what that's happened? What, what happened is um, there were visual things that the original director um, wasn't satisfied with that he wanted to uh, adjust, and so they gave him the opportunity to do that. So it has the original version previously released with the whole HD everything um, and also the updated basically director's cut that he got to go in and tweak some of the things he wasn't happy with. Goodbye, Reese. <laughs> I still can't tell the difference. Uh, Does it not so, say like uh, when you when you go to it, hit play? Well, actually, I think half of it was just It's literally just a visual change. Yeah, but I I wasn't even sure like which one was the superior version. I guess I could say. Well, whichever Direct, one you you Direct. decide is the superior version, just watch it says, either one. New HD, uh, uh, new HD transfer, which makes it sound like okay, it's new, new and fancy and great, and that's like the director's digitally d restored version. It's like, wait, what? Which one's better? Is it the new transfer or? The I, I think what they meant is that he did some digital animation on top of what used to be cell animation to I mean, change something neat. that he wanted to be different. If I were, I don't, it's, it's been a while, but I remember that was something that they talked about in the campaign that he wanted to do some changes to it. So they let him. Well, anyway, so I got my copy now and uh, how, how line, how well aligned was your spine? Cause I remember this being like a big thing. Oh, oh I can't really get it. Mine looks better than yours. Not by much though. <laughs> Are you going to show? Huh? You gotta it prove looks, it. It looks bad on. Uh, Both it looks of them. worse. It looks worse on on camera than in real life. Maybe that's because you're lying and you don't want to admit that you have the inferior copy. Honestly, I think they look the same. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. All right, that was my pickup. All right, so we can move on to the yeah. break. Uh, pickups TBD. I don't know where Reese went, but um. Well, we showed his on. No, no, no. I, I'm saying TBD via Reese. Yeah, but we showed his on uh, Discord. No, uh, TBD as in like in a month. Okay. He's <laughs> right he's going to get something from Reese in a month. Oh, okay. He's yeah. teasing. He's teasing. Uh, okay. I also have Metal Skin Panic. My um, spine, spine is at about five degrees, maybe three degrees. It's crooked. Jason Sell oh. says nope, no Japanese. So it doesn't say it doesn't say that there's no Japanese on the back, or it doesn't have Japanese because they they say that they do, but they didn't put it on. The speed racer. Yeah. Also picked up High Q three and four and Review Starlight. Oh, cool. I wanted to pick that up, but I haven't yet. All right. <clears throat> so um, we've got more deaths to talk about. These ones are also funny, but just not as funny. So uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh creator, Kazuki Takahashi, was found deceased at age 60, floating off the Japanese coast. So <clears throat> Duel Monsters fans around the world are mourning uh, for the loss of the man who started it all. As Yu-Gi-Oh creator Kazuki Takahashi uh, has tragically passed away at the age of 60. As, reports, as reported by the Okinawa Times... Takahashi was found floating face down in the waters off the coast of Ona in Nago City in Okinawa Prefecture at around 10.30 a.m. on July 6th, following a report of a potential dead body floating on the, on the Nago Coast Guard Station. Sorry, a potential a report of a potential dead body floating to the Nago Coast Guard Station from a passing boater. Authorities believed that the mangaka had already been dead for at least one to two days prior to the discovery of his body. 
Though his identity was not immediately confirmed at the time of the initial report, according to broadcaster TBS, Takahashi was traveling in Okinawa alone. A car rental company contacted police on Wednesday night saying that it could not reach him. uh, From that was fuck me. A car rental company contacted police on Wednesday night saying they could not reach him, prompting the Coast Guard to to suspect the body was his. On July 7th, the Nago Coast Guard station officially identified the 60-year-old Takahashi as the deceased. They also noted that he was found wearing snorkeling equipment, um, and they explained that his body lacked any significant injury and confirmed that he was visiting Okinawa alone. Four kids would say he went to the shadow realm. <laughs> According to the authorities, an abandoned car rent, uh, an abandoned rental car rented by Takahashi was found on a farm road near a beach in Ona village, about 12 kilometers from where his body was, uh, from where his body was found with his driver's license in the, in God damn it, with his driver's license left in the vehicle. Uh, the Japan coast guard was confirmed, has confirmed that they will be investigating the circumstances leading up to Takahashi's death. I'm already fucking losing my voice. (laughs) This is not going to be a good show. (laughs) In light of the tragic news of Takahashi passing, a number of his peers and associates took to social media to pay their respects to the iconic creator. Konami, the company responsible for the real world version of the series signature card game lamented, quote, we are shocked and saddened to hear of the sudden passing of Mr. Kazuki Takahashi. Quote, we are deeply grateful for the wonderful Yu-Gi-Oh! universe that he has created, and our thoughts are with his friends and family at this difficult time. Together, with his countless fans, we pledge to carry on the Yu-Gi-Oh! legacy with all the love and care it deserves. Jinichi Hayama, the animation director and key animator for various episodes of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime adaptation, tweeted out a sketch of Yami Yugi and declared, it's a shame. I guess I'm getting old, he added in a follow-up tweet. Obituaries are becoming a bone of contention for me. (laughs) Uh, Reese, hello. Yugi's Japanese voice actor, Megumi Ogata, tweeted, quote, I heard it was Mr. Takahashi who first recommended me for the role. The ratings skyrocketed around the time we entered the second season, and at the same time, the card started exploding in sales. Thank you, Mr. Takahashi, she mourned. I pray for your soulful rest in peace. Kenjiro Suda, the Japanese voice actor for Seto Kaiba, simply shared a picture of Kaiba's signature blue eyes white dragon. Suda's English language counterpart, Eric Stewart, was heartbroken by the news, tweeting, this is incredibly sad news, so shocking. An amazingly talented man, he said, Sensei created a role that would help define my voice acting career. He once told me my version of Seto Kaiba was his favorite. <laughs> Take that guy who only posted a picture. Of <laughs> Love Kaiba. <laughs> I bet he says that to all the voice actors. <laughs> Stuart would later don a Kaiba Core team jersey in honor of Takahashi's passing. Rip Sensei. He captioned the photo of himself wearing the gear. It saddens us to hear the passing of Yu-Gi-Oh! manga and game creator uh, Kazuki Takahashi, who was a recipient of Comic-Con's Inkpot Award in 2015. (laughs) Self-promotion! Wrote the official San Diego Comic-Con Twitter account. Our sincerest condolences go out to his family, friends, and fans. Originally from Tokyo, Kazuo Takahashi, pen name Kazuki Takahashi, rose to fame with his 1996 to 2004 manga Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! was serialized in Shueisha's weekly Shonen Jump from 1996 to 2004. The original Yu-Gi-Oh! manga was about Yugi, a teenager. Blah, I don't even know. We already know. We already know everything about the show, right? Basically, Let me... everyone's saying Rip. Yeah, everybody's saying Rip. Sorry, I can't <laughs> highlight. I can't highlight shit on on uh, on bounding into comics. So I've got this though. Yu-Gi-Oh! creator's dead body found floating in the ocean off Kuzno. Takahashi was wearing a snorkel mask and swim fins when his body was found suggesting that he met with some sort of fatal mishap while snorkeling with initial examinations indicating he had been dead for one to two days. Japanese media outlet TBS reported that Takahashi had bite like wounds on his abdomen and lower body. And Nikon sports says in addition that his lower body clothing was missing, indicating he had a sexy death. <laughs> oh, These God. claims have not yet been confirmed. And no official <laughs> cause of death has yet been given. That was some shadow game he was playing. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> so autopsy results and cause of death have been released. 
uh, because it's been so goddamn long since our last podcast. (laughs) Takahashi had been vacationing alone in Okinawa at the time uh, and was wearing a t-shirt, swim fins, a snorkel, and a diving mask when his body was recovered near the town of Nago. Multiple reports mentioned bite marks on his legs and lower abdomen, and one mentioned uh, any clothing on the lower half of the 60 year old artist with Nikon's and, and oh, sorry, uh, and none, none mentioned any clothing on the lower half of the 60 year old artist with Nikon Sports reporting that he had no swim trunks or underwear on. This led some to wonder if Takahashi had been attacked by some sort of hostile marine wildlife. Tentacles, perhaps? <laughs> but the Coast Guard's autopsy had determined that this was not the case, as medical examiners concluded that the cause of death was drowning. It's now believed. But why after, did he drown? <laughs> let's now believe that after Takahashi's drowning, sharks bit at his lower body, sorry, bit at his body in the day, plus it went drifting south to Nago, causing extensive posthumous, in, uh, posthumous injuries. Investigators are still working to determine the cause of the drowning. But at this time, they believe the likelihood of foul play is low. What about well, that's what players? I mean. It's like, why did he drown? Was there a guy with an improvised shotgun that shot him <laughs> in the water or something? Like, was it the Moonies? <laughs> now, now, before we move on fully from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Thing, I don't need to open these, actually. I, I think uh, it goes without saying that at least I don't know how many of us here, but uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! was a huge part of all of our lives. It's influenced us in ways and he will truly be missed. Yeah. In my opinion, though, I feel like, you know, he's kind of, he's, uh, he's fulfilled everything that you'd want him to do. So it's not like Kentaro Miura where, uh, oh, Jesus. he, he, <laughs> you literally like opened up that wound again. Come on, man. <laughs> Yeah. All right, that's it. Uh, I'm I'm glad that our uh, that our audience has accepted the fact that we have not ever been able to make deaths a somber thing. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's just always the funniest shit. <laughs> but uh, but uh, what is it? it? It doesn't feel like Berserk, where you know he had this long masterpiece that was yeah, that left was, unfinished. Yes. It felt like he concluded his journey, and yeah. uh, you know, for that you're uh, just making money after the fact. Well, it, it it felt to me like uh, he was get going to the territory where you live to become the villain. Not actually, not actually by any means. But Are I just you saying it's a good the... thing he died? What's wrong with you? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm saying that all the new Yu-Gi-Oh stuff was going off the walls. The meta is broken currently still. Um, yeah, like, but he didn't make any of that. Like he just that's, fucking that's what drew it some of the it, artwork. It feels like he already he was there for the golden age. He completed the arcs. Um, <laughs> it's time to die. <laughs> 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 Reason number four hundred and ninety-three. Why we are all going to hell. Oh, I'm curious as to why he actually died. Like they they said they released an <laughs> autopsy. The autopsy basically just said he didn't die of the bites. It determined he kinda... drowned. They don't know how he drowned. Like what yeah. caused him uh, to just not be able to swim anymore you know (laughs) i i wonder if he um he dove too deep and his minecraft bubbles ran out like (laughs) yeah yeah maybe i was gonna say i was gonna say uh something else but he only had a snorkel on it wasn't like diving gear right right he wasn't uh (laughs) he wasn't henry he 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 drowned in the kiddie pool is that what you're trying to say (laughs) nah guys i'm telling you right now that other guy made an improvised shotgun. He suffered a heart attack, and then they put snorkeling gear on after the fact when they dumped the body to make it look like he was snorkeling. Well, what I was going to oh. say is if he had scuba gear on, like, then you could say, well, maybe he came up too fast and he got like blood in the veins or whatever. But if he was just snorkeling, that he wouldn't have been able to go deep enough, I don't think, on a single breath to worry about getting blood in your veins or anything like that so well it was an improvised spear go okay i might pass out okay so anyway uh rest in peace you'll be missed 
<laughs> Love you. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Thank fucking God we didn't wait too long. We might have missed this Kickstarter entirely. It's only got 11 <laughs> days to go. <laughs> so, Wit Studio to the world. Promoting Wit Studio worldwide to boost the studio recognition. Um, what? I have no idea. Why Do didn't they give you us just a Blu-ray? Patreon? That's the only thing that matters. No, no, there's no DVDs or Blu-rays or anything that I could find. Well, well get out of here then. <laughs> it's just like, give us money to fund us or something. No, it's literally like, we want the world to know about us, but... Give us money, and that means it's everyone TBD. knows more about us. That's it. That's all I've got is TBD. No Blu-ray discs. Well, rip. Yep. But you can pay 15,000 yen for this. They're totally baiting you to to pay because you're going to think, oh, I'm going to get Spy X Family. You're, they just want like a $200,000 tip for Attack on Titan Seasons 1 through 3. Right. I mean, I'm not going to say they don't deserve it, but but I'm just not going to be the one to give it to them. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. Moving on. Um, real quick, uh, before we go into your thing, I'm going to, I'm going to do this one first. Um, mobile suit Gundam, the witch from Mercury prologue is going to debut at Comic-Con on July 21st. That's coming up. Oh, oh, oh two days. if you wanted uh, to see this, tomorrow. this is the, this is the one with Henry the eighth Gundam. Remember? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so that's the thing. That okay. Gundam. Okay. Also, in the time since our last podcast, I have gone to Anime Expo for day four, and uh, Random Eleven has uh, had a fun time at Anime North. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the. Oh point. yeah. All right. Well, uh, let me regale you of the shit show. The tale that was Anime North 2022. I'm gonna run and grab uh, a water. When you guys do this. <laughs> all right. So, to set this up. We've had two years of COVID lockdowns and no convention in sight. And therefore, for two years, upon planning the convention and it having been canceled and all the pent up and, con goers were just raring to go. Yeah, they were raring to go. And every time they bought their tickets and they got canceled, all those tickets rolled over. So we have now a powder keg of all these people wanting to go to Anime North. And they drop the ball by completely destroying their management during the registration and pickup of your tickets at the convention. So, to try and set the mood for you, I will, I will tell you how the convention is laid out, just so you are aware. Oh, I clicked on it. Damn it. One second. You're not a very good storyteller. Oh, my bad. <laughs> anyway, so this is the convention where the convention takes place. It's called the Toronto Congress Center. There are two buildings that are associated with the Toronto Congress Center. There is Toronto Congress South and there is Toronto Congress North. They are both uh, part of Anime North. Oh, clickbait! I assumed it was only the North Branch. Jesus! No, we're on the, the South money one back. too. Um, conveniently, uh, or well, actually, I'll show you this first. So, uh, you can see my mouse. Yes, this is the entrance for the registration right here. This little door. This door is the entrance to the main vendor hall. So generally, uh. When you go on the Friday to line up for your registration, you line up for this door, and you all go in. And then the next days following that, well, actually, before after you get your registration, you'll line up for this door if the con hasn't opened yet, but usually it's open. Um, and then the next day, you'll have a line here for the entering for people who already have their badges, and another line here for... Uh, registration for people who are who still need to pick up either their Saturday only badges or their weekend badges if they didn't go the Friday. Anyway, uh, conveniently here we can zoom in, and uh, St Street View has uh, one person in line. 
I don't I don't know what time this was, but uh, yeah, one one person in line there for Anime North. Like I was in. Uh, Are you sure? Is this even relevant? Or... <laughs> no, not really. It was it was it was May t- <laughs> 2019. Up, yeah. but, um, but I thought it was funny that they they caught it. Um, so this is uh, and also this this will be relevant later. So uh, this is the parking lot, obviously. Uh, this this side of the parking lot is reserved for people. This side of the parking lot is reserved for cars. Um, as you can see, there's a uh, food trucks there. So uh, most people will leave going this way out the convention center. There is another exit out that way, uh, but it is lesser used. This is the hotel, the main hotel, the Delta Hotel. Panels happen at this hotel. Everyone wants to sleep at this hotel because the panels are happening in the hotel. You don't have to travel. Um, There are many pedestrians that walk back and forth between these two spots. So this uh, crosswalk becomes a nightmare. And uh, I'll show this later with uh, some slides, but um, basically this is near the airport. And so uh, if I zoom out, the airport's right there. And we got like this. I think that's the 401. That's main huge highway, like at times 16 lane highway. Uh, That's the 427, I think. And that's the 409, I think. Anyway, they're all three big highways. They all come together. Right around here. This is Dixon Road. There's lots of traffic. That's my point. And so a lot of people are trying to turn into this convention center. And they are inhibited by people trying to go straight. And people trying to cross the road. So usually uh, people turning in, there's only one or two cars that get in each light change. Which can cause problems. All right. So, now, we go to the convention. The convention started Friday. Well, there, there was a pre-registration pickup on Thursday. Apparently, that went, out, that went off without a hitch. Uh, little did we know uh, that was not going to be the case for the rest of the weekend. They started on Friday morning. They said, uh, we have sold out of Friday only and Saturday only admission. But we have weekend and Sunday admission only available so already off the bat if you wanted to go on friday and get a ticket you had to pay an extra 25 dollars for an entire weekend pass even if you just want to show up on that friday uh because they sold out of friday only tickets so this was my experience this is the view of my hotel room i have put the time in the top left corner there it was 12 23 p.m. We arrived. There was no lineup, as you can see, in the parking lot. By 1.37, the line had started to get big, but this is generally a small line in comparison. The line has now circled and done some loop-de-loops, as you can see, and has started going into the back bar parking lot. Now it's 3.15. The line is getting bigger and of my group. My brother is with me and he is getting worried. He is saying, oh no, because of COVID and Anime North's stupid insistence on requiring a vaccine passport, they were refused to mail out badges this year and required everyone be there in person to pick up their own ticket. You could not pick up your friend's ticket. So for every ticket sold, there needed to be someone standing in line to pick it up with ID and a vaccine passport that they needed to check at the door. This caused issues. And my brother went in line and stood in line because he was afraid that he would not get in. I decided I would wait. I made a mistake. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah? You want to tell us about it? What's your mistake? This, this was the light at 523. <laughs> My brother, th- this big tower thing, this white tower thing that you've seen in a number of water pictures tower. is a water tower. 
this okay. uh, black stage with the tent in front of it is a DJ booth stage that uh, is used to host the rave every night in the parking lot. Uh, uh, so uh, for landmarks, uh, that's the stage. That's the water tower. Anyway, he is between those two things in that group of people at this point in time. And he calls me and he says, get your ass down here because it's crazy. And so I do. And he It's lit, bro. Luck he luckily <laughs> lets me cut in line. And so I didn't have to stand in line all that bad. But he was standing in line since 4.14. Uh, at around... Oh, here's a picture for everyone so they know the you know how the line is moving. <laughs> there you go. And, and, and that arrow is where you uh, get your vaccine uh, checked. Then you walk in the door. And then you go and pick up your ticket later on. At uh, oh, at six twenty-eight, we got our passes. So it took us about, or well, it took him about two hours and ten minutes. Uh, I was lucky because he let me cut, so it was only about thirty, forty minutes for me. Thankfully, he stood in line, so I did not have to, and I did not have to pay for my mistake because uh, it would have been a costly one if I had to line up at five thirty. I would not have got my badge, but we'll get to that soon. Oh. At 7 o'clock, uh, Anime North tweeted out, The registration desk will be capping the badge pickup line at 8 p.m. tonight. This is on the Friday night. For Friday, or for non-Friday only badge pickup. So if you have a weekend pass, if you're picking up for Friday, uh, Saturday only or Sunday only on the Friday, they said, you cannot stand in line after 8 p.m. Uh, they won't let you in the line. Okay, hold on. I just want to point out this tweet local time to you Canada time where yes. anime North is yes was sent at 708 p.m. yes 52 minutes before they're capping it right yes. so non Friday only badge pickup so so basically they're saying only Friday only badges will be able to be picked up what the fuck is there to do at the con after 8 p.m. if you so, only are going for one day? Uh, yes. If you showed up and you were not in line at 8 o'clock for a Friday only, you're weird. I, maybe the line uh, dissuaded you from, and you thought you could get away with waiting, like I did initially. But I, <laughs> I don't know why you'd think at 8 o'clock that you'd have any with the, with the line – being what it was, having any better luck. Um, the regist Notably, the registration desk closes at 9 o'clock. And the convention itself closes at 10 o'clock. Uh, the main convention. The panels go on later. Some of them went up to 11 or 12 p.m. Uh, because of COVID, they did not do the normal, customary overnight panels, which include some hentai watching rooms and some other ah. screening rooms. You know, fun stuff. Anyway, I that didn't happen this year. Watching hentai in a group. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they tweeted this out at 7:08. Uh, then some people were confused. Does this mean everyone waiting will have to go home, or you're just going to stop allowing people into the line at eight? Well, if you're in the line now, they came out and tweeted. If you're in the line now, you will get your badge tonight. That was seemingly. Not entirely true. Oh. Uh, we'll we'll get to that because <laughs> uh, Anime North does not have the best uh, communication skills, apparently. So this is the line now. Oh, sorry, that tweet was at 7.16 p.m. At 7.30, the line has not gone down at all and has probably gotten worse. Uh, as you can tell, the line is a mass of people. Uh, we had just left the convention at this point and just got back to the hotel uh, after wandering around for a while. And as we were leaving, you can see the red is the main line. We left through the blue route. And as we were leaving, we seen this other line, this green section of the line. At first, I thought the line was breaking down. And I did hear uh, reports that the line disintegrated at points. But upon further inspection, 
it may have been them pulling people out of the line for Friday only and prioritizing Friday only badges. Because later on we get some confirmation that that was happening. There uh, at eight o'clock we get these two people who apparently are tweeting at Anime North saying uh, that they have been in line since 4:30 and are still not uh, inside with their tickets. Uh, so yeah, that's three and a half hours standing in line, not getting their tickets. Then Anime North says, "Oh, calm down, people." Now we've capped the line. We are fully aware of the problems with the registration line tonight, today, and we will be working on a solution for tomorrow. Expect a full statement <laughs> by tomorrow morning. Did you ever get the stay, out, just stay outside the parking lot till tomorrow morning? We'll get back to you. They, they were on the ball. They got it that night. Uh, it will be coming up. Uh, then we get reports of the fail in communications that I alluded to earlier. People with Friday-only passes can go to the front. I think that was that second line I was talking about. Others will be will not be getting in tonight. That's what we were told when we asked staff. So, apparently, people on the ground, the staff on the ground, were telling people in the line, get the fuck out, go home. If you do not have a Friday-only pass after 8 o'clock, sh tough shit. Come back tomorrow. And apparently, this person did come back the next day and stood in line again and had to wait another two hours in line to get their pass. At 9 o'clock, registration closes. Uh, this is some more background. I think I covered most of this, though, but, you know, the Delta. Oh, I, I forgot to mention the, the Harvey's, so there's also food there. So I covered this before. <laughs> covered this before. Sorry about that. So this is the scene at 930. We have massive cars trying to leave because of the shit show that is that crosswalk. Uh, they had issues trying to leave. Um, most of these people were probably sitting in line for 20, 30 minutes trying to leave the convention. Uh, my eye, I think, still spots a line there, but I could be wrong. You tell me. I don't know. Uh, car watch. Uh, the parking lot has still not emptied by 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, the vendor hall closes. Anime North at 10.30, 10.24, tweets out, we are aware that our, this is their uh, you know, status report that they were going to give us. Uh, we are aware that our registration lines were moving too slowly today, and many of our attendees were stressed and upset because of it, not to say the least of it. We are sorry and apologize for the situation that should never have happened. We have unusual. identified unusual Sorry? for a Canadian company to apologize. Now, I, I, it's not that <laughs> unusual. I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> but, so they they continued and they said we have identified where the bottlenecks were, and things have improved greatly. I have no clue why they're saying this because they have had no opportunity to test new methods of processing people's registrations. And in fact, they failed again Saturday morning. But we'll get to that. Uh, we expect tomorrow and Sunday will be much smoother. It wasn't. <laughs> Any unclaimed Friday admissions will be accepted Saturday or Sunday at the door. No extra charge. Friday is a shorter day. It is a cheaper pass. And now they have said that anyone who did not claim their Friday only, if they happen to be in the area and are still willing to go to the convention, they can carry over their passes. They did not mention anyone would be a allowed to get a refund. Uh, at most, I think they might, if you ask, they might roll over their ticket to next year. But I don't know that you, you'd have to email them Can you them imagine about that. Like, transporting yourself to the location only to get royally fucked? Yeah, and like if you have a Friday-only badge, you're not going to have like a hotel or like anything... So, you yeah. know, you might you That's might true. have drove like two hours to go to the convention and then only to get cucked on the line. Now you got to drive your ass back at fucking 10 o'clock at night, two hours back home and then like, oh, well, should we do this again tomorrow? Like and then get fucked again on Saturday because right. you're you're like, oh, you know, 
I'm going to use it on Saturday. No one wants to go on Sunday. So I'm going to use it on Saturday and then just get fucked again on Saturday. Yeah. Great, great, great convention, Amy North. Funny, I, I don't want to steal too much of your thunder, but everything you're describing pretty much, I had this exact rant in podcast four about Anime Expo 2017 for almost all the same reasons. <laughs> uh, so just, to, just to be clear here, or in case it wasn't, so they, not only are we pulling tickets over from the past two years of canceled conventions, they're all getting rolled over into this year. We've already capped Saturday tickets because, you know, they were already hitting a limit. Now they've just said, on top of that cap, we are going to allow Friday tickets to be on top of that cap, making it Saturday even worse. So, great news for the the next day. Uh, car watch, 11-12. Cars are still trying to leave the parking lot. It's still taking... 20 to 30 minutes to leave the parking lot. Um, it is getting uh, a little bit less crowded, though. How much I is have... gas in Canada right now? Is it is it up there like it is in the United States? Um, yeah, I I think it's around two dollars, if a little bit, maybe a little bit more than two dollars. Can you, so uh, can you mail me gas? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it works that way. No. <laughs> not not sure about that. So I set up a time lapse. This is that time lapse of people trying to leave the convention. It is moving, but like I said, this is over 40 minutes. This 38 second clip, um, and um, you can see people are trying to actually, you know, butt in line and go up the the, the left side there and cut so, back in. So that means that for every second that we're seeing, more than a minute is taking place in real time. Yeah. Slightly, slightly more than a minute for every second. Um, and then at some point they they decided to turn the lights off, which I'm sure was fun for people to find their right. cars. All right, the next day I woke up early because I knew it was going to be a shit show, <laughs> and I sat up my phone and I recorded another time lapse. This started so that last. Time lapse was uh oh I forget the times now but oh I, I said it in the hold on sorry one second that was oh uh, that other time lapse was eleven fifteen to twelve o'clock roughly this one is from nine twenty two a.m. to ten forty two a.m. on Saturday morning you can see the lineup for pre registration is already huge in front of that uh, stage uh, in front of the water tower that is the line to get in the Vendor hall, if you already have your badge. Registration <laughs> opens at 9. The vendor hall opens at 10. So when you see the people moving in the top, that's 10 o'clock. Uh, as you can see, the line is weirdly snaking around. Uh, I, I guess that was easier for them um, to do. Uh, it also curves around the front of the convention center. And little did I know, it also curved around the back of the convention <laughs> center. Uh, but that will uh, be explained here. So as you can see, that uh, where the red line is, you can see, oh, yeah, it's going all the way around the convention center. Uh, and I will show you um, here this. This is what I'm talking about. The line wrapped all around the front and then up this thing and wrapped back on itself at least five times. We'll get to that. See yeah, this this section of the parking lot. Yeah, at There's that point, why even go? <laughs> okay. So these are the people in that side of the line. At 1:43, these people are still standing there. Uh, me and my group decided to go to the north building to go see a panel, and that is when we realized all these people were over here. I asked one person how long they were standing in line uh, at the end of the uh, – near the top there, um, uh, near the north building. And they said they were standing in line for an hour uh, – almost two hours. Um, and uh, that was just this side of the line. They still had to wrap around the convention and get to the front. So they had a long wait in store for them. And it was already almost 2 o'clock. 
So half the day is pretty much gone. Uh, probably not a good way to spend the day. Uh, if we look at the direction of people's heads, we can count. There are five loops here. Uh, that's where I got the five. The line wraps around itself five times. Then, on Saturday, almost at 8 o'clock, due to very strong sales, we have had to cap all admissions. No so more <laughs> no more weekend passes, no more Sunday only, no more Saturday only, to manage crowding at the convention and are no longer available online or at the door. I don't know why they said that, because as far as I know, they stopped online admissions before the weekend started, but whatever. Maybe I was wrong about that. Uh, but again, again, they have people from Friday that didn't get in that could potentially come in on Sunday and try and claim their ticket. Good news for them, though, if they did, because Sunday happened to be the best day. This I woke up extra early for this shit show, and I was a little bit disappointed, to be honest. Uh, it went off pretty smoothly. This, this went from around 8 o'clock in the morning till around 10 uh this is the the time lapse you see the line building that's the pre-registration line and you're going to notice that it wraps around the front of the convention like the saturday line did um but it uh they they deal with a, a lot quicker um I, this morning the registration opened at 9 30 and the convention hall opened at 10 so there was less time between the two lines um, but they cleared them both pretty quickly, if you watch. And if I uh, actually recorded for another 10 or 15 minutes, the entire line would have been gone. So I kind of uh, wish I did, but you, you don't get to see that. So they did a really good job on Sunday, but uh, there was also other issues, like cancellations. Uh, on Friday at 1.47 p.m., they tweeted out, Lex Winter is not able to join us this year. Not going to go into who Lex Winter is. It's not really important that he got canceled or that his appearance was canceled, but uh, just letting you know that got canceled. Um, the Hente of Horrors panel was also canceled, ah. but they wanted to let you know the Hente 101 was still there. Um, doll Thank community, <laughs> doll <laughs> community feud, feud uh, was canceled due to unforeseen circumstances. Uh, those unforeseen circumstances, um, who knows what they were, but uh, they appear again shortly. Uh, <laughs> Richard Epcar and Ellen Stern, two of the very few voice actors that were coming to Anime North, um canceled again due to unforeseen circumstances uh they were there that tweet went out on saturday morning yeah they were um, there because uh one of our viewers uh posted a um a picture with and he said something like oh it was great to see richard epcar and blah blah, blah. and i'm like i thought he canceled huh yeah where was that so, in the general chat no, that was on his Twitter. Uh, oh, okay. I can link you. Yeah, they they were there, uh, but something got them canceled. Uh, I don't know what. Again, it's unforeseen circumstances. If it was COVID, um, I would think that they would want to tell people that because, uh, you know, they're very um, concerned about the spread of COVID. Uh, they even set up on their... Uh, their main website, an uh, email address to email if you got COVID before or after the convention to let them know. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do if you let them know that you got COVID after the convention. Nothing really they can do, but Compensate uh, you? <laughs> they're, so, they're so concerned about it. Uh, so if, if it was due to COVID, I, I would think they would tell you. Um, I think they mean if you got it after the convention, like if you started to show signs that it could indicate that you were infected at the convention yeah uh, that would be the the gist i think i don't know why they need to know that though like are they going to tell everyone there was a covid case at anime north 
I mean, I assume that. Well, yeah, I think, I think the idea is that they would, if they had a cluster of people and they could say like, okay, so can you give us the rundown of what panels and whatnot you went to? Then they, I could mean, email, you know, determine if, if, if they yeah, think I, that there was a big enough, like if they could say that there's enough people um, who went to the same place, they could say, yeah, then this is probably big enough that we should alert the whole, you know, guest list that, Hey, you might want to get tested or whatever. You know? I, I forgot to, I forgot to mention this for everyone, but anime North is run by 100% volunteer people. So for them, uh, I don't think that they're going to be doing tracing. Well, COVID it sure tracing. shows. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes. So the other issue with, uh, Richard Epcar and Ellen Stern canceling, uh, AC, if you can share the uh, the guest um, link. Page. Yeah, I don't know if you have it on hand. I got it. So the, these are all the guests that are going to Anime North. Um, mm -hmm. You can peruse it at your own leisure uh, if you want. Um, it's in the doc. Uh, I would just like to point out that uh, a significant portion of those guests are um, cosplayers. VTubers. VTubers and DJs. How does a VTuber come? Like, right? I thought the point was their, no, I, their I just, anonymity. I just want to point out something. Here's the guests. I'm going to scroll down. You can see all the guests that are going to this convention. Now, I'm going to hit Command F. God damn it. No, Command F on this window, idiot. <laughs> Command F. And I'm going to type in VTuber. 12. 12 of the <laughs> guests are VTubers. Now, DJ, 17, but we've got, I think there were two of them where their name had DJ in it. So it's actually 15. 15 DJs. Oh, there's three. Is it three? There's three with the name in it, yeah. Okay, so 14 DJs and 12 um, VTubers. VTubers. And so then what, 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 yeah. Was it there 56? Eight voice actors? There's 56, I think, total. Um, guess and of those 56 what was it um 12 and 14 so 26 of those are vtubers and djs only then yeah. there's like improv comedy troupe professional rpg group circus performers taiko drummers right so, i mean no, those crew. those people were okay they're they're fine yeah but i'm just um, saying like but... when you when you go to a convention you want to see industry people usually, right? Generally, so, yes. So in this case, you want to see these seven people, right? And then maybe somebody like Neil Nadelman, right? You might want to see Neil Nadelman to see, um, uh, you know, to hear, to hear about anime trivia or some shit for, from his panel, right? Sophie Chan is apparently a manga artist. Uh, let's find out. Maybe she drew the Avril Lavigne manga. I don't know. I bought, I bought like one of her uh, things. If you I click think. on her name, it does bring up a thing uh, explaining uh, I bought like who, one who volume of her thing called Ocean of Secrets because Tokyo Pop put it a out. A self-taught manga artist who gained a following by posting drawing videos on her YouTube channel. That definitely sounds like an industry insider to me. <laughs> Ocean of Secrets. Yeah. Published in English and German by Tokyo Pop. Yeah, so this is like if the How to Draw Manga guy uh, showed up. You know at what? The I, I will take her as a guest. That's yeah, fine. Sure, but I'm saying um, I'm saying that what what do we have here? We have seven. That's nine. That's nine yeah. people so far. You know what it, I mean? It, it is. It is Martial a martial arts short... instructor. It's just. It's like. It is a short Dude, list of. Of... The year I went, they had like three guys, one of them being Brian Drummond, which was the only guy I cared about. And I couldn't even find these people. <laughs> yes. So that's my, my point is it is, and it, again, it is a Wait, fan Project run Project Melody went to anime. No, no way. Oh. <laughs> that can't be right. What did she host the hentai panel? <laughs> So, well, one so of the she, hentai panels got canceled, so who the fuck knows? She, she's They're also not identity. very good. They're not very good at um, telling you who's hosting what panel or what. So, um, so hold on. So people know what she looks like in real life? 
I don't know if they were there in real life. I, I still am unsure oh my, about that. Are you that. saying they have a Skype call? That's how they do it now? It is, it is very possible they were Skype people. Oh, well, I, I, I literally don't know. I cannot I don't know. believe the amount of DJs. Why do you need so many DJs? Because they That's were the hosting parking lot raves. But uh, why they're why they're uh, prominent on the guest list, I don't know. But um, I guess they got to be. No, somewhere. I love how they saved them for last. <laughs> like, <laughs> the worst, um, the most ashamed thing is those long list of DJs. But so, you so my this. point is, you you have you have a very small select group of voice actors that are coming to your anime convention mm -hmm. and two of them canceled. Yeah. Uh, there are seven here total, but two of them are gross Ruby voice actors. Right. Uh, <laughs> In so... fact, isn't, isn't this the girl who, uh, who tried to cancel that Japanese guy for working on um, Ruby ice queendom? It, it may be. I'm I not think positive. it is. She's I'm definitely... pretty sure it is. She is definitely a Ruby voice actor. Her and Kara Eb Eber Eberly, whatever. Eber they're, they're, yeah, they're both they're almost solely. But she looks like she's uh, only got literally all she has is her character in Ruby and her character in Chibi Ruby. Yeah. And this one looks of like them she was like been in Genlock or something. Yeah. One of them was 100% Ruby. The other one was 90% uh, Ruby. Um, <laughs> so of if we ignore those two, you have five voice actor proper industry uh professional voice actors and two of them canceled on you so uh to say anime north 2022 was a shit show is an understatement uh, probably an understatement um hopefully next year they'll get their shit together they were a little bit rusty to say the least okay um, so i just want to say Anime Expo 2017 was a fucking disaster. But Anime Expo 2018 was one of the best anime expos ever because they fucking pissed off so many people in 2017 that they didn't come back for 2018. So it was it was one of the smoothest huh. years ever because of that. So I, I hope these blessings pass on to you as well. <laughs> Yes, hopefully. What? Uh, I don't know what that's about. Uh, I, when you were bringing up the dates, I'm like, this needs the Law and Order sound effect. So, so we added it as the music thing. That's great. You have to <laughs> uncheck the loop button. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now I can just... That's great. <laughs> I see. I was hoping we would take advantage of this. I'm glad we found something to use it. Unfortunately, you put it in the Shinzo Abe assassination tab. So that's going to get muted. <laughs> ah. And, and unfortunately, it's like what twenty minutes too late. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> you had to find it and download it and <laughs> convert it to a file format the Streamyard would take. So. Uh, next year, I hope they do a lot better. Uh, I know a lot of people were pissed off about it this year. They might not come back. I think a lot of people, because uh, Thursday's registration line went out went off without a hitch for the most part, I think a lot of people might actually try and take advantage of the Thursday pickup. Um, I know one year I took advantage of the Thursday pickup. I said, fuck it, I will pay for an extra night at the convention. Uh, at the hotel, we will go pick up our tickets on Thursday, and whatever. Uh, that, was a that was a mistake. That was a mistake, really. That I was never a mistake for, for that year. It was Brand a mistake. Uh, the Thursday registration line was huge, um, and on Friday the registration line was nothing. Um, so then I vowed to never do that again, um, and this year was the year to do it. Uh, it would have made sense, but. Um, so next year, everyone might just decide, well, Thursday was the day to do it, so everyone will go Thursday, and maybe next year, Friday well, will be a nothing They'll probably nail them back out by next year. Hopefully, right? hopefully, saner minds will uh, take over their uh, group, and they will not have these uh, COVID restrictions, which is probably the main reason that was such a, uh, a, a hindrance to their, their line management. Uh, trying to get people scanned in. 
Listen, um, Random Eleven, next year you and I are personally going to save it by running an OCA podcast event <laughs> as competition on the we'll be, other... We'll be how, literally how at the run very run. bottom of the guest list next to all the DJs. <laughs> and, and it'll just be your friggin' avatars. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, Random we just 11. Skype call in. <laughs> You're gonna use the OCH Chan, our uh, our VTuber that we made with Broid. <laughs> oh my God, yes. <laughs> oh, anyway, oh, that has to be a clip. <laughs> when we made it, yeah, I I I I'll, I'll hit you up with it later. <laughs> That's anyway, pretty much it on much it. North. Anyway, yeah. so I also went to a convention. I went to Anime Expo on my anniversary, Joel. Um, <laughs> for those of you who are new, um, I met my wife at Anime Expo in 2006. Um, so we had, for the longest time, gone every year for our anniversary, even um, the year we got married, right? Because we got married on July 4th uh, to commemorate, you know, and extend our, um, you know, anniversary of uh, having the same day that we started dating and all that. And, uh, um, everything went fine. Um, I did not wear a mask at all, despite their uh. policy. Not a single person asked me to put one on. Um, everything was fine. Like we had a decent enough time. Um, I got to, oh shit, I got more pickups. Fuck. <gasps> I forgot about this. Um, do your pickups later. So we don't interrupt this, but I well, will just I, interrupt I just, you. I picked these up from, uh, I picked these up from uh, a specific booth Disco that I'm, booth. Uh, no, no, I didn't. I couldn't even find the disc. I don't think they were there. Um, but I, I picked up, I picked up uh, Astro Granger and uh, or Astro Ganger and uh, the blue, the Angel Cop uh, Steelbook from Anime Depot. And I had a great conversation with the guy there. I love that guy. Um, he poured his heart and soul out to me about about his troubles. Uh, and it was it was nice to talk to him. Okay, it's like literally it was the highlight of my of my uh, trip to Anime Expo. So anyway, my wife and I left um, at uh, like you know two o'clock in the afternoon. Everything's fine. Um, and uh, then you know keep in mind this is Fourth of July. So my wife decides that because fireworks are going to be going off and our dog is going to go fucking nuts, that she needs to go get some doggy Xanax. So she calls Dan's mom uh, because Dan's uh, family is part of like a rescue thing with dogs. So she's got, she's, she's got doggy Xanax coming out the ears. Right. So <laughs> she, uh, she calls Dan's mom, my wife does, and Dan's mom is sick. So my wife uh, decides that, you know, we're all like my wife and I, and my daughter, we're all going to drive down there, but only my wife is going to get out of the car so that we don't all get exposed. Right. Uh, turns out Dan's mom had COVID <laughs> and my wife got it. <laughs> so one of the other reasons we haven't done a show <laughs> since the first uh, is because my wife um, was feeling like absolute shit and there was no way that I could leave because I was, I had to take care of her that whole time um, in order to try to prevent our kids from being in the room. Right. I had no goddamn sleep that entire week because my daughter routinely uh, wakes up in the middle of the night and then comes and climbs into our bed and we're too tired to fucking kick her out. So, so we just let her. Uh, but of course, when my wife has COVID, um, I had to keep taking her back to her room and all that. And um, I don't know why the hell I did that because eventually my son got it uh, and he was out for like only one day. I probably had it the entire time and didn't feel any different. Uh, so that was a thing. Um, but yeah, now we're all back to normal, except my wife is still dealing with the, ma the massive amounts of fatigue. Uh, but she's going to be going back to work, uh, this next week. So, so that was my fun anniversary. How you doing, Lance? Good to see you're finally back. How's your internet? Uh, being AIDS as fuck. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. So, uh, anyway. uh, your, your, uh, your side, thought. your side story there made me remember, uh, two things that I wanted to talk about anime North still. One. There is a restaurant in the Delta Hotel that I go to for food basically every time I want to eat because they have a little stand outside their restaurant inside the hotel um, where they sell like takoyaki, tori dango, gyoza, 
onigiri. Oh, hell yeah. Um, all this shit. And it's usually, well, I, I forget what they used to be. There used to be like a $10 combo where you get like three items, I think, or something like that. This year, no combo because of fucking inflation and shit. <laughs> this year, it was $4 an item. Um, whatever. Um, Con food, you got to pay up. No takoyaki, unfortunately, until the last day for whatever reason. Uh, that was a bummer. Um, but the the really annoying thing is I used to buy food and then go sit in the uh, panel screening rooms and just watch something or whatever mm. while I was eating. This year, no, because of the masks, no food allowed in the hotel. So you had to either go up to your room and eat or go outside and eat. Luckily, the weather was nice, so you could do that, but uh, just really annoying. Um, also, no no food in the actual convention center. You could drink water, but you literally had to be drinking. You can like walk around with a drink can to you, get around the mask rule. Yeah, can you bring up your photo of the people in line real quick again? Um, yeah. Nobody's wearing a mask. <laughs> yeah, huh? outside. No, outside. I'm a single person. Oh, there's a guy right above the 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 blue hat guy in the for, forefront. Yeah. Um, oh, there's a girl on the bes- far left too. Beside yeah. uh, the Link and Peach, there's a guy. There's a couple crowd of but, people packed like um, sardines. Yeah. So but then when you walk the, in the building, you're still packed like sardines. Yeah. The rule was uh, masks on at any point, even outside if it was a crowded area. Although they were not really enforcing it, except mm-hmm. in the rave. I, well, I'm just in curious. Rave, did anybody ask you to wear a mask? Yes. They did. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, one, I was wearing a mask all, at all times that I was supposed to, not outside. Oh, right, because um, <laughs> uh, No, but just because uh, I knew they were going to... His secret them. identity is Peter Parker. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> first first of all, Anime North, because it's run by volunteers, this is like giving like the nerdy kid at school hall monitor privileges, right. okay? So <laughs> That's such a all great these, way to explain it. All these people <laughs> have like power and it goes to their head. Uh-huh. So when you tell them that you get to be in charge of these people and you have to make sure they wear their masks, mm-hmm. they go fucking nuts. And they're like, oh, you got to wear a mask. You got to yeah. wear a mask. That's, that's precisely why in the last podcast when we covered a- Anime Expo Day 1, and Lindsay Lovers and all them were so fucking pissed. That's why they were pissed. Because the power didn't, they didn't get to enforce it, right? People just didn't yeah. give a shit, you know? So, so at Anime North, they did care. Um, they even, like uh, I've said before, I think they, they wanted it so that it was only surgical or N95 masks, not uh-huh. uh, cloth masks. So I did hear a few people say, Is that a cloth mask? Oh. Um, even though some of their staff were walking around with cloth masks, so you know, because who wants consistency from volunteers? But, um, uh, yeah. So one time in the convention hall where they sell food, um, I was walking around with my brother, and he buys some a Kit Kat and some other shit, and he's eating it fine, no problem. <laughs> no one says anything. He gets down to like the last bar of the Kit Kat. He hands it to me. He's like, "Here, you want this last bar of the Kit Kat?" I'm like, "Sure." So I start eating it. Like it's one bar of the Kit Kat, and I just stick it in my mouth. This guy comes out of fucking nowhere. He's like, "Oh, you can't eat in the convention. It's gotta be outside." <laughs> I'm like, done eating the fucking thing already. Uh-huh. Oh, my mask uh, is already back on. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like. I, I want to remind. I want to remind everybody about last podcast where we where we <laughs> talked about the uh, the mask protocol of having to wear a mask on top of your cosplay mask. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was not all cosplaying, I can, so I did all not I can have picture, that. Issue. All I can picture is Shizu from that time I got reincarnated slime, and the way she eats through the fucking mask is just she's <laughs> like you put the kick out of the mask. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you can't um, be in there. You're like, I inhaled it. Some people have you have creatively, not for Anime North, I've just seen it online, creative, creatively used two masks that, uh, you know, Oh, uh, you make a slip between them? It's, so the the first mask ends at the top of your lip, and the second mask at, ends, or starts at yeah. the, the bottom of your lip. That defeats the purpose of the uh, mask, but oh, good on them. <laughs> that, that was the point, but you could eat like that anyway. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, so and then I, I basically told the dude, I'm That's like, oh, well, next time, buddy, like, what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> Damn, next time. Um, <laughs> you should have been one more faster, and you could have had this kick get off for yourself. I also, I also heard a rule that if the any con staff catches you without your mask on in a part where you're supposed to have your mask on, more than three times they'll take away your badge without a refund. Uh, I don't really know how they would ever enforce that unless they really remembered your face and were basically everywhere, but apparently that was a thing. Um, what do they do? Get a picture with you when they, you know, <laughs> warn you? I, th- I think it's just they cheese, for... motherfucker. They take note You're on the your, list. They probably just take note of your actual, uh, like your, 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 do they scan your badge with like a no RFID or anything? Oh, no. I don't know. It's super low tech. It's a piece of plastic with Sharpie written on it. What? Um, yeah, <laughs> wow. That's what Are you for real? I mean, I'm it's a piece of shit. In, I put in a, uh, an Anime North uh, pass on you in the photo here. Yeah. No, I mean, it's a it's a piece of it's a piece of like plasticky cardboard with a design on it that says like write your name here and you write your name on it wow. in Sharpie. Um, Change wow. your name then. Use a which is rate. which is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You no, seriously, you could. Remove the name I, and um, oh, your name is Peter um, Parker. Uh, you can. Um, some people have gone to the registration desk in previous years uh, that I know of. I've heard of stories um, and said, "Oh, I lost my badge," uh-huh. and then got a new one. And you're supposed to write your name on it, right? But uh, later on, you can go in with some. Uh, hand sanitizer and just wipe mm-hmm. that shit off. And yep. as long as you have a sharpie in your hotel room, you can write whatever name you want on it. Yeah, uh, super low Barry track. Allen. Yeah, dude. Dick um, um, this is not precisely... the thing. ID you anyway. You well, can walk around with whatever name on it. This is precisely the way that Anime Expo handled things before Good they Lord. got smart. Where, um, where people would literally they'd pay one person would pay one hundred and thirty dollars or something for the four day pass. And then they go, oh, no, I lost it. Here, can I please buy a $20 replacement? And they take the $20 replacement and hand it to their friend, right? So yeah. um, that's that's well, how, um, that's how they so, did it, right? So Anime Expo switched it up to where now they have the RFID thing. So you scan in and out. And actually, that, I think, is what happened in 2018, where all of a sudden the, the convention was fucking wonderful, <laughs> Once they implemented that, because that's why nobody actually came back. Really, is that yeah. all these people who were who were skirting their way in with um, with that technique weren't able to get past it anymore. So you could you could definitely do that um, it, with Anime North. Um, I have lost my badge once, and I didn't actually lose it. What happened was uh, we were staying at a hotel that was down the street. It wasn't the Delta, um, and it was because of that stupid. Uh, crosswalk it even though the convention is literally like a two minute drive or sorry the yeah the convention center is two minutes from the hotel we were staying at Mm -hmm. uh it took 30 minutes to drive across the street to the fucking parking lot literally like two minutes down the road normally um Mm. and so i got to the convention and i'm like oh shit i don't have my badge with me I'm like, I'm not going back there. Just give me the stupid replacement badge. And they're like, well, I don't know. Did you actually lose it? I'm like, no, I didn't lose it. It's sitting in my hotel room. And then I had to convince them to give me it. And they did. But they wrote my name down. So I would imagine. And then actually on the Sunday, I went back and I said, I found it now. Can I have my $20 back? And they gave me my $20 back. Really? So in theory, yeah. In in theory, they it's all volunteer people. Uh, in theory, amazing. I could have I could have given that badge. I could have said, "Hey, if anyone wants a free badge, go back to my oh, room and get incredible. it." Um, but I did not do that, and um, uh, it was a legitimate. I just didn't want to spend thirty minutes. Tra- uh, well, actually, thirty minutes there and then thirty minutes back to go fucking get my badge. Um, yeah. and, I don't blame um, you. And I would have been happily out the twenty dollars to save myself an hour of my time if they didn't want to refund me it, right. but they did. Um, uh, yeah, so that's happened before. Um, hmm. But they write your name down is my point. So if you were to do it every year, I think that eventually they'd be like, "You've lost your ticket every year for the past five years. Fuck you." 
Uh, I think that's probably their I best. I don't think they'd go that far. I think they just yeet that list after the end of the con. No, I, I mean, maybe, but uh, they have, because my you're you're gi you're giving a lot more thought maybe, than most people would. Maybe I'm giving I them too much credit. Like I don't said, know. These are volunteers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, if I were them though, I'd be, I'd be keeping that list. I mean, I'd be making sure. Would you check it twice it every year? I'd be making sure you, I don't have fucking, you know, hundred people doing this every year. That that'd be stupid, or more. Well, you're not, um, you're not, your page not being docked for more people getting in. No, but as a convention person, you want to maintain um, people paying for your badges, right? Like you, you want money to go to your, the you're convention. Not getting, you're not getting commissioned. For no, no, people. as. As a per what he's as saying the, is he's taking pride. In, he would take pride in the job that he does. No, 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 no. As the convention huh? owner, as yeah. the convention owner, I would want the list saved so that I could make sure people aren't fucking stealing my tickets. Right? Okay. I don't. I don't see how this is controversial. How did, how did, okay. What? I, well, okay. Look, the confusion probably came from the fact that you evolved from a con goer. To a convention worker, to the owner. So yeah, I, I don't. I just don't think that that everybody was paying attention. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it doesn't I matter. was, but it's like, what the fuck? Okay, but I'm does, with you now. Does, doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, so I don't know if they're going to change that. Uh, the way the um, the um, Congress Center is set up, it's not really set up for uh, like smart tickets or anything like that. So. Uh, we'd probably have to see a venue change if they were going to do something like that. Um, All they would have to do I, is sign each person a badge, just assign each person a badge number. Name, badge number. Done. Uh, that doesn't really... It'd work a hell of a lot better than what they're doing. I, I guess. Well, but they're the not going to check the badge would number. Probably be the That's best the problem. Thing to do. I mean, yeah. I mean, I was, I was trying, I was trying to go middle of the road AC, but okay. Anyway. Um, as for getting sick, I'm not talking too loud. Um, out of no, you're fine. Out of all of the six of us that went, um, only my brother got sick. <laughs> um, it was from the Kit Kat. <laughs> well, I would have got sick because I ate the same. No, nah, uh, he, he, he protected you. He ate the part that was bad. <laughs> oh, maybe. Um, he got reverse <laughs> sick. Like so, you eating he, it gave him the AIDS. He he's oh, done God. uh he's done at least one I don't know, I've texted him a couple times. He doesn't like fucking telling me shit, so um he's done at least one COVID test and it came back negative, so he might just have regular con flu. Um I is I everyone else feels fine, so I assume I'm I'm gonna be lucky and has escaped the convention with a clean bill of health. But um I don't know how long COVID. Uh, it can take up to can, 14 days as a yeah, general rule. Can, you can expect yeah. the gestation period around like 14 days. It can, it can take a while. So, I mean, maybe, but hopefully not. But you could work. you could look out and just be a carrier and just get everyone around you sick. So. Well, hey, fuck them. I don't care. As long as I don't get sick. <laughs> sounds, it sounds like you had a blast, though. I mean, I didn't really... Uh, uh, because of uh, COVID, they also um, gapped every panel. I mainly go to the panels at the convention, even though the panels mm -hmm. are shit sometimes because they're ran by um, uh, just volunteers. And like, unless they're an expert panelist like Neil Nailman or whatever his name is, mm -hmm. uh, they're probably shit at being a panelist. And You're not really so, selling me at, on going to this con ever again. <laughs> it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. Um, but uh, so sometimes you go to a, a panel. You go for and the experience. Like, generally, not the not the rest of it. That's kind of how it works. Yeah, but the experience is ass, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sometimes the panel will be like, oh, like uh, we're gonna talk about Evangelion or whatever, and you you're expecting a presentation. Uh, mm -hmm. so I went to specifically. I this year I went to one um, for Berserk. Uh, even though I've never seen the show, uh, and I was like, "Oh, you know what? I might check this out." I showed up. Uh, it was wasn't spoken. just that like part of the podcast, or never. Yeah, mind. I didn't. I didn't watch it with you guys, but ah. um, 
So uh, it was all spoken. There was no visuals, even though there was a projector there. They could have done visuals. Um, okay. No one was paying attention, really. It was kind of sad to actually watch. I, I wasn't paying attention. I was on Discord uh, <laughs> talking to people about the shit show that was the lineup. Um, oh, and um, it was kind of sad because he was asking Q&A questions occasionally and giving out buttons. And no one knew the answer because no one was paying attention. Um well, there was like two people that was paying attention and they kept answering the questions and at a certain point he was like, can someone else answer? And no one else could answer, so, yeah. Speaking um, of uh, Shinzo Abe's killer, um, you know, they should have gotten Sam Hyde to do a panel. Have you seen this <laughs> anime panel? No. It was hilarious. Oh my god. So yeah, the, the panels are uh, very hit and miss. They also have very bad descriptions, uh, so you don't know what the fuck you're going to. Um, but so this year because of that COVID, was a great show, guys. Yeah, yeah, it it is. It's 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 you gotta have a, a certain taste to it though. That's all. Yeah. You go to um, one, it's called the cocksuckers panel, but you get up and it's a big old chicken with a popsicle, and you're like, God damn it! Yeah, I'm sure that's what he meant. <laughs> because Lance, because uh, of... do you say that from experience? Wow! Uh, you were looking, you were looking for the cocksucker Ooh. panel, and you were disappointed. I'm I'm here to not let you down. Don't worry, guys. Because of COVID, they put a half hour gap. Man, if that demonetized, every... if that word's totally monetized videos, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's that and not the whole Shinzo <laughs> right. Abe's killer. <laughs> because of COVID, they put a half okay. an hour gap in between each panel, uh, in theory, to clean it. So there weren't that many panels this year. Uh, so it was hearing. pretty boring. Um, I don't know if they cl cleaned it. I didn't witness anyone cleaning it. I didn't go to that many panels, though, because there weren't that many good ones. Um, mm. So I went for mostly uh, the hotel and the food oh. and to watch a bunch of uh, anime girls walk around. Did Damn, Okay, so did, did your hotel room room. have a stripper pole? Because we uh, covered no. this before. No. Okay. I, I was not uh, kitted out like um, Stan Dolan's friend. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I, I would just like to point out we had that, a pull out uh, couch. Those are the best. Dear God. <laughs> uh, so that's the real reason you woke up early is you're like, oh, fuck my back on this bar. <laughs> no, I, I, got, I got the bed. I got the bed. Oh, okay. um, I swear four years of my life on one of them things. I literally have a vendetta against them. Okay. okay, so I would just like to point out, I previously oh. showcased the, uh... oh, fuck, hold on. It's it's saving. Give, give me a second. No, oh, I just hit cancel. I'm an idiot. I'll mm. save as. <laughs> so I previously showcased the uh, the thumbnail from last podcast. And, I'm, and during this conversation, I have gotten off my ass and finally, finally finished it. Uh, like, because I, I, I made a change, but I, I didn't update it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna unveil it to you now. Save, damn you! Flash this bitch, boy. Hold on. So this is the old one. <laughs> All right, and this is the new one. I, I, uh, I worked really hard to integrate the, um, what was it called? The bear? What was that? That magic card called? The bear. Uh, fucking with all the twinks and bears. What was it called, Fudna? Oh, what the hell am I think? Bearscape. Bearscape. Yeah. So I, I tried to <laughs> I tried to incorporate that here, but it was just way too <laughs> sexual. Uh, so I like this, game. but I put it as as your uh, I put it as your con badge for people who who will zoom in. And remember, Radio Shack says uh, if you find a squirt or marry her. So I took that <laughs> the Blanca. <laughs> Anyway, um, and then uh, if you look closely at, at the uh, video screens in the Radio Shack, there's porn on all of them. <laughs> so anyway, those are, those, those are the things. Ah, it's those minor details that we respect you for, my friend. <laughs> AC is definitely going to Reese the, is going to find uh, all of them. The no, Hente okay. 101 panel at Anime North. Let's not forget, let's not forget uh, Zoonoid Trudeau hiding next to Green Line. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't this, know if anybody... is, this is like a who's that Pokemon find the yeah, bullshit edition. Pikachu, 
We've got the guy who well, uh, lost the town's data on the USB drive because he got drunk. Well, as Brad puts it, it's more like a Where's Waldo. Yes. Yeah. Fair enough. Anyway. All right. So are we ready to move on? Uh, <laughs> I think so. Uh, How late into uh, the podcast am I? In? It's three hours and 43 minutes in right now. Wow. All right. I, I'm so. thinking about capping out. It's wow. Like... Quitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, my 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 internet in, 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 my internet might fuck me sideways. So if I okay. disappear, you guys know why. All right. Sounds well, like your mouth of, is about to fuck you sideways. Speaking. I mean, of, you can imagine what you want. Speaking of <laughs> tapping out, <laughs> Netflix tapped Stranger Things creators to helm live action Death Note series. Hold on, my my download of the version history of my podcast thumbnail is still up there. So, uh, following the conclusion of Stranger Things' fourth season, series creators Matt tap and Ross that Death Note ass. They've revealed that they're intent on not only keeping their creative endeavors at Netflix, but also continuing on in the world of mystery horror with the live action adaptation of writer. You know, it's fucking Death Note. I don't need to read their names. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, I'm guessing they're planning now to do a series instead of the sequel movie that previously mm -hmm. we had talked about, and it's going to be unrelated to the previous one. So as announced in a deadline exclusive uh, published on July 6th, the sibling creative team have formed a new production company upside down pictures uh, through which they will work on several new projects for the streaming giant. According to the brothers upside down, will strive to create quote stories that take place at the beautiful crossroads where the ordinary meets the extraordinary, where big spectacle co uh, coexists with intimate character work, where heart wins out over cynicism. That definitely sounds like Death Note, heart winning out over cynicism. Mm. Uh, placed, mm. in uh, placed in charge of this new venture is Hillary Levitt, a former BBC America and MRC employee whose credits include various contributions to shows such as Killing Eve, Orphan Black, and Ozark. Of, of Levitt's hiring, the brothers explained uh, explained in a statement, quote, it didn't take long into our first meeting with Hillary where we bonded over films like Jaws, Home Alone, and Speed to know we had found a kindred spirit. Quote, Hillary's passion for storytelling is perhaps matched only by her passion for the storytellers themselves, for whom she is fiercely protective, they added. Quote, no, no wonder so many writers and directors are drawn to working with her. She is a rare talent indeed, and we feel extremely grateful to have her at our side as we build Upside Down Pictures. In her own statement, Levette, uh, Levette told the press, quote, I remember the first movie I saw in the theater and the first VHS tape I got for Christmas, the first international one sheet I bid, on, uh, bid for on eBay because it was cooler than the domestic, and the, time, uh, and the first time I met Matt and Ross. All of these seminal moments have led to this ridiculously cool opportunity to build a company with the Duffer Brothers where we produce movies and television because we love movies and television. This love is at the core of Upside Down Pictures where we're able to collaborate with other artists on projects across a full spectrum of genre. We all love what we do and are excited to do more and more. As per Variety... Once they wrap up Stranger Things with its upcoming fifth season, the brothers will produce uh, will proceed to work on at least five projects, including the aforementioned live action Death Note series, a new series from Dark Crystal Age of Resistance creators Jeffrey Addis and Will Matthews, a series based on Stephen King and Peter Straub's 1984 novel The Talisman, as adapted by Stranger Things co ep co-EP, whatever the fuck that is, and writer Curtis Gwynn and co-executive producer, producer, probably. Uh, probably, yeah. Um, alongside both Steven Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment and Paramount Television. A stage play based on the world of Stranger Things. Why? Ooh. Currently set to be developed by UK stage producer Sonia Friedman and the Crown director Stephen Daldry. Look, they've got so many things on their plate now. I don't even, I don't even know how they're going to fucking do any of this. And finally, a live-action Stranger Things spinoff. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Isn't Stranger Things already live-action since it's, you know, people? Sorry, no, they yeah, mean, they mean that they're going to do a spinoff. Oh, 
Yes, okay, it is, so it it's going Yes, they, they okay, just Okay, so I was, I was just like, what the fuck? Series. When did this animate? They're going to do a spinoff series that's um, that's different from the main series. It takes place in the same year. Instead of Magic the Gathering, it's going to be based around... I, I mean, instead of... Uh, God damn it, instead of Dungeons & Dragons, it's going to be based around Magic the Gathering. I'd, I'd like Maybe. it if Netflix just gives us a fucking new season of Dark Crystal. Like Magic might that, as well be Magic... or. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. They literally that, have a Dungeons and Dragons set too now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, that. Well, well for, okay. First of all, Lance, you got like TV muffled in the background. I don't know what the fuck's going on with you. Oh, my bad. Um, That's my buddy's TV in there. Oh. Um. Find a new can... buddy. <laughs> he, he can't like really control his mic because he's on his phone. So. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm literally using mobile data to you know be here with you guys. So. I'm gonna love this bill. What? Get you don't have get to do that. <laughs> uh, the passion. It's great. Um, <laughs> uh, what I was gonna say is the, the Dark Crystal. I want a season two. The fucking thing ended on a like a not a cliffhanger. Well, yeah, a cliffhanger basically. Like there was fucking room for a season two because it's a prequel to the movie. So it's like there's a huge gap still between what they set up in the prequel to what the movie is, um, and. Uh, Netflix canceled that shit because it was too expensive. Like get, well, fuck. get back on it. Do it animated. I don't give a shit. I mean, that, if, and believe if it or not, if they, if, they would, if they would do an uh, animated series kind of around this, I'd be way more into it. Around so, Dark Crystal obvious. or around Stranger Things? Both. Or around Darth Death Note? Oh, Death, <laughs> Death Note's already animated. Oh, an animated Death Note? That'd be lit. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, know what, you know what? That should happen. Amazing. We should do that as a... Dude, look, man. We should do that as a watch club if it ever happens. If we got an anime, we totally do a watch club for that. <laughs> we would all get notebooks and write our names in them. <laughs> so Random Eleven writing, just wants it to continue so badly, he'll take a puppet show at this point. <laughs> as of writing, <laughs> further details regarding... Part part part. Part. I mean, that's not far off from... <laughs> I'm like Yagami. No, I okay, think he's a puppet. Okay, whatever. Of the Dark Crystal. Anyway, um, as of writing, further details regarding each production are currently unavailable. Notably, should the Duffer Brothers take on Death Note ever materialize, uh, it will be the six, the second such Western live action adaptation of the manga following Netflix's infamous film. To that end, whether the Duffers can learn from the mistakes of the past remains to be seen. What do you make? Uh, I don't care about your question about that. Um, um, so yeah, anyway, that's the uh, that's what's going on there. Um, and I'd like to address some chats real quick. Well, hold on. I have I have more comments about this. Okay. First of all, uh, yeah, hold on, chat. Seeing, we we might be seeing a um, situation of the Game of Thrones thing, where the Game of Thrones uh, showrunners were offered a deal with Star Wars, and they just shit the bed with uh, the last season of Game of Thrones. Fuck it, we don't care. I very so, much doubt that's going to occur in this situation. Uh, hopefully, um, season five of Stranger Things can hold up. I, I would to... say that the only reason that would occur is because they stretch themselves too thin with these five projects in addition to season five of Stranger that, Things. That that too for sure. Um, and then also, um... quantity over quality is probably what they're going for. Uh, what was I going to say? Sorry, Re uh, Lance, your thing is. I know it's not oh your fault, God. but it's distracting me. Um, uh, mm. yeah, I'm gonna uh, I can't. Show. I I can't it remember what the other thing was gonna say. Um, so Netflix failed to respect anime since December 2015, when Pretty Cure almost died as Glitter Force, despite the existing attempts. Toei got the rights back and made Pre Cure more available themselves. Did they? Uh, oh, now hold on, hold on. Uh, so Glitter Force is literally just the typical four kids treatment we're used to. Mm -hmm. They like cut it down, blah blah, all that. And uh, you know, as much as I still would prefer them not to do that, um, I, I'm not going to be surprised and say like, oh man, Netflix bad when it's kind of the thing we're accustomed to with this these kids anime. Yeah, that and I, honestly, I really don't think that Pretty Cure is a show that I would even give a shit about if it did die but, but, the the way that Luigi uh, the Metal 64 is making it sound like it did. But Toei, like, 
I don't know what he means by got the rights back. Yeah, I, mean, I don't. I'm not. They Toei owns the IP as far yeah. as I'm aware, and then Crunchyroll got licenses for Pretty right. Cure shows, which made it so and, and the Pretty thing Cure is, can flourish because it right. was like previously unlicensed. And I guarantee you that Toei were probably the ones who were interested in branding it in a way that that would create it a. a a demand for it in the U S so they went with Netflix and tried glitter force. This is hypothetical here. My personal hypothesis as to what happened, uh, but they probably went to Netflix and, and wanted to jointly create glitter force because they thought that would appeal to young girls um, who would see the word glitter force and, and the, you know, the sort of graphics that they had associated with it and that they would click on it and give it a chance. And that the efforts they did would popularize it in the U.S. Because to be honest, Pretty Cure is not very popular in the U.S. Okay, uh, let, let's let make one thing clear. He's talking about an original new season that uh -huh. was turned into Glitter Force. It's not right. the original that was like re -chopped. Right. So, but, but regardless, the point of re releasing it as Glitter Force... And the way that they sort of attempted to do it, just I'm basing this entirely off of the fact that I've seen the title card for Glitter Force in the Netflix uh, carousel when I browse Netflix. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems to me like it was an effort to um, to make it get it a fan base in the U.S. because currently it's it's weak at best in the U.S. and it's partially because it's not available, but it just it has to compete with much stronger shows that are better like Cardcaptor Sakura. Um, so he also said live action can never do stories and characters that are like a cartoon. See, the thing is that Death Note is pretty grounded. The only thing about it that's cartoon like is the fact that uh, L is an autist. <laughs> right? Like L L is quirky and weird. Wow. And I, guess, I guess Ryuk as well with like the, the apples and shit. And so there's a little Misa, Misa, in there. Misa, Misa. Yeah, but that, but that live in, action uh, doesn't kind of bring it over. Yeah, but that in in Japan, if you were to take it strictly Japanese way, um, her being an idol isn't that unusual there, you know. Um, so I, I think I don't. Last, well, turn the TV off, please. It's not his TV; it's his friend's TV. Um, so I can't go in there. Says so TV off. <laughs> Turn off your friend, off. please. <laughs> Make it look like oh an accident. In, so I'll be, in the, in the, uh, I will. I will. I will politely leave. I can't do anything <laughs> about this. We'll catch so, you guys later. Um, so anyway, uh, take it easy, man. Live action can never do stories like cartoon. Even mixing with CG feels so imaginary that there is no interaction with the actor that would seem to be real. I disagree. Um, I personally, I liked this rendition of of Death Note, not as a Death Note property necessarily like i i there were aspects of it i had to distance myself from it being death note from like for instance i think it would have been better as i've always said if this character was not named light and um lakeith stanfield's character was not l right if you if you omitted them this could have been a pretty solid adaptation uh ryuk was fantastic with willem dafoe as him and all that like that was all great you know and i think it i think it was pretty grounded the CG in it. So I disagree. Um, totally not. Mark put out a video uh, last week. I think it was last week um, about death note. And he generally reads the manga. So he focused it more on the manga side and he, but he did touch about the, the anime and how it mm -hmm. differed. And I had thought it was always like pretty much one to one adaptation of the manga. Mm -hmm. But what he was saying was, Apparently, after uh, L dies, um, the whole thing with Spoiler. N and M or whatever the fuck they're mellow and they um, yeah, yeah. Um, he said that the manga has more of that elaborated, like there's mm. more of it. They condense it down in the anime. So I would be wondering if they are doing a series, are they going to be doing it? Like and adapting it one for one to the manga, or are they going to be redoing the anime, or are they going to be doing their own thing? They're going to be doing their um, own thing. I I, that. Well, so I hope they watched my video. That's <laughs> all I'm going to say. My uh, my first impression on it, because I think that there's potential. There's a lot of potential for what they established with this one. That if they 
capitalize on that potential could be pretty fucking fantastic, honestly. But um, the but, other thing I was going to say just quickly is right. um, that I forgot to, about while I was talking is the original director came out and said after the, the first movie came out, uh, the original director of the Netflix movie came out afterwards and said that Netflix was going to make a sequel with him that wasn't going to be a direct sequel. It was going to be like a rebooty sequel. Um, so I assume he's gone now and he's not part of this anymore. Probably. Um, I don't know if he's still working on that and this is separate or, or what's happening with that. I don't know. Interesting. Uh, anyway, so Netflix paid Japanese workers $34 a cut to very low in comparison. We have covered all of this stuff. Uh, Saban brands altered Pretty Cure, and Netflix agreed to have Glitter Force out. Saban ruined Digimon in a similar way. So, in other words, that that's exactly what I was saying. I'm like, th this has happened many times before. It's not like, man, Netflix is, is uh, enemy number one because they did this. It's like, it's kind of par for the course at this mm -hmm. point, you know? So, um, are we done with this particular topic? Sure. Okay, because before we move on, I would like to acknowledge that I have done a tremendous disservice to Ronan Jaw. I starred this comment all the way back when he first said it and didn't bring it up. He asked me to please tell my viewers to email Viz Media and Bang Zoom to bring back Vic as Ikaku in Bleach the Thousand Year Blood War. So uh, if you're interested in having Vic return... Um, Go to Viz's uh, website and find their contact us uh, email or whatever, and and politely request that. I, I am so oh, sorry, Ronan. I meant to send, say that way earlier in the show. Uh, anyway, so back to this. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Juan? <laughs> what? It's like whore without the no, R. That's, that's exactly how you pronounced Juan. Just like, Juan. 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 Anyway, Netflix Cowboy Bebop series earns an Emmy nomination. Ooh. How? Wow. God knows. Well, they're they're nominated. It doesn't mean yeah. shit. For the unless opening they win. sequence. All oh, right, that's which was fucking terrible. Oh, just because it's a fucking knockoff of the of the good one. <laughs> Despite its horrible reception and overall being a poor adaptation, Netflix's live action Kelly Bebop series was nominated for an Emmy. No doubt convincing some that rigging might be at work as politically correct companies and corporations <laughs> often work together wait, on wait, such matters. Wait, wait. they're going to do a reprint of that book from the hit <laughs> from the Emmy. <laughs> Emmy <laughs> 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 Oh, that's good. Oh. So 2002, uh, 2022's uh, Emmy Awards nominations were announced, and aside from titles such as Squid Game and Stranger Things making an appearance, Netflix's Cowboy Bebop also earned a nomination to, to compete for outstanding main title design. Other titles in the same category include Candy, Foundation, Lizzie's Story, uh, only murders in the building, Severance and Pachinko. Wow, I get the feeling it might actually win because I've never heard of any of those. <laughs> the live action Go and Bebop series was criticized harshly, not just for its lack of faithfulness to the source material, but also because of the politically correct changes, such as the changing of Faye's outfit and making a minor character grand non binary. The Emmy Awards will be debuting in, in September. I mean, the thing it should have been criticized for, the, the only thing on your list is right here. <laughs> 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 Any thoughts, or shall I uh, shall I move on? Please. Uh, t t call me when they win. All right. <laughs> so real quick, Luigi the Metal sixty four said, "Like I said, it is better if anime is accurately translated, even if Japan is different, and have wrong open mouths in the source." Dude, they don't even match the the uh, mouth flaps in in the Japanese version. I think so. that's what he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> Viewers can always watch other anime. I'm the Rock sure and Roll Hall of Fame inducted Dolly Parton, country singer. She never played rock music. Industries in the U.S. failed to respect mediums and genres. They used diverse rock. I'm not yeah. even going to like go over what the hell the, the metal awards were. It's a <laughs> huge joke. It's like half of their songs are like trap beat based, whatever. And <laughs> Okay. Oh, God. Anyway. So 
Netflix Resident Evil, more humiliating than expected. So I just want to say I have watched the first two episodes of this uh, series. And uh, same thoughts that I had with Death Note. Um, if you distance yourself from the source material, it's you can great. at least you can at least enjoy it, right? Parts of it are good, parts of it are weird. Um, so Netflix's Resident Evil series has continued the trend of the franchise being unable to create faithful and loved live action adaptations, as the show makes cringe worthy references to anime torrenting and Zootopia porn, a level of humor that will have watchers questioning if the writers even played the games. <laughs> So um, I have checked all of these clips here. Honestly, there's only two that are even worth seeing maybe, but um, four out of the eight will get me copyright claimed. Um, the type of copyright claim only just makes it so I can't monetize, so I don't really care. But I'm going to show you, since, since it's not really necessary to see them, I'm just going to show you the ones that I know won't get me copyright claims. So there's this one. Blue than what you're used to, but Cape Town's just an hour away. And you know, last year we were voted best place to live in the world. By who? Lululemon whores, guys that jerk off to CrossFit, Elon Musk. I, I don't know. It's, it's a joke. Jane thinks she's funny. Shots fired. So uh, that's um, Wesker. <laughs> I, I like him better in John Wick. Yeah, I'll be honest. I thought he was going to be like, I thought because I liked the actor Lance Reddick, I thought he was going to actually be pretty solid. But so far, he's been kind of a huge disappointment. A a limp dick, like no backbone dad. <laughs> That's so, the Wesker um, we know. Yeah, that's the Wesker I know that uh, that died in a volcano. <laughs> so uh, then there's this clip. Hey. Look at me. You are not stupid. You're Billy fucking Wesker. You are nice and cool. You've got a great ass, a 1520 on the PSAT, and you've got the best sister. So remember that and say fuck it to everything else, okay? Yeah, so uh, Song Cocker Complex and One Name Three Gamer were right about them being lesbians. <laughs> Kidding. All right, and here's here's the best fucking one in the whole show. What's going on? Simon's got the new deck dance. It's the super hard to get anime. It's not that hard. It's on Naya. Naya. <laughs> <laughs> And, and as hello, I up, what, what did you come up with? Hajime Mashte, fellow weebs. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the the thing I found funnier and that made less sense is that it's like, yeah, it's a super hard to get anime. It's like that that was on okay, Crunchyroll. So here, here's the thing. Here's the did. thing. Um, it actually story wise makes sense due to the fact that. Um, torrent sites are blocked by umbrella in the place where they live so the, yeah the, but what about crunchyroll no no so the storyline the storyline is supposed to be that um that they can't get the anime that they want to watch because it's blocked and and there's something in the storyline that she can't access a certain site when she's trying to unravel some of the mystery going on with umbrella um, so this is the point where she learns of a person at the school who is able to bypass the firewall, right? As, as they put it. So it, it's the cringe part is the Naya instead of Nya, right? Obviously, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's cringe nonetheless. So here's the last one. Uh, let me play this one. Actually, it's not, the, it's not the last one. So. Right. I mostly just read Zootopia porn. Yeah. Uh, it takes place in 2022, so yeah, that's obvious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The yeah. people, well, the people who wrote this were like, "What is the youngest, hippest thing we could do? Let's make re references to like, uh, yeah, I she reads furry porn. Board. Yeah. So, well, uh, if she's a furry, uh, we know she, that she's a problem. <laughs> she's super. She's super. Um, uh, sarcastic. The character. 
Um, so I, I don't know if anything she says yeah, here like, is true. Let's make right? her the comedic relief by making her sarcastic yeah. every single time, and then it makes her also look semi badass because oh, look, at yeah, me. pretty so much. Yes. I, I will just say she is the most likable character, which is uh, saying that is sad. That's the, thing, sad. That's the, thing, the most likable. Okay. I want to remind you that um, that the story takes place over two different timelines, and. The problem with the show, first of all, this girl looks remarkably similar to her adult form in the in the other timeline. Um, this is the girl that had the weird arm in that one uh, uh, thumbnail we did. Remember where she's running away from the from the thing? Yeah. Um, so, uh, which by the way, I don't think they fixed that bad masking for the <laughs> for the actual thing. But um, uh, her storyline in modern day is like really interesting. And every time it fucking cuts back to them in high school, you're like, come on. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, so I just want to show you this part too. That is, uh, I, I haven't gotten, this is episode seven. I haven't gotten here yet. I don't understand how this is going to work in the story. Crazy. I just don't. Like, the way way face that she's I making. The anyway, I just don't fucking understand <laughs> how this is going to work in the story. You know, I remember back I in Resident Evil. I was going to say, Resident I definitely remember this from the games. Right? Yeah, this is actually right before the final boss where you fight Wesker, you know? This is their version of uh, playing Moonlight Sonata, I think. <laughs> Did you get to the part where, like, when we brought it up in the in the in the uh, trailer, where it looks like the camera's attached to her head and her head moving around while she's like her head not moving while she's running? It looks so freaking like she's her head's and like they stitched around her head and put everything in a green screen behind her when she's running or something. I, I don't even remember that. Um, I might have seen that part, but I don't think I have yet. Um. I saw the part with the worm and the, like I said, with the, with the arm, that's in episode one. Um, so, you know, before I forget, actually, there's something I do want to show you. Uh, so like I said, it's kind of similar to the live action death note where it's like as an adaptation, it sucks ass, but if you can distance yourself from it and just kind of experience it as something else and pretend, you know, like, cause what it, what it feels like is, all right, we're making a zombie series. And oh, guess what, guys? We just Netflix secured the rights. We can call it Resident Evil. You know, that's that's basically what it feels like. Yeah. All right. It basically has nothing to do with the games. There's a couple of like name drops here and there. Again, I've only seen the first two episodes, but uh, but other than that, it's not really, you know, it's not uh, other than like Umbrella, there's nothing huge so far. And of course, Wesker, uh, who remember they're gonna they're gonna reveal to me at some point how he's alive and black and not in a volcano. Uh, but in the series, and this is from episode two, um, you uh, you see her find a zombie. Like it's actually the husband of the woman whose house she's in right now. And um, he is uh, chained. He chained himself up in the bathroom and she needs to get something. Uh, he, she needs to get his pocketbook, right? So you see this guy. And when she's trying to get the thing out of his pocket, he starts to rip his hand off, Ooh. right? And it's a really good effect. Like it's, and the sound design and everything on it is just horrifying while you're watching it, right? So he gets his fucking hand off, right? He like it actually off. rips off, right? His and, and face the sound off? What? I was making a face off joke. Face off joke. My dad's. In that <laughs> um, and uh, then immediately you see his hand is still there. Oh my god! What? Continuity ruined. Right, you can literally see his hand attached to the pipe in the bathroom still. Right, and there it is. So it's like, <laughs> like he, he grew back, and he's like a friggin' gecko or whatever. Like grew back his hand. Okay, now I'm being a little facetious here. You can see the hand, right? Because what it turns out, I watched it frame by frame and I realized it's the sound design ruins it, you know, 
But if you're actually watching it frame by frame, paying attention, what's actually happening is the skin is ripping off. So yeah. what, what he left behind is basically he got gloved, right? Yeah. Okay. But that, that makes sense. But continuity still ruined because they didn't see, show it clear enough. No, look, look, oh. the fucking uh, hand fell out and the, the goddamn uh, handcuffs came oh, undone. <laughs> still continuity ruined. <laughs> <laughs> No, so I, I would legitimately, I'd recommend giving it a shot. Uh, if you can stomach, um, you know, things that are, that are attempting to uh, adapt things that you're like, wow, you didn't even play the games, did you? You know, but honestly, I, I would recommend at least giving it a shot because it's uh, so far, like, like I said, the stuff that happens in, uh, in her timeline is like, you're just like, oh shit, this is fucking real, you know, for a lot of it. Um, and it's it's fun to watch because it's a very different take than uh, than you've seen before in other zombie movies and um, and the games. You know, uh, some interesting like devices and ideas uh, surrounding how um, they protect themselves. In fact, she actually is uh, studying the zombies, and she's just like walking among them, and there's no issue. Um, but uh, she's like testing them, like and studying them by um I, I forget what she specifically does to the rabbit i don't know if she injects it or she pulls out she like withdraws blood oh, or she scratches it out? or something <laughs> yeah well but basically they're attracted to blood so what happens is she um she gets up and her arm grazes something and it cuts her and as soon as she draws blood they start chasing her right so it's a different take on on the whole idea uh, and it's kind of like the world building behind it seems like it could, they could do some interesting things with it, you know? So anyway, um, but then again, uh, when she's not bleeding in another part later on, she, uh, she gets chased by them in a way that I, I don't know. Well, well, I'll have to keep watching, but, uh, I'll let you guys know anyway. So, um, they said, uh, many will likely be surprised that the series included memorable foes from the game, such as the Lickers, haven't gotten that far, Dr. Salvador, haven't gotten that far, the Alligators, nope, uh, Giant Spiders, and the Tyrant. Well, I can't wait to get to that. Lisa Trevor puzzle solving, I'm sorry, Lisa Trevor puzzle solving, Moonlight Sonata, and other Resident Evil references were also said to be present by critics. Um, so, I don't know about that. I know that Lisa Trevor and all of this stuff that they just listed here is in Welcome to Raccoon City, the other recent adaptation. So I don't know. Maybe that's a mistake by Song Kaku Complex because I just can't imagine Lisa Trevor is going to show up in this series because Lisa Trevor is from Resident Evil 2 Remake where she's like a character in the mansion where the whole shebang starts, right? So I just, I don't know that that's going to happen. But the Moonlight Sonata and all that shit, that happens in Welcome to Raccoon City, if I remember correctly. Anyway, various other criti uh, criticized moments are likely to surface on social media and Twitter in the future. So guess what? Oh, I got to hold on. I got to I got to screen and share again. <laughs> Japanese fans criticize Netflix's Resident Evil. More like politically correct hazard right so uh also i i, I can't prove it yet because i've only seen two episodes um but i think wesker in this is not only black he is also gay <laughs> oh uh, <laughs> because his daughters are um adopted surrogate uh they were born oh. two separate egg donors in the same surrogate who delivered the baby. So they're technically twins because of this weird shit that's going on anyway. So Netflix just kicked off its new resident evil series. And as initially expected, the show has been scoring poorly amongst actual fans, including those in Japan who are generally more forgiving when it comes to live action adaptations. Since Netflix new resident evil show debuted on July 14th, it has scored as low as 53% by critics and a 1.8 amongst users on Metacritic's. 53% by critics? That's fucking abysmal. While there are plenty of shows and movies that score lower with critics and higher with the general audience, it wasn't the case for, for Resident Evil, with scores as low as 22% from the audience on Rotten Tomatoes and a 3.6 on IMDb. Honestly, from what I've seen so far, look, the stuff in the in like the 
2022 timeline yeah it's cringe as fuck but that's still pretty harsh from what i've seen so far so the netflix cg anime resident evil infinite darkness also had low scores but were still higher with a 50 percent rating from critics and a 39 percent audience score some suggest the low scores could be due to the changes made to albert wesker's character but japanese fans had plenty of other criticisms about the show quote I'm watching Netflix's Biohazard right now, but it's like politically correct hazard as expected. It's such a waste to go with Wesker again when you're going with a new approach for the story. That last CG anime Resident Evil on Netflix was also pretty iffy. Quote, All I have to say is the Netflix Resident Evil is honestly no fun at all. I just turned off my brain to watch it and still had enough. <laughs> I started watching the Netflix Resident Evil show and I've never felt this isn't it. I've never felt that this isn't it feeling so hard because of the influence of political correctness. I had to stop watching and I even liked the Wesker too. I can't imagine. <laughs> um, so that girl that was doing the singing, uh, she has a lesbian wife. Like she's, she's married to a woman in it, uh, which just it, that if that's what they're talking about, like uh, I just don't feel like they've stepped the, over the line yet uh, with what I've seen. But uh, I will, I will keep you posted. What, as I'm what's probably the point gonna... in you even bringing this up if it's like uh, to everything? You're like, I mean, I've only seen. I've two only episodes. seen two episodes. Give me a break. I mean, I've I've only only I'll, I'll keep you. Episodes. I'll keep you guys posted uh, next podcast with my full review. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so they said. Um, the Netflix Resident Evil drama is such a waste of time. I dumped it already. I was checking out the Netflix Resident Evil drama, but I couldn't get over how egotistical the female protagonist was. I watched the Netflix Resident Evil, but it was just so stressful. The producers just don't get it, do they? All we need for Resident Evil is explore, run away, and escape, okay? We don't need any of this human drama bullshit. They could have just made a live-action Revelations, and it would have... Uh, it would have definitely been more fun. Which one is Revelations? Uh, that's the one where you see Jill's ass a lot. I because you play as her. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I heard the Netflix Resident Evil show is terrible. Too bad we can't make Japanese movies, but with American money. Then we can hold then we can hold back on the American level political correctness. It's fine to have black people in there, but don't go around changing characters that were originally white. That's such a selfish change based on one's own convenience. Well, well, well dude, it, it's it's also the fact that his lore makes no sense in in uh like when you compare the lore to the original Wesker and stuff. It's like, yep, I got two daughters now, and no, I'm okay. So I'm a humble father. I, I am because they have promised to explain how he got out of the volcano. I am I am Wait, hopeful. For real? Yeah, that's that's what they promised to explain in, in, in what we've read so far and from what I've heard on on whispers on the internet from people who's watched it. So I can't wait to find out that what happened is his skin was singed black, and that's why <laughs> he's black. Because lava, man, right? I Fucking mean, don't lava, you remember? Man. Don't you remember when uh when Wesker was in the volcano? Let me uh, pull up an image here. Wesker in the volcano. He was already... He's already mostly black, right? Look at his face. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he goes through that gigantic transformation, <laughs> tries to like murder people, and then he comes back and he's like, mm, right. I'm going to settle down have a couple yeah. daughters. See, he's becoming black as we speak. Right, so that's that's got to be the explanation. Is that Lance Reddick is underneath that blonde, bl uh, bl what is it, red eyed? I guess. Right. No, so so the thing about his daughters is that that's actually his daughters aren't even really like important to him, like from like a familiar perspective. They literally are what's keeping him alive in the story because he's taking blood samples from them and injecting them into himself. And for some reason, that's stopping him from from like getting the Zombie shakes. That's fine. that's all I've seen in two episodes. And and uh, the lesbian um, lady doing that song and dance routine, uh, she uses that to whip him into into uh, obedience. Is like, well, you wouldn't want me to take away your daughters. <laughs> anyway, that's all I've seen in two episodes. But I, I just can't wait. Anyway, 
So, uh, so continuing, uh, it quote, it was okay. Uh, the part that Americans really don't seem to understand the most is why feel the need to change the race or gender of already existing characters. Why not just make a resident evil with a new story and new characters? Damn uh, yep. right. And then you can pull it. You can pack it full of black people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you, you suggesting pull, they just pull, adapt pull, Resident pull, Evil 5? Just ship them oh. Off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It doesn't seem like black people are particularly happy about this. It's probably vocal minority nonsense, if so. This we is got an interview with the spokesperson of black people for comment. <laughs> <laughs> this is the result of a blackwashed Resident Evil. Again, these are these are the uh, these are the thoughts of Japanese uh, Netflix viewers. <laughs> Did they think they could make something so boring and hide behind the shield of political correctness? Netflix originals are always full of weird shit. Yes, congratulations, Capcom. Deep dark fantasy with the female symbol or the male symbol. That's the male symbol. Hmm. Resident Evil 5 had a bunch of black people, so why not bring them out for that? (laughs) (laughs) They got your joke. You you nailed it just in time. (laughs) Anyway, like I said, I actually, like, again, I I actually really like the girl that is... um, I actually really really like like all two episodes that I've watched. I've only seen two episodes, guys, so... I'm just saying, this girl's fine, man, (laughs) in the show. (laughs) Anyway, uh, moving on from here. Danny says, howdy, guys. Hello. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Anyway, so uh, moving on. Nintendo is set to acquire a visual content company called Dynamo Pictures. Now, there's not really anything to say here other than um, they're taking over Dynamo Pictures, which are going to rename to Nintendo Pictures. So uh, seemingly they're thinking that, which this blows my mind, how... There isn't an anime or or whatever of Legend of Zelda yet. I mean, there's the shitty American show, right? There was the Super Mario Brothers Super Show and whatnot. There were like the Super Mario three like cartoon or I guess I shouldn't call it cartoon. There were car- Super Mario three anime. Effectively, I mean, there's the movie, the, the Japanese produced ones. Yeah, there's that movie that um, Fenboy Films, uh, the Kineko video, Kineko isn't that video uh, that they um, restored. Uh, restored. Thank you. Uh, so. So apparently, um, because of the upcoming Super Mario movie that they're now saying is already uh, three quarters of the way done, um, they're planning to shill out their IPs into uh, stuff based on a uh, using Dynamo Pictures, basically. So. I, I would like to correct you on a couple things. Yes, please. First of all, uh, you're forgetting the Donkey Kong Country animated show. Okay. Which is also American. Uh, yep. And you're forgetting the um, Captain uh, Kirby. N? Uh, well, Captain N, yeah, but Captain that wasn't nin- that wasn't Nintendo. That was notably not Nintendo. <laughs> um, Kirby, but, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. So there yeah. is an anime of Kirby. Yeah. There was Kirby, uh, shit, and I think that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, but but I'm just saying, like, I'm amazed that there aren't more. That they aren't also, pumping this out. You know. Also, reportedly. Although I don't know how true it was, but the rumor was that they were working on a Netflix uh, Legend of Zelda show, but it leaked. And because it leaked, Nintendo apparently got butt hurt over it and said, fuck you, and took it back. It leaked? I'm pretty sure there was an April Fool's joke or something about it. Or, or it was a fan film that they pretended was Netflix branded, like the same thing no, they did no. with the Berserk live action. Not nothing, no footage leaked, just the news that it was happening leaked. Yeah, and I'm and pretty then, sure then, that that was around April Fools. No, this this so IGN did an April Fools thing. That's maybe what you're thinking okay, about. Maybe. But um, there was uh, a leaked news I tidbit. Remember we covered that, that. it was a ne- rumor. Yeah, we covered it on the on the podcast. It was a rumor. Um, Maybe there's more to it that we didn't end up covering, but well, when, when we covered it, it was a rumor. The continuation of the rumor is it's not it, it. They canned it when the rumor leaked because they didn't want people knowing about it. I don't know. Well, That's it's, the rumor anyway. Regardless, it's cool that that Nintendo saying, "Well, fuck it, we'll do it ourselves." You know what I mean? We'll do it live. Yeah, I, I want I want more Nintendo shows. 
Jimmy Nam- I would love a live action Legend of Zelda with the showrunners of The Witcher. Without, <laughs> without the race swapping, you know. <laughs> Link's well, there's not <laughs> there's not actually that many characters in uh, in the Legend of Zelda. Yeah, the but race can you swap, imagine so. if they made like okay, the Gerudos are gonna be you know uh, I don't know. Oh. Like, no, I like I got a, some something more creative than that. <laughs> like, they gotta be Hispanic. Then. I can't think of anything now. <laughs> what other colors? They're Native American. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, because like, there aren't remember. that many characters, like you know. Unless they, unless they race swap either Link or Zelda, like basically, there's, there's, there's not gonna be one single cis white boy on that cast whatsoever. Yeah, yeah but basically, <laughs> if they're both white, Link's basically gay. everyone That'll else is like. Anyway, like, so, uh, uh, Sheik, actually, Link uh, or not Link, Sheik, um, Impa, Impa's gonna be like something else. Um, uh, Zelda did get an anime. It's called the CDI Games, best anime <laughs> ever. <laughs> Once again, not animated by Japan. <laughs> All right, so uh, Shuhei Uesugi joins the live action New Hacker Show cast. The point of this article is because we got pictures of all the. the yeah, other- and I would just like to point out that his name is as unappealing as his face. <laughs> Ooh. Oof. I'm just saying, Mike Uabara has red hair. <laughs> is a ginger. <laughs> um, Booty Royales. All of, yes, all of these look. Absolutely terrible. That looks terrible. Like a chick. Look, look, look at freaking look what they did to my boy he ate. Yeah, Come on, like, man. What the fuck? What He's the in fuck a is turtle his hair? What's up with his hair? Just wait for the Netflix version. They'll make you, it way better. Wouldn't it be this funny? is the Netflix, is the version. Netflix version you wait for. <laughs> This is the. Oh, I wait. Hold on. This is an Do English you not Netflix know version. Netflix right here. <laughs> big no, no. Netflix logo on every okay. single picture. Okay, hold on. Oh. <laughs> hold on. Okay, so, sorry. Yeah. But this is this is an uh, Japanese Netflix, isn't this is it? Japanese. Yes, yeah, so it's a Japanese. Yeah, it's a Japanese that's... cast. Yeah. Okay, a Western same, Western same version. Same as like then. the the Bleach or Full Metal Alchemist. Line. Yeah, the Full Metal Alchemist thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm talking. Western oh, Netflix. Please don't. Please, for the love of God, don't make a Western one. Or um, Mob Psycho uh, has a, has one as well. Yeah, on Mob Netflix. Psycho 100 has a Japanese one too. How do they do that when the faces have too many features? <laughs> God, I just like everything about this is awful. The only thing that could make this better is if the original cast did the dub. For the English language yeah, one, yeah. so I could, so I could have Chris Sabat <laughs> as Kuvara again, and um, um, fuck it, Chuck <laughs> yeah, Kuvara. yeah, we need it. Which one is Kuvara? Which one is Kuvara? Is he on here? This is the blue. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris Sabat, Chuck <laughs> Huber, Justin Cook, or Justin Cook. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I need their voices out of these people. Just... Uh, I, can't, I can't think of John Bergmeier. I think voices. Uh, what's his name? Karama. That that sounds right. Karama would be voiced by John Bergmeier. Um. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So that's it. That's that's it. Let's move on. Okay. Um. Oh streaming news. Let's crash through these. So Tiger and Bunny. Two sets global premiere date for the second part. So the series is going to return to Netflix for more episodes on October 7th. That's it. I thought Random Eleven would appreciate knowing that. Uh, here is uh, uh, what I was saying before about um, season two of, uh, Record, of of Record of Ragnarok. I guess there isn't a date. Well, the it's only like... reason we're showing this article is because of Blue Tongue guy over the, up there. Yep. And that's it. Okay, moving on. Guess that's it. That's uh, Poseidon, if you couldn't tell. Because he totally looks like Poseidon. Right? Uh... All right, so the Netflix of Bastard anime English dub is showing discrepancies. Oh, no. No! Okay, so honestly, I'll be real. Most of these are not that big of a deal. <laughs> uh Okay, An individual yeah. watching Netflix's Bastard anime learned that the English dub has taken liberties with the source material, expunging the mentioning of young girls whilst pushing a feminist narrative. 
a turn of events that will hardly prove surprising at this point. So uh, this is the part where she's um, uh, being tactical getting... raped. No, no, no. In the in it, she uh, her clothes get dissolved by um, slime. At least right, the, right. the clothes the dissolving slime. It doesn't dissolve more than just that. Though. Gets it every time. I, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So uh, she's well endowed for a girl in the sub change to she's actually pretty hot like that is a perfectly fine localization yeah. right then there's if you try anything i'll bite my tongue now this one is retarded if you try anything weird i'll bite your tongue off she's being empowered now yeah that's a uh, ridiculous change. yeah uh, and then scrolling right past that. <laughs> At that point, um, you might as well you might as well say, I "I'm gonna kill you." Like, why I'm would you cut say, your I'll, own dick off? Yeah, I'll she, she, I'll she bite says, I'll bite, "If you try anything, I'll bite your dick off." Or, I, you know, I would. Like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was either bastard or Vinland song, but I'm pretty sure it was bastard. Uh, I watched, and there's like a full on like typo in the the subtitles. So like the the switch between your and my might just be a typo no no no. that's the dub the dub line you're saying the dub says i'll bite your tongue off you can't be typos oh. in the dub okay but, but, well but, uh, i mean but... there it's it's not a dub i'm looking at a subtitle of the dub i get that yes but, but i just... could play them i just didn't test okay. them to make sure that okay to make sure that we uh could could do that so, all right well um, maybe 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 you should play them so in the, i'm just in kidding the sub sheila said they say Sheila, let's go while those idiots buy some time. Ladies first. Now, this I am very pissed that they changed because he says this in English. Ladies first. Huh? <laughs> so we sh this is what they say in the job. We should get going while your knights are buying some time for us. You go up first. And the, the idea is he's making her go up first so he can pick up her skirt. Oh my god. Because oh. he's a fucking I love. Dark Schneider. He is he is my favorite trope of anime pervert. Uh, so another example had female character Sheila blaming Schneider instead of demanding he take responsibility for the way he had been carrying her around on his shoulders, which caused Sheila to think that her body is now soiled. You must take responsibility for this. Uh, I'll have you know this is your fault, not mine. In the uh, in the dub. I, I mean that's a, that's. A, decent translation yeah you I must take responsibility for this like you're responsible this is your fault not mine that's not that's not that big of a deal my body is soiled i can't marry anyone now um from the first episode and third episodes memeshi which roughly translates to whoosh wuss instead being swapped out to the weaker and less offensive scaredy cat Again, like I, that's with... really not a big deal. Like they're really nitpicking here. You bitch, you are. I think bitch. you're being favoritism to it. I haven't watched I... it yet. That's uh, not the tism that he has. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an, an ism without the T. No, there's a T in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's a different ism. It's a different ism, but it, it's the, I was going to say retardism, but no. Oh, I was saying <laughs> Such translation sabotage is not a new thing for the West, as English dubs have for years been forcibly inserting politics and nonsense not in the source material. So we do have a hope in that Netflix dubs uh, don't usually make it to physical media. So oh. when this comes to Sentai Filmworks, presumably. Uh, maybe they won't have her say, I'll bite your tongue off, and maybe they'll throw in, uh, I'll bite your dick off, bitch. <laughs> well, well, I think the tongue thing is like, that. that's basically saying, uh, I'll kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a terrible, uh, it's a terrible translation for that particular line. The rest of them aren't that bad. Also, the second batch of Bastard episodes are set to debut this September. Um, Netflix, uh, Announces launch plans for episodes 14 to 24 is going to be coming out on uh, September 15th. So I will wait. I'm thinking of waiting because Lord knows I haven't finished fucking Kengan Ashura because I didn't wait. Um, but uh, the thing is, though, that 
in order for Netflix to determine that this show is a success, they go based on the watch time hours of the first 28 days. So if I'm going to give fucking Resident Evil that watch time hours and not this, when I actually expect this to be good, uh, I, I'm going to be shooting myself in the foot. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. I, I thought you said you downloaded all of Resident Evil off of Naya. I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think I got the screenshots? <laughs> Goodbye, Don Gleese. Anime film is hitting U.S. theaters in September. Uh, it's going to be screened at select theaters on September 15th, 2022 in an English dub format and September 16th in Japanese language and English subtitles format. So uh, I don't really think I want to see this. Um, I want to see it. It looks pretty fun. Uh, it looks, it looks it's, the, the title looks really fucking stupid. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it, it's a different... Why is there an acorn in the O? Uh, I don't know. You gotta go on a watch to find out. Anyway, <laughs> Toei considers legal action against illegally recorded uploads of Dragon Ball Super superhero footage. Good thing we uh, set, enforced the Discord guidelines quickly. <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't download. <laughs> How many uh, copies are on Naya? <laughs> so you wouldn't download it car would you <laughs> downloading is theft uh once again i'll just remind everybody that if i could yes i fucking would download a car <laughs> i think every <laughs> single person would so toei identified about three thousand illegal uploads 10 days after the film's opening toei revealed on monday that it has identified about three thousand cases of illegally recorded uh footage uploads of dragon ball super superhero the second anime film in the Dragon Ball Super franchise. No, it's actually the fourth. They just called the first 2Z. On various platforms such as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, 10 days after the film's opening, um, according to Toei, the number of cases is about 10 times that of the previous film, Dragon Ball Super Broly. Yeah, they're gonna they're just going to use this to uh, explain why this film is bombing in the box office compared to Broly. The company added that it is looking into legal action against these uploads and is eyeing the matter as both a criminal and civil case. Toei has also filed a request with the pers with the respective platforms to remove the illegally uploaded footage. People who violate Japan's Copyright Act and its Act on Prevention of Unauthorized Recording of Films and the general copyright law face up to 10 years in prison, up to 10 million yen, about 73,000 U.S. dollars in fines, or both. By the way, if you guys want uh, a reason to hate uh, Shinzo Abe, uh, he was instrumental in passing the uh, um, the Trans-Pacific Partnership in Japan. So God damn it, now Abe. I hate him. Yeah. <laughs> good on that guy I'm with his makeshift. I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> yeah, good on that guy with his makeshift shotgun. Getting the job done. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> anyway, so I just I love this that uh, that they're like, yeah, we're gonna go after those three thousand people. Like, good luck, yeah, if you can find them, <laughs> good luck. Anyway, so uh, uh, everything animated says people are so tired of Dragon Ball Super. Well, that's unfortunate considering. Uh, 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 oh shit, it's all the way in games news. Fuck. <laughs> considering. Uh, I can confirm this is a, a rumor here. Weekly Dragon Ball episodes are set at the weekly Dragon Ball episodes set after the universe survival arc are in production. Anime will be back in 2023. A new Dragon Ball movie after Superhero is currently in pre production. Toei is planning to release movies once in two to three years. That's all for now. To which Emperor Big D said. <laughs> You should have been in Uchi Gang's stream the other night. I said 2023 anime, 2024 uh, Xenoverse 3. Fucking Lance is gone. <laughs> Plans could change, but oh well. So yeah, this is literally only being covered because Lance wanted us to. But but I'm glad that I was able to... Uh, I'm glad I was able to incorporate that into your comment, everything animated. So anyway, uh, in actual anime news... I would just like to open all these tabs. Did you Emma, read the, the comment by um, Luigi? This one? Um, about, this no, one? it was a yes. long time ago. Long time this ago one? about uh, 
the seven seas. seven seas. I have it starred because we're gonna uh, have to come we, back to that. We did cut, okay. get that. We we got the we got it in the article. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. So um, half the VAs are dead now, right? <laughs> They're gonna keep going in after the OGs die. Uh, well, I mean, Bulma uh, oh, didn't Vegeta die recently or something? The voice actor, somebody died. Anyway, um, Trigun Stampede is giving Vash strange new design. Wow, can you believe it? This was from July 3rd, and we haven't covered it yet, because that's how goddamn long I made us wait. I was uh, thinking, was like, Jesus Christ, how long ago was well, 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 for oh, first, damn. It isn't, um, isn't the new Trigun anime as a whole an announcement? Like, no, no, we covered, was def- we covered we- that, that they were doing a CG anime, but we didn't get to see it. Uh, for the okay. like, the we thing, had that the one, vi- we just had that visual in the studio, yeah. and then we got the trailer after the podcast. After that podcast, yeah, so uh, it looks um, awful. Like, I don't know, it looks like my, shit, but my resident, my resident lover of CG anime, resident uh, random 11 to uh, to tell me. Did you think uh, that this looked good? So uh, the animation looks really shit. It's it's weird that the the, the part at the beginning and the end with the, with them as a kid looks worse than uh, than normal Vash. Hopefully uh, like, that's because there's going to be almost none of that in the actual series. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, hopefully. I'm hoping that's um, the first three minutes. <laughs> hopefully. Obviously, they changed the um, the the design of Vash to be like weirdly like he's got an upcut now or whatever you call that. He's like got under, the undercut. Haircut. Um, and I've um, got a I've got a perfect representation of Vash's haircut. Uh, <laughs> In fact, he's uh, got the earrings to match. No, <laughs> I, don't worry. I, he they he had before, but it's just, I know consequential but he's got oh. it in the gay ear now yeah what the sad thing is i they there was in the manga there was this one scene where like he was he was propositioned by a hooker that, you know just like oh i always wanted to you know like Oh, the big outlaw! It's like he's I'm like, sorry. Hold know. on, hold on. The right ear is the gay ear. We're safe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but the thing is, like he said no, and so like if they have that scene, obviously they're gonna push that so far that he's gay because he doesn't actually have a love interest in the series. He's a stoic. <laughs> That's he loves, why he loves he was- donuts. <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, the one with the chocolate cream filled donuts. <laughs> you telling um, me that he was into Wolfwood? No. <laughs> but yeah, this is just so stupid. It's like, let's give him, it, they even gave him new glasses. And it's uh-huh. like, let's make him look like the, the most iconic. Mod- the iconic glasses get yeeted for just like Digibro style glasses. Right? Hajime yeah. Mashita, fellow weebs. And dude, his spiky like, hair was like so iconic. Like, yeah, and the freaking glasses, like they're so small. Like they, they basically practically did nothing for him anyway when he had them on. Yeah, they were like, basically That was like the freaking covering his whole freaking face. I'm pretty sure Helsing probably took some inspiration from this because, uh, you know, the red coat, the the circular glasses, and all that. Mm, and I they're think like Helsing ah. came first. I looked it up. I think oh. so. I'm pretty sure it was Helsing that took from them in that case. What Otherwise, I was going to say uh, is maybe they stole it. Well, remember from what I remember. Helsing what I, just, also just quickly took it in the ass. <laughs> okay, just quickly. What I was going to say is. From what I remember, there were a couple good, uh, like background scenes, uh, at one point in the trailer, but uh, yeah, for the most part, it's it's CG animation. It's shitty. Trigun it, came first. Trigun came first. Yeah, it that's, came that's ninety. Ninety-five. 
Yeah, and 97 so, was Helsing. Yeah. You can really tell with his metal arm here that this is the studio that did Land of the Lustrous. Yeah. And apparently Land of the Lustrous was amazing and amazingly animated. Like yeah, when, I, when I look at this, that's I that's am like your opinion, looking man. at a video. No, game but that's what, what I'm hearing everybody say when they talk about Land of the Lustrous. How oh, long is Land of Lustrous? Like 13 well, episodes. All right. Uh we've got our next watch quote. <laughs> I'm okay with that because uh I, I I started it, so I need to get it off my on hold. Yeah, me too. I, well, I didn't start it, but I want to see it. <laughs> So honestly, the thing that ruins it for me are the camera moves. Not like this is fine, you know. The actual mine is action. the frame rate. Like it's always choppy with CG and anime, and they're like, "Oh, let's keep doing that." <laughs> I think that they've really mastered the uh, the action cameras, but I I hate the like like the subtle camera move, the camera rotation like this, because it always gives away the three D effect. So um, let's uh, let's address. Apparently, he also had uh, the iconic belts on his arms, which apparently Digimon uses on all of their friggin' Digimon. You know, I mean, that's best. the that's the real crime. Got the jacket. Like, look at look at ass. the difference between adult Vash and kid Vash. Kid like, Vash is so much worse with his haircut. It looks it, like well, in the I too. Even the body, nice. though. That Even the body with... I, think it, I think it is knives actually. That's that's knives. That's that knives because one... knives is the one going. Vash. <laughs> um. So also we we want to point out. I like how they use an actual just drawing of him. Still looks like ass though. Looks better, but still. It would be hilarious if they put a three D model screen cap low res like low poly on there like they turned like they turned like a hologram paper but it's just like who the fuck draws a wanted poster this accurate with him in the fucking pose and everything you know the sh shitty camera or uh, you know have you, know, have you seen one piece have you seen one piece anyway so nami's me, me... nami's fucking out there like on a lounge chair like <laughs> with but is a... that a photo or a drawing it's a, it's a. Oh, actually, no. It might be a drawing. Yeah, Dude, yeah, yeah. imagine, imagine if. Uh, oh, like, sorry. I meant, uh, uh, it, it it's a photo. photo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if in One Piece or some show, the wanted poster for someone like Nami, it's just her titties. Wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I remember there being like a side story about Ab the cameraman. Absolutely for, uh... wanted. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. So we've got, uh, we have a theory here. So this says wanted alive. Six million double dollars. Yeah. Now Vash is the sixty, 60 billion, billion double, double dollar, dollar man, right? Like dead or dead or alive. or alive. Yeah. So, so the possibility here is that this is going to take place before the anime that was released by Genion over here. Oh, uh, right, that's, okay. that's what we're before thinking. the before the catastrophe that made yeah. him. Well, maybe, maybe that's why he doesn't have his like glasses him. yet. Well, uh, and everything else, the haircut and all that. Like, maybe he's younger. Although, I mean, I mean he's, he's pretty young. He's young and dumb. He's always that, though. The, th the thing I don't like the most it's about this is... just going to be the origin like, uh, of his love of donuts. <laughs> this is like Halo Reach. It's like, it takes place before the first Halo game, but the details on the uh, on the armor is it's so much more detailed. And it's like... It makes no sense. Looks Why would so it be more better. detailed when it's yeah. older? So it looks, it looks far more like, advanced in the older design than a new one. And, and in this, it's more modern hipster when he's younger, and then as things go, it becomes more like '80s or whatever traditional. Yeah. Look at that spiky hair. What was wrong with that? It hasn't <laughs> grown out yet. They hadn't invented hair gel yet. <laughs> What's this guy's it, name? Um, Legato. I don't remember him at all. I thought that was the. He guy looks like he stepped out of voice. fucking um, Scryed. Like he kind of reminds me of Ryuho from Scryed, um, who doesn't look anything like this, but he—that's he, the vibe I'm getting. Brad, you didn't say your thing yet of the whole. Uh, what is it? 
on second thought, maybe Johnny on. Yeah, Bosch I was, I was the... gonna say, uh, I had I had tweeted uh, that one day, right? We had talked about um, Johnny Young Bosch said he wasn't going to be involved because it, the the article said a different voice cast, but they were referring to the Japanese voice cast, right? And I said, if if Johnny Young Bosch and um, Jeff Nimoy aren't involved, then what's the point, right? But then as soon as I saw this trailer, I quote tweeted and said, oh, on second thought, maybe it's a good thing, Johnny Young maybe Bosch. Maybe they dodged a bullet. Nimoy. Yeah, maybe they dodged a bullet. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. I mean, I would much rather see this. I, I am afraid of what uh, Millie uh, is going to look like. Oh, God. If, if we've got this for Vash, I just fully expect the two girls are just going to be. Yeah, yeah gonna Millie be. and Meryl aren't going to look too, <laughs> too great. Uh, at, Millie's, at Millie's the shorter one? Meryl's the shorter one. Yeah, okay. Mer 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 Meryl's, Meryl's the shorter one. Meryl's the one that I have an issue with. Uh, what they she look like. She was the hot one to begin with. Um, <laughs> and because she's the love interest, so uh, they, depending not on really. how... Yeah, not really. She's your I love mean, interest. She's best girl. So. I mean... She she likes Vash, yes, but but Vash does it like... He likes... Uh, what he, he was into... What was her name? Um, Julia. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Whoa. That's the wrong show, but no, yeah, no, the no, the no. person that took care of her or them, right? Yeah. Um. But um. I I, yeah. sure, I just freaking wish that Madhouse has come back. I mean, kind of... isn't it just like you look at this? You're like this the 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 design and everything was just so fucking iconic. I mean, yeah. this was like the the anime in the '90s. Like this was it. You know, like this was the thing that made anime so fucking cool, and we're replacing it. With this shit. So I'll, I'll just repeat. If they're going to fuck with the character because of Western ideas, um, it'll be Meryl, is my bet. Um, and, uh, although I don't know. They, I, think it, they, I think it's going to be Millie, really, to be honest. I mean, they they a, might not even be in the show, though, if it's a prequel. They're not going to... Uh, I don't know. Well, if it's a prequel, maybe hope. they'll break up, and then that'll explain why they're not together later. <laughs> His life as a well, he doesn't know them at the beginning of the show, right? right. He no. he first well, they, meets they, them, but then. they do start following after he after he becomes like the humanoid tech. Honestly, tech this being a prequel, you can just virtually like blank this out when it's trash. Well, that's if it's a prequel, yeah. right? And and the, and the thing is that it's called Trigun Stampede, so I I feel like it's going to be the what definitive. made him. Like, like we're saying that what made him Vash the Stampede, the humanoid typhoon, like that's going to be the thing, right? That is going to uh, establish the sort of the lore that we go into the actual good show with. Anyway, by the by, the way, to bring it full circle, so um, I done it's a circle. Cr Crunchyroll <laughs> on their Crunchyroll dubs and I guess their regular channel on this is YouTube. What we had previously showed. They posted the first episode of Trigun, and it went up to 1080p. <laughs> so the question is, when's the Trigun Blu-ray coming? Yeah, but the the, Jap the masters in Japan are gone or something, wasn't it? Okay, well, to answer your maybe question. Maybe you didn't hear what he just said. <laughs> no, no, they can, they can upscale that shit to 1080p, yeah. no problem. Well, uh, was, okay, so, so the answer... The Does he still want to know when, when that upscale is going to end up on answer, my friend, is hanging well, in the wind. Well, the, what I was going to tell you is, uh, so when I looked at it on YouTube, it did not even look upscaled to me, honestly. Uh, you tell me. Uh, I'll find the link. Two weeks ago. Well, he ago, did wear so. the glasses as actual glasses occasionally. Anyway, um, everything Anne says, yeah, Vash looks like a uh, hipster, which I totally agree. All right, I linked y'all's. And then we got a copyright claim. Uh, yeah, well, that looks like an upscale. Don't. It doesn't even look like an upscale. It looks so bad. <laughs> okay, hold up, hold up. My thing was at 360 feet. <laughs> uh, yeah, that definitely looks like an upscale. I will show you precisely why. 
ba, ba, da, ba, 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 ba. you can actually see see the line how it's all lit up right here against oh, the, the line yeah well that's not ghosting that's that's what happens when you upscale things is it creates that weird border effect that's called a, ghosting. It, well, it's actually an artifact of sharpening, but anyway. Right. And, yeah, you, this and is, you can this see is the... absolutely positively an upscale. Best girl. And big Bertha. <laughs> like you can see the still lines flickering because it's trying to interpolate the noise or whatever. Well, just look this at the collar. Upscale. Look yeah, at look this. At... That... Are you blind? I didn't say there wasn't an upscale. I'm saying it looks like <laughs> ass. <laughs> oh, I thought you. I thought you said it looked great. Well, he said it. He, he said it didn't even look upscale. This, I think, what he was saying. Mm. But the fact that it's 1080p. Oh, you're means saying that it. You're saying it didn't look upscaled, as in it. It looks uh, like a DVD quality. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what you meant, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it looks fucking horrible. Do you want th- a Blu-ray? I think that's what he meant. Uh, Luigi the Mel si- is that Luigi the Mel sixty four who asked that a couple times, or is it someone else? But uh, whoever I, was asking it, I think all it was of us you. verbally. <laughs> I, I would love to have this on like a proper film scan Blu-ray. Also, fucking Oh yeah, because this looks balls sucks. Anyway, uh, yeah, again, the sixty billion double dollar man. What, what the uh, hell is a double dollar? Why not pl- pay single dollars twice? Or like... A banana Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> She's best girl. <laughs> Does I, I she think, want, uh, doesn't she say a banana split in the dub or something? <laughs> she can have my banana Sunday anytime. Gilzino like, says, sup, nerds? My banana anytime. <laughs> All right, so you have any more you want to say about the uh, Trigun Stampede? Ha, good luck, guys who are uh, right on out here. who are nostalgic for this because I haven't. Even yeah, seen it. it's not for you. I hate to, I hate to be that guy, but it's like I'm not watching because I don't want this type of crap to succeed. I mean, it looks like it's getting better overall. Oh season. yeah, no, th- and I said that all the time about how you know. Some anime have to take the hit so that the CG can get better. Yeah. The problem We've been at is, this stage for so long. No, no, no. Some, the problem is this CG good. looks great. It looks great. The problem is the design for Bash is ass. It's complete ass. So so that's the part that's failing here. Like the, the motion and the camera moves, they've they've really gotten it down. The problem is that they were just working with it looks like shit. Design. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the part with his mom or whoever, like, she looks fucking great in the trailer when she's like, uh, where is the, where the fucking don't have it. It's in the previous article. When he's like, Nyeh! no, when she's like, uh, this one, this looks fucking fantastic in motion. It, it, like, it's just, it's when, it's when Vash was good. running as a child, he looked like complete ass. Yeah, I'm talking about her. Talk about her. She looks great. And uh, if you watch, uh, you know, fucking Last Exile, go look at the fucking CG in that. That's goddamn terrible compared to this. You know, so like it's definitely improved. What it's was just that, that almost 20 years ago now? Yes. So it look took at us how 20 far years we've ago. It, Jesus. Yeah, it's well, taken well, us 20 well, years and it still has ass. Yeah. 2006. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Anyway. But I, I'm saying we I feel like we should have come farther at this point that we don't have these like, oh, this part looks really yeah, ass, but, but look it at, has this good but quality. But look at how few in those 20 years, not 20 years, but, you know, I, I'm telling you, the frame rate bugs me to no end. And then Berserk 2017. <laughs> anyway, solo leveling anime officially announced coming 2023 from Anaplex and Crunchyroll. God so, damn. Why did it have to be Anaplex? So Could random eleven, you uh, actually show, shared this like it was something you were interested in. Everyone no, under I just the shared sun it I loves it. this show mm. or this manhwa. He used to be the weakest solo leveling. No shared experience here. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I don't know. Price. I've heard it's good, so I'm looking forward to it. 
So a, a special illustration was also revealed to commemorate the announcement, as well as a message from the original creators that were translated here. So, by the way, Solo Leveling is a um, it's a Korean. Mon oh, it's a yeah, Korean. It's a, it's a okay. Korean uh, novel, like a light novel, like a, no. like a web a web novel no. that was then converted into a. Uh, well, actually, if I just fucking read it, maybe I'll get it. Okay. Uh, about six years ago, when I was writing the very beginning of Solo Leveling, if someone had said to me, the novel you wrote will become a comic, I bet I'd have told them to stop pulling my leg. But now I'm told it'll be animated. Seriously, stop pulling my leg. But these days, I'm feeling excited and thrilled. Since I'm still half doubting that this is real, I want to see Jin Woo and the other characters get animated soon and feel relieved. I'll keep working diligently while looking forward to that day. So I just want to point out, he mentions Jin Woo. That's the name right? of the main character. Uh-huh. But the solo leveling anime might not follow the original Manwa series. Oh, great. <laughs> After so years of petitions and what seemed to be an endless amount of wait time, solo leveling is finally getting an anime adaptation. However, after taking a deeper look at the trailer and other info, we've seen the, uh, and other info we've seen for the upcoming series, a new question arises. What exactly is Studio A1 adapting? Oh, this is A1? A1? Shit. At least now, good. Uh, this is probably wrong. Anime Senpai's probably, they probably mean anime. Anyway. Um, <laughs> most fans will know of Sung Jin Woo. And his adventures through the solo leveling manhwa. However, that's not the only way you can read his story. Before being illustrated in its full glory by Red Eye Studio, the series was originally a well-known South Korean web novel known under the name Only I Level Up, written by Chu Gong. The original novel quickly gained popularity within South Korea before eventually getting translated and taking the world by storm. From there, the series was adapted into a source-accurate manhwa that only boosted the series' popularity and fan base. So which of the series is the studio adapting into their anime, you ask? Well, neither. The anime will instead be following the recently released Japanese solo-leveling light novel. Although the general plot will stay the same, this does mean that there will still be a couple of changes from, uh, from the Korean light novel and manhwa from what Korean light novel and manhwa readers are expecting. The first of these changes is the characters' names, something that can already be seen in the Japanese version of the internet-breaking trailer, where the name Sung Jin Woo is changed to Shun Mizushino. The Japanese light novel makes a handful of other subtle changes, like art styles uh, based on Japanese influence. These changes may or may not be translated into the anime. Seeing as how there is some controversy around the series currently regarding its anti-Japan stance, something that was also altered in the Japanese light novel, the studio may Are use you? this adaptation of the series as a way to alter the anime as well. We don't know for sure what Studio A1, what whatever the studio ends up being, has planned for this anime, but whatever it is, we'll be watching the close eye, blah, blah, blah. This is the usual worst part of the article where the ending doesn't matter. Anyway, so yeah, they're not, they're not even gonna. The guy's like, "Oh, I can't wait to see my boy in the anime." And it's like, "Oh, it's the Mizushino guy." <laughs> anyway. Doesn't even have the same haircut. Oh, now he doesn't hate Japan. Oh, <laughs> he is the anime. Also, you shared this as well. Uh, at least the, the existence of this muscles and magic manhwa, or sorry, muscles and magic manga <laughs> Mashal. Gets TV anime in 2023. So, Reese, you're telling me about like the concept behind this is that instead of mad, it's like it's like imagine Harry Potter goes to uh, goes to wizarding school, but decides to to rock Lee his way through it instead of learning any magic. Is that what's going on here? Yeah, because that sounds that's, fucking amazing. That <laughs> that's is. my understanding. Right? Apparently, it. it's going to have a complete adaptation because the manga is coming to an end. That's fucking. I can't wait to watch this. This it, sounds great. It, I I seen the manga and um, I saw the manga and um, <laughs> and uh, it looked interesting. I was gonna pick it up, but maybe I'll wait for the anime now. Yeah. Oh, all right. Do you on. see uh, anime north? Uh, also, hey. No, I didn't. Hey, fans of CG anime, Slam Dunk's uh, who, who, new anime who's... movie. Who are fans of CG anime? Tell me what you Speaking think of this. to nobody. 
Oh, gross. Gross. Slam. Wait, no. Okay, I'm thinking of the wrong. I'm thinking of the wrong uh, manga. I'm like, Slam Dunk, isn't that Man, look at look at the stretching of the fucking. Ah, just gross. So I think it, as it's... in a still frame, it looks pretty decent, but. Yeah, yeah doesn't it <laughs> no. look like uh, Dragon Ball Super <laughs> Superhero? I disagree. Where, the, where uh, the still frames are like, wow, it looks just like the manga. And no. then as soon as you're watching in motion, like I completely disagree. Like, hold on. With both both of those statements. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh god damn it. Copyright strike. Okay, this guy back here, look at how jank this CG character huh. looks. Look at the crowd. Yeah. Like everything about That's that gonna is be fucking jank. awful. Uh can't wait till I get that copyright claim. Uh, so the first slam dunk. I can't wait. It's gonna be a, a documentary on the very first time somebody slam dunk. <laughs> no, that's not what's gonna happen. Huh? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Holy crap! Uh, <laughs> right stuff sales with all loop, uh, daily deals, all loop on stuff. So the Ooh. bleach thousand year blood war. Oh, that's what I was saving it for. <laughs> oh wait, I already, I already got rid of the <laughs> the Ronan Job one. The thousand year blood war has all the memorable characters, including. Is this Vic's character? Is no, he, he, no. Wait, what? No, those are Stern Ritter. Those are the bad guys. Vic's I don't character know who would any be, of these characters uh, are because okay. I haven't even gotten out of the Soul Society arc yet. Anyway, um, it doesn't look like I remember. <laughs> <laughs> are they gonna I'll, like retcon I'll the time skip in the anime? Uh, I don't know. That's Ren I'm not Goku. Asking you, oh, what's Mr. this guy's I name? Not Ren Goku. That's Ruby. the guy from Demon Slayer. What's his name? That's Renji. Renji. He was. The I best. like to call him Reggie. Like, get rid of the N. <laughs> just, just sounds funny. Wait a minute. Isn't this the guy from uh, Record of Ragnarok? <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish I could grow eyebrows that long. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this bay? A soy phone. Kenpachi. I wonder how they're gonna cool? handle the the character that's uh the um Nell? Uh no, the one that's like a tranny or whatever. Nell? Is that Nell? is that what it is? Oh yeah, actually I don't know the name of it. But anyway. Nell? I don't think Nell's a tranny. character Bleach the, Tranny. The, the one the one where uh I believe it's uh Zimpake. Zimpake. Zimpachi? Zimpachi, yeah. Wait, Kenpachi, you mean? Kenpachi, there you go. Oh man, it's been forever. What? I'm pretty a sure. Tranny? No, no, no. Kenpachi's fighting them, and then oh, he's okay. like, he's like, I know you. You smell like a guy because. Oh you right, because you masturbated <laughs> too much. <laughs> You're talking uh, about um, uh, uh, Gazelle. I I wouldn't know their name. Yeah, hold on, I'll pull it up. Talking about uh, this character, right? Yeah, that looks familiar. Th this is the person who came up when I searched Bleach Training. So that's, I've never seen this person before in my life, but I just I went with it because I assumed that, that I was correct. Did you just assume? I sure did. Okay, anyway. just checking. Uh, so yeah, there's that. There's, there's our bleach training. Um, so I don't know how they're gonna handle that. Uh, I'm gonna love it when Viz releases collector's editions for for this series, and me and Footnum get cut. Well, I don't think we'll be buying. Yeah, a thousand blood war on Blair, yeah. but I could see Viz doing that. I could totally see Viz being like, I'd rather not get edition. cut. But... Did, uh, did... <laughs> if I had a choice, <laughs> <laughs> did characters have? Uh, did characters have? Um, non-black uh eyelashes in the original in the manga uh i think they're dead i fucking um, hate hate in the anime um i don't think they I hate that i think shit. they had black eyelashes i'm fairly certain even the um it looks like the only person who has eyelashes that are that are not black the, the, is, the, uh, the kid with the white hair uh the well, ice guy yeah Doesn't that's he have that specific guy I was just looking at didn't, but this kid doesn't. His are fine. But That's Captain Hitsugaya to you. This guy has them. 
whoever this is. Yeah. Anyway, I hate that. And that aesthetic looks horrible in anime. I've always <laughs> anyway, moving on. So Studio Trigger announces the return of Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt. To our dismay. He had a black eye. <sighs> So, in one of the most unexpected but welcome anime announcements in recent memory, according to uh, Bounding into Comics. Hey, Studio I Trigger welcome has... it. <laughs> no, I don't want to see any more of this shit. Um, Studio it Trigger has confirmed. So, like, abruptly. I know. I like, oh, it, it ended oh. on a ridiculous cliffhanger. Uh, but, yeah. so because Studio Trigger has Gynax. Is... Oh, and doesn't, my favorite... doesn't the one, like, go evil and, like, betray yeah, the other one? Yeah, I think Monica Real's character. Yeah. Wait, they so they represent real life? Ten years. <laughs> they were so, just going to re um, reenact what's going to happen in a, in a few months when, when Vic's court case comes in. And Mark right? is just going to throw oh, Jamie into the Oh, man, I just can't wait for that. And my favorite thing is the very first thing I saw when this got announced is maybe now Garter Belt could actually be voiced by a black VA. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, shit. I remember seeing that. They're oh, coming for you. <laughs> They're coming for you, Sabin. Yeah. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Hold on, I, I, I actually have that, like, right fucking here. So 12 years later, there's totally enough diversity in the voiceover space to have a black VA be cast as garter belt. There's no excuse this time. I mean, there's one excuse that... Uh... No disrespect or change. shade to Mr. Sabbath, though. Oh, fucking. <laughs> uh, the, the excuse is I own the place. <laughs> I, I mean, the excuse is consistency. <laughs> right. That's what I was saying, but. I mean, they've they've perfectly cast the girls. Uh, they're demons, <laughs> right? <laughs> Fallen angels. <laughs> Anyway, um, so the renowned animation studio unveiled the return of the animated love letter to Western cartoons during their July 2nd panel at Anime Expo 2022 convention, presenting a attendees with a brief clip of the two giving the bird alongside the text, New Panty and Stocking. According to reports, this return will come in the form of an official second season, which will ostensibly pick up from the cliffhanger ending that viewers were left on when the girls, uh, with, when the girls first outing concluded in 2011. Wherein, so they want to make another show, or, or sorry, they want to add to their catalog of horrible endings. Uh, wherein uh, Stocking cuts Panty up into 666 pieces before daring their <laughs> companion Brief to collect them all and rescue her. <sighs> Conceived of and directed by Gurren Logan and Kill a Kill creator Hiroyuki Yamaishi for Studio Gainax, Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt follows the exploits of the eponymous angels Panty and Stocking, who, after being kicked out of heaven for unruly behavior, must earn their way back home by defeating ghosts under the guidance of the Reverend Garter Belt. Despite finding massive popularity among audiences, as well as the first season ending with an explicit text promise of a sequel, or of a second, uh, the Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt IP would proceed to be placed even lower on Gainax's priority list in the years following Imaishi's 2011 <laughs> decision to strike out on his own and co-found Studio Trigger with FSL director Masahiko Otsuka. To this end, it appears that the sisters are only getting a second chance at life thanks to Imaishi and Studio Trigger outright acquiring the Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt IP from Gainax. Man, the fall from grace Gynax has had with absolutely every single person that works there, just being like, yeah, fuck this, I'm out, leaving and forming their own studio, be it Kara or Trigger or Gyna or any of those shit, like, and, and then deciding, yeah, I want my IP back. Can I have that back? I'm going to sue you, all right? <laughs> An event which occurred sometime prior to March 2021 when it was discovered that the latter studio was absent from a list of studio credits given as a, as a part of a special exhibit dedicated to the works of Imaishi. Alongside the reveal of Panty and Stocking's revival, it was also announced that Dark Horse will be reprinting the collected edition of Mangaka Tagro's nine-chapter manga adaptation of the series. Oh, joy. As of writing, no further details than Panty and Stocking. All right, so the only thing I actually enjoyed about uh, Pantheon Stocking was in the last episode when they had the uh, live-action girl in the, like, um, 
that came, came out of the heavens with like the white <laughs> lingerie and that yeah. effect was just so fucking weird mm -hmm. and like surreal to see on camera but it was like totally awesome the way that they handled it that was the one thing i really dug about the series <laughs> anyway any thoughts no i'll be watching it when it comes out just to See how it is. Just I mean, watch it as well. you forgot to mention the whole thing, the whole situation about like, uh, do they want to reprise their voice roles to you know? Uh... Oh please, this is the only role that Monica and Jamie they have like um like waking dreams about you know their wet dreams of getting to voice these characters again. I, yeah. I know. Like, I'm just saying that they had this whole like, uh, yes, all of our contact. Uh, uh, a, a workplace I expect to be professional and uh, blah 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 for contact. And they contact. were, and we all know they're just bullshitting. Like, come on. Wow, I had 17 notifications on Twitter. <laughs> what the fuck? Ronan Jaws already uh, clipped a bunch of the stuff about Vic. <laughs> Good on you, man. All right, I'll check that out later. Um, so, uh, anyway, back to uh, back to this. Let's move on. Okay, so Mushoku Tensei Season 2 is eager to explore the new world once more. Uh, it looks fucking awesome, as you'd expect. Uh, I don't remember why I included this, because we already knew all of those things. So, moving on. Mob Psycho 103 uh, reveals epic new art. So, here's the epic new art. There you go. Now you can Yay. see it. It's exactly what you'd expected. I, wow. uh, if you told me we'd already seen this, I'd believe you. But then again, it has been 18 days since the last podcast. So I don't know. Maybe I've seen it a couple times. Tomo Chan is a girl to receive uh, the anime adaptation in January 2023. Did so you let just me ask you, that, Yeah, I was going to say, uh, is this – something tells me this doesn't scratch your itch, uh, Fudnam. <laughs> okay, so what is it? I own this manga and literally like um, – what is it? Two months ago, I was just like – or a month ago, I'm like – you know, I guess I own the whole thing, so maybe I should put this aside to actually like read it and finish it. And then they announced the anime. I'm like, oh, okay. And Cut then even more, why don't you? And and get no, no, no. Guess what? They have a dubbed trailer, like their reveal trailer is dubbed or whatever for on Crunchyroll, and the main character's voice sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> she, it, it's the red-haired girl. And she sounds like she's trying to be some butch, like, uh, you know, the typical, like, hey I almost guys. Say you know who she kids? reminds me of? Uh, who? The fuck was that noise? <laughs> Did you ever watch Air Master? No. With, with this, a big girl? Is that like <laughs> Stair Master? <laughs> 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 She reminds, oh. me, she reminds me of the main character from Air Master, just a big woman uh, <laughs> who's like, I'm a girl too, you know, you know, kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like it's probably accurate. <laughs> but yeah. um, So tell uh, me, does this it, does this fit your your total fetish of of reverse trap or uh, do the bicycle shorts just kind of ruin it for you? <laughs> it's not a trap. She's not, she's not actually a reverse trap, is she? She's. Just Tom. Let, oh my God! Let me Tom speak. She just she's just she's just a talking guy. More or less, and the whole she's she's very out in the open of saying, "I'm a girl, you idiot." And then she, he's like, "Did she go to oh, the seven point seas point is going to be changed in that." <laughs> <laughs> that 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 was my first thought as well. Even though I literally own so, all of it on seven seas, but Lexi um, Nieto is uh, the voice of Tomo here. She, that is anyway, special name too. <laughs> to, to to finish the way the description of her voice, it, it's like a four kids uh, like boy voice. So she's like, "Oh yeah, what are you doing, man?" Or well, okay, she doesn't say it like that. But I, then you listen to the Japanese Yo, voice. Yo, bro. Like, you listen to the Japanese voice, and you're like, "Of course, of course, it sounds exactly like you'd think, like a, yeah. like a so, female." So, so the uh, so you're telling me you're telling me that they chose a trans actor. To, no, no, not at all. It's a, it sounds like a female actor, but like she's just trying so hard to put on the masculine voice. It's like I like stop, how she's just, punching her tit into him. Just use your normal voice, damn it. No, but I don't putting, swear to God, swear on, to me. She's putting on the female voice, or she's uh, 
Wow. Yeah, this is exactly the face I expected. <laughs> what? This is the voice actor. Actress. This is the voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. Okay. Her face is as punchable as that tit. <laughs> no. What? You heard me here first. But yeah, so I I sent the link in uh in uh wherever it was complaining about it and uh was it? I even got verification from uh Necovolt saying her voice sounds like sounds cringe and I'm like, well there Send we go. Send me the damn thing. <laughs> oh, okay. If, if I gotta hear this bitch. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. Oh wait, is it this one? Official dub trailer. <laughs> oh, so much for that. What the fuck? What? The fuck? What is she? A Saturday morning cartoon? Oh god. You're not sharing it with audio. Just FYI. I know. Oh, I Oh, I actually already listened to this. I don't know why I'm surprised. So I thought that here I'll I'll play it with audio for a brief moment. I'll just have to. Talk I, I feel like the visuals you've shown already is more than the audio is going to do. But okay. So this voice at first, I thought this was it. I was like, oh my god. I prefer that. <laughs> for real, you guys ready for her voice? My name is Tomo Aizawa. Right after high school started, I told... Hold on, I just gotta... I gotta just, like, you know, break up the whole algorithm for a minute. <laughs> the guy I loved how I felt. It was a clear confession of love. I'm sure of it! Anyway. How do you like Ash Ketchum uh, being your love interest? No. <laughs> isn't that Stephanie Nat Natasha or whatever? That's Veronica Taylor. Wait, what? But anyway, um. Oh, I was talking so, about the, the other one. Yeah. Well, yeah. Stephanie, and, 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 yeah. Stephanie Nadolny is the new one. Veronica no, no, Taylor. No, no, Natasha. Stephanie Natasha. It's not Nadolny. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, so anyway, the, the secondary thing about this that bugs me is that the quote, the lore, is that she's she's trying to be as like a female, so she wouldn't be trying to act more masculine. Right, right. She'd sound completely like indistinguishably female, being like, "Hey, well, I, idiot, I'm I a think, female." I think the point is, and again, I, I care so little about this, but <laughs> I feel like the point is that she's um, she's a tomboy, right? So she's you know got a a gruffer exterior, and she wants people to view her as feminine even though she's clearly not but i don't know i just that's what so I the other thing that's hilarious to me is like how is the rest of the dub gonna be if they're uh, constant like the dub cast must be so triggered about they're misgendering her i, I don't know what's wrong time. with you the japanese sounds just like her with like the gruffy kind of more masculine sort of uh it's are not so much it's not so much sure? a masculine voice what it is is it's like a um It's like a sternness or a, a, a assertiveness, I would say. In the, you can be assertive without sounding like, "I want to take your lunch money, buddy." <laughs> I hope that's a plot in the show. Hold up, hold up. share the Japanese one. Uh, refresh us. Oh, real quick. God damn it! You know, sometimes you get away with one, and then I play the other, and then it's like copyright claim. <laughs> Okay, that's enough. That's all I'm gonna do. We're that's done. way better. We I have risked it with so much. <laughs> You're time. done, son. You're done. You're not but that yeah. guy. But yeah, I got the seven seas manga that released way earlier, so that was hopefully before they decide. Okay, let's change oh, all the. Let's make it so he's correctly pronouncing her, even though that goes against <laughs> the script. Propounding her. Oh, what are you doing, on. brother? I mean, sister. <laughs> How long is the manga you say it's done already? Uh, it's it's like a four coma manga, but it's eight volumes. Quit Ooh. using gender terms there, FDM. It's sibling. <laughs> so it gets worse. Kaguya-sama <laughs> uh, 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 so, Love is War. Uh, the narrator for the English dub is, quote, worse than an abridged series. 
So I, I don't want to play Ollie. I'm pretty sure I test uploaded them. Let me double check. <laughs> Well, Pretty while you're sure. doing that, I'll explain the lore of I've been calling out Ian Sinclair for sounding cringe the entire time of Kaguya-sama. And I even compared some of the scenes to the re regular narrator. And I'm like, why is he so enthusiastic? Like, you go, girl, type voice. Just stop. And I, I, I feel like, uh, I know Lance is like, Ian Sinclair is my favorite voice actor or what, or, or something to that extent. And I know that Lance is going to sit here thinking, oh, I love Ian Sinclair being Ian Sinclair or whatever. Right. And it's like, that's great, but this is Kaguya-sama. This is an Ian Sinclair show. <laughs> like, it's the same reason that Brittany Karbowski is like, you know, I think she's great and all and how, like, uh, she says her, her trendy terms. She's funny and all, but that's not the show. That, that's not the translation. <laughs> okay, so uh, I checked my uploads and they did not get copyright claimed but i oh. just noticed i just noticed that <laughs> when you save the videos off of sankaku complex they're titled the kaguya sama kokura uh kokura setai narration dub autism <laughs> 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 so here's here's what that's here's what, what that's uh, what they named their freaking yeah. files <laughs> yes so here's what uh which which by the way the netflix ones were called the resident evil ones were called netflix resident evil series cringeworthy moments uh, so here's uh here's ian sinclair's uh narration it's not like love is war and whoever gives their heart first is somehow conquered hey you get it this is the title and the point of the whole story it's been up to oh my gosh it's happening everybody it's happening our festival committee has it under control so there's no need for that oh come on Guess so. so i just so want to say that having only seen those two clips i have absolutely zero desire to watch this show <laughs> so so like i said if this was like an episode of the funimation show on their youtube channel where it was their own thing cool that's great all right that could I, be I, cool. I want to point out i want to point out but kareem hey, at kareem pie says this dub na narrator is absolute gold his account uh profile is official author of quote the time i was reincarnated as hitler <laughs> three-time new york best-selling author <laughs> new york times best -selling author. kareem pie is a great name i love it <laughs> anyway uh yeah so these uh i, I don't know i it's pretty awful. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. I, I've pretty much explained everything. I, that it's awful. Yeah. Everything is awful. <laughs> Copyright claim for that. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> it's funny how, despite uh, the narration, the show is just that good that you can overcome. Be you can overcome it. At least I could. Can you barely. believe it? We're already limited ads. This is from all the copyright we just showed. I mean, we all, we did show a guy get assassinated twice, actually. We should, <laughs> so maybe I won't request the review. <laughs> we all should right. do it anyway. I'll, I'll flip a client. We should do it whether it was heads or tails. Well, I think I'm just going to wait maybe a month or two. You know, <laughs> Once this Abe shit has died down... <laughs> All right. So uh I hope that 10 minutes oh, is fuck. No, no, I got to share. <laughs> I have to dude. This was the happiest I have been. I I hate fate. I hate it. Like I've only huh? seen Fate 06 and uh and Heaven's Feel Part 2. Uh but I do not care for it. It is more boring. like hate I stay hate night. It. But I love Osaka Behime. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love the Japanglish. And they have decided to keep it in the anime dub. I can barely hear it. I can barely hear it. God damn you. I will turn it up then. All the way. <laughs> I don't think you're sharing with audio. Yes, I am. 
see the little mute screen audio button? That means there's audio. It's just quiet. Just everybody shut the. You know what? Okay, fine. I'll just upload it. Okay, <laughs> I'll upload it to the Shinzo Abe assassination channel. The most appropriate channel, of course. Mm -hmm. Is it this one? Oh no, that's uh, that's that's not it. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, wait. Is it this one? Matt found it. Okay. Now, this is going to mute you. So even if you can't hear it, you're going to shut the fuck up and listen. <laughs> Seven Cube is a blood red ocean now. There just isn't room at the table for you. You should Yamate Kuda stop before you get flamed out of existence. Yeah. That was <laughs> quite a talk. I can't hear it. <laughs> You should Yamate, Yamate Kuda, Kuda stop. <laughs> Gomena, sorry. <laughs> I fucking love it. <laughs> oh. Are you going to buy this? Fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys remember when we covered that article about all of the, the, the Japan English translations in the, uh, in the game? Oh man, I I laughed for like a week after that. My <laughs> wife and I still say that to each other. <laughs> like, oh, Mena, Mena, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Haji Mete, how you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> you better kuda stop it. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. It's the last time I hope I have to change this. Go my nap, sorry. All right. Manga news. Ah, oh, we're only in manga news. Wow. <laughs> I couldn't wipe my own butt. Hunter Hunter manga creator discusses medical issues. <laughs> Quote. I would like to thank everyone for the gift of their warm, loving support while reading my works. I feel the same way as everyone else. Um, instead of saying thank you, go draw new chapters is what many are probably thinking. <laughs> for the last two years, I have been unable to sit in a chair. I had to give up on working in the normal way, but have now somehow figured out how to be able to resume drawing. Everyone, please take care of your lower back. Up until two weeks before writing this message, I couldn't keep the posture necessary to wipe my own butt. And every time I took a poop, I had to wash it off in the shower. It takes me about three to five times longer than an average person to move around and do things. Your lower back is very important. So should you drop something on the ground while attending the exhibition, I strongly recommend to bend at the knees to pick it up. Not Did that. he like use a stand up toilet or something? Like, how is he not in the right friggin' position? What? He, he can't re bend he his can't, back over to reach he down can't and wipe his butt. He I can mean, take if he his can, shit just fine. If he can stand up to shower, can he stand up to like wipe his ass? I don't know. <laughs> you gotta, dude, have, have, if you gotta I, think, I think he means he's got a bidet. <laughs> Anyway, so there's more to it. There's more to it. So uh, Yoshihiro Togashi addressed his health problems in an art exhibition where he said, everyone, I sincerely ask you to take care of your lower back and hips. This is how uh, this is how Anime News Network translated it differently. I sincerely ask you that you take care of your, of your backs and hips. Just two weeks before writing this message, I couldn't get into position to wipe my butt and had to take a shower every time I pooped. It takes three to five times longer for me to do everyday movements. Your hips are important. So if you're at the exhibit and you happen to drop something, I recommend assuming a sumo crouching posture when you pick it up. Clearly he hasn't been hip thrusting Sailor Moon's mangaka enough to <laughs> exercise his muscles. Togashi included an illustration of himself as an anthropomorphic dog lying on his back while drawing and captioned it, currently I can only draw in this position. Which is a fucking terrible position, honestly. Because if you don't have your knees up to be able to hold the stupid thing and you gotta hold it with one hand while oh, drawing, yeah. that sounds fucking terrible. No wonder his Well, maybe he was sucks. just too lazy <laughs> to animate the knees. All right. 
boy, do I wish I uh, wasn't this tired. But let's go. <laughs> Etchy is disappearing from Weekly Shonen Jump. So an entry published on the site Hatalabo Anonymous Diary was shared on a popular comment forum in Japan and became a trend because it claimed that Weekly Shonen Jump magazine is getting rid of all Etchy manga. His relatively short but powerful message wrote, you know, now it's like, quote, no more erotic manga here. The last remaining erotic space until April was Kentaro Yubuki's Ayakashi Triangle manga. And it was left in the hands of uh, Shonen Jump Plus service. And the edgy content has completely disappeared from Weekly Shonen Jump. Not even a new edgy manga has been included as a replacement. If I had to say Masaoki's, Masaoki Shindo's Ruri Dragon could be an alternative, which doesn't have Echi, but it's the same in the sense that it's a pretty girl Moe manga for the guys. And then Otaku on this line for some reason. All right. uh, the fan service elements that used to be common in other works are not seen at all these days. There is no such content anymore. And the closest thing I remember is the Pillar of Love from Kimetsu no Yaiba. It wasn't surprising that teen shonen magazines would include the occasional raunchy scene, especially given the demographic that it is. I would like to say to the old men of the of the directive, update yourself. <laughs> I'd also like to say to the feminists who say you can't put erotic content in teen magazines that it's not uh, that it's not there anymore. It's been updated. <laughs> The post attracted a wide variety of comments highlighting Ichigo 100% to Pretty Face to Two Love Ru to Shokugeki no Soma to Nisekoi to Boku Tachiwa Benkyo Ga Dekinai to... Okay, anyway. <laughs> anyway, this is the jump lineage of Echi Manga has been destroyed, right? Because each time they were replaced with something Echi, right? And now, now they don't have anything. All the Echi has been moved to Jump Plus. The good thing, there you can show your nipples all you want. <laughs> <laughs> Women touch themselves with the BL that comes out in Shonen Manga. It's not fair. The women get to touch themselves. It's not fair. God damn it. <laughs> You're right. Chainsaw Man, which includes edgy scenes, has also been moved to Jump Plus. The main oh, magazine wow. is already a joke. If you take the etchy out of Shonen Jump, the only series you're left with are about hard work, friendship, and getting ahead. And, and getting ahead. I was going to say, I want a series about <laughs> getting ahead, is what he's saying. <laughs> but eroticism is, as essence, is necessary. Eroticism is essential for the healthy development of young people. Eroticism is why Japan's birth rate is to, go, no, uh, the, to guide adolescents towards the right kind of sexuality. Mild etchy in teen magazines is a must. The right kind of sexuality. Kind with the boobies. <laughs> anyway, uh, so there you go. Thoughts? Uh... The world we live in. I mean, I don't think it needs to be in Shonen Jump. As long as it's still getting made, I don't see why it needs to be in Shonen More Jump. More or less. Hey, etchy artist, uh, I'm starting an imprint called OCA Jump. Uh, we'll put it on ah, our website. All your porn. You no, no, for tonight. real, though. Is there any, like, Western equivalent of a Jump magazine where it's just like, yeah, all these comic book uh, yeah, just, people. Yeah, just send submit. me your artwork and I'll, I'll integrate it into our website. So and can and you'll credit yourself <laughs> for all of it. Yeah, I'll take a small fee. Uh, I'll just throw, I'll just run ads. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, so draw, draw your nice titties. Uh, and if you're interested, I've got a story for you. It's called Once Cucked on Another Planet. <laughs> and uh, I really need a good, a good etchy artist for it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about that. <laughs> all right. So in games news, Oh dear Lord, is there news? Uh, when does it stop? No, look. Uh, so, Love Hina creator Ken Akamatsu won his election for Japanese government, right? Akamatsu updated uh, the public Ooh, on the results. Good of his news election, for once. <laughs> where he oh said, my God, coming in loud there. <laughs> All right, geez. I'll just say it louder next time. 
sure just for you, random. Make sure to deep throat that mic next time you yell. <laughs> After 8 p.m., various media outlets began to report that I would be the projected the projected winner of the House of Counselors election. With my election, this is the birth of the first manga artist to be in the government. I believe that Japan will change. I will work hard to realize my promises so that I do not betray the voters who supported me and will not shame them as their representative. So, so how did he make good on his promise? His first order of business was to create a task force to preserve classic games in a playable state. <laughs> as a fellow weeb would. Right. You're the politician we deserve. Also, so, Brett... Brad, yep. you've mispronounced election. You gotta say it like the Erection? Japanese. Erection. Erection. Uh, so Ken Nakamatsu, the first the first manga artist to enter the realm of politics in Japan, has wasted no time since winning his election on July 11th. The newly minted politician has announced via Twitter the creation of a new task force to investigate and support the preservation of classic video games in a playable state. Yesterday at 8 p.m., the Digital Archive Society's Legal System Subcommittee's Digital Rights PT, Akamatsu said. That was just a word sound. That didn't, he didn't say anything there. A select team of experts has been formed to start working on legal preservation. Legal preservation of past games in a playable state. He added... The archiving and utilization of old content that is being lost is an area in which I have a strong passion. I want to make this a success. Ken Akamatsu ran on platform, blah, blah, blah. We done that. Anyway, so yeah, um, I just can't fucking believe that, uh, that he's literally using tax dollars to just make sure that the games that he likes uh, are still playable. Like, you've... <laughs> You've already shown yourself a worthy public servant. Right? <laughs> I mean, what better use for tax dollars is there? Like, they're just going to waste your money anyway. Uh, how about how about uh, ending <laughs> taxes? That's a good news. <laughs> All right, so Bandai Namco confirms rumor of servers being hacked. So, um, yeah, basically, the, I'm not even going to read this. That's basically a thing. Uh, I'll just give you a quick little rundown. Uh, the company uh, ban rumors of Bandai Namco having its, had its servers hacked have been confirmed by the company itself, as they cite a third party acquired unauthorized access. With such incidents being more frequent lately, as developers such as CD Projekt Red, Capcom, Electronic Arts, have been subject to such infiltration. So, a ransomware group ransomed Bandai Namco, and that's the news. Uh, actually, there, I think it it was that story. I'm pretty sure it was that story. Um, the the way they ransomware it was actually pretty funny. Uh, apparently, they uh, sent out some they they set up a fake company for developers to apply to jobs at, and then they did interviews for those jobs, and then they said, "Yeah, you're hired." And then, as part of the hiring process, they sent them uh, a a PDF or something that they opened in the email and that pdf had the exploit in it that caused the the ransomware um so it was pretty uh elaborate um scheme they had going on <laughs> oh boy wow that's uh that's a very elaborate way of going about it anyway i'm sorry i'm just catching up on the chat reading it myself um he casher says, Jesus, I don't even understand how your back can get that effed up, even from sitting at a desk a lot. Honestly, I think it's because when you are a manga artist and you do sit at a, at a desk a lot, um, you weaken your back muscles to the point that you can just getting out of bed fuck it up, you know? Also, he's like almost 60 now. Or he's lying. <laughs> Maybe he just went broke back mountain and broke his back. God, I fucking hope not. He's married to the Sailor Moon creator. <laughs> She's kind of hot, so. Well, that's really? what I was saying by, like, clearly he wasn't <laughs> practicing his thrust Does she enough. look like Sailor Moon? I don't know. I mean, Oda married a Nami cosplayer. 
Did uh, uh fucking yeah, Chad. <laughs> Did, did uh does the uh sailor moon creator actually she, look does she a, have a little bit the like Oda proportions as nami <laughs> sailor moon is blonde, no so i'm gonna say no is that why nami got more appetizing as time went on he had an actual person to look at who had a body that wasn't ridiculous <laughs> I uh, actually uh, I think the hourglass gets more extreme the more time oh that's goes. right that's right that is, isn't that true uh, so Saudi Arabia banned same-sex marriage, but the birth rates are up. Oh, wouldn't you know it? Bidets and titties, they are named after animals. <laughs> what the? Okay. That is, okay. <laughs> Trivia of the night. Artistic freedom of expression, uncensored <laughs> content, and accurate language translating will prevent piracy. Japan should know, look, man, I'm just telling you, if you want to post your uncensored stuff on OCA Jump, I'll make it happen. You know, like <laughs> I can't compensate you right now, but but well, well, maybe I mean, ever, but yeah, free to post. <laughs> but all that smut you want to draw, man, I'll fucking host. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless it's unless it's uh, unless it's lolly stuff that would uh, be seen as. Um, child abuse material in the u.s then maybe i would give a shit actually we we need to like uh clip that like your entire speech so we can use it as an ad <laughs> i'll host your shit i just i don't give a shit <laughs> hard coffees are the best and i don't people. even wipe because i got a bad back <laughs> <laughs> hard copies are the best because you have the right to enjoy keep and or sell the content to any store Hard copies do get you pretty hard. Togashi is lying. Lying in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Has any Japanese company learned what happened to Toei Animation when they were hacked? Uh, that is why Anime Studios, for example, should go back to sell anime. <laughs> when will you <laughs> learn I love the that your you actions think. have consequences? <laughs> <laughs> so Idol Master Million Live Theater Days is making the idols slightly sexier. So uh, oh, yeah, basically, they updated the textures to add a little bit of emphasis, and they're they're uh, they're amazing. Oh, usually it's the other way around. Good to yeah. hear something going that direction. Well, now they they look less like little kids and more like uh, voluptuous ladies. <laughs> It's amazing what a little shading can do. <laughs> this this is the equivalent of uh, of Instagram lighting, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> the Facebook angle, you know. All it is is the texture. Bravo, million live idol master. Anyway, moving on. All right, so Overwatch Two alters the immeasurably offensive design, guys. This was truly the great conflict of our day. Truly outrageous. Truly, Yet truly more outrageous. Of social media. What's up? Yes, it was outrageous. Yet uh -huh. more. Yet more of social media's best and brightest have found something now to get offended by, as a map in Overwatch 2 happened to have benches with partitions on them which are used to discourage the homeless from sleeping on them and complaints oh, no. about this led to the benches being fixed rather than the already highly criticized game. Where are their digital homeless going to sleep at night? Right? Like, like, a, a Twitter user brought attention to this highly offensive matter. Been thinking about this since the beta, so I'm just going to say since no one else has. The anti-homeless architecture of the benches in Midtown makes me super bummed. Benches like this are designed specifically to make the homeless miserable. <laughs> well, guys, I am happy to report. Thank you so much to the Overwatch team for deciding to change this. It's honestly overall a small change, but it goes a long way. You guys rock! They did it. The, the digital homeless can now sleep on these hard ass fake benches in this game. They fucking did it. I am that, so happy. Like, that you I want to see these homeless people sleeping on ones and zeros. Yeah. yeah. Hold up. Hold up. You know what? 
I don't think this is good enough. You know. Yeah, there needs to be cushions and mattresses and no, no, and not not pillows. even Raven Eleven. Uh, you see, Blizzard, they can program in whatever they want. They should put a su- a, a a hotel suite there for the homeless. <laughs> they need to treat homeless the homeless hotel. better. They need this what is what the homeless to, what deserve. What they need to do is they need a level where you eat the rich and the homeless are the top of the food chain. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Don't give me <them> any ideas. <laughs> the the bench barely has any effect. It is stupid to change it. I wonder if the if they even bothered to change the hitbox. <laughs> yeah, the collision. Maybe like, literally they just deleted these two. <laughs> This took them like 10 seconds to update. <laughs> In fact, you can see they didn't even update the texture to have huh. like like the texture is dark on the edges because it's you know th- it's worn where people sit in the partition. So by remo- they didn't even fucking fix it. <laughs> just a fucking joke. It uh, should just look like the screw holes, like they just took it off, like with the screw like they're screwed on. <laughs> That would have been great. <laughs> I've got an even better update here. Overwatch 2 is Diva. What's up? Uh, before we go any far, get any farther away from the topic, here's uh, the uh, Sailor Moon author. Well, her younger self looks uh, closer Passable. to uh, the Sailor Moon. Uh, also, check out these big tits. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> hey, we can't show those on stream. Your screen share is showing. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, over. I'm glad that we. Uh, I'm glad that we broke the continuity of the Overwatch timestamp for that. Thank you. I'm Overwatch sorry. 2's diva <laughs> boasts a buff posterior. Now I don't know if you guys. This is there. their. Well, this is their last ditch effort to bring people to play Overwatch 2. They're like, well, what, what can we do to bring them in? I mean, well, it's Overwatch 2 isn't out yet. Just let you know. I just want to point out, man. I mean, I feel like they inflated it a bit too much. Yeah, <laughs> she's she's got that Ultraman level ass. <laughs> she's got that Kardashian <laughs> ass. Like. The Ultra ass update. Yeah. Like, did she get implants uh, in the story? <laughs> I don't know. I I'll be honest. I actually like her old design a little bit. Uh, I think midway between the two would probably be best. But I like the um. The, uh, like but the AC, you're 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 um, what's what what fucking do they say all the time? You're per, you're per, perpetuating fucking skinny people, man. That's that you can't do that. You know what the best I part mean, about this is? Have you seen these thighs? This is like Chun Li over here. <laughs> no, you know what the that, best part about this about is? The, uh, Un- unrealistic body I'm talking proportions. About the outfit. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What's up, uh, FDM? The best part about this is this is a first person game. <laughs> yeah, so you're only yeah. seeing it on other players. Yeah, who fucking cares? If it was third you person, it. you could at least like have something to look at. Really. All the more reason to hunt the characters playing as thick deep. <laughs> well, that just Ooh. means once you kill them, you can look at their corpse, I guess. I don't know. So. Like I'm just saying, like I mean, I mean when you're teabagging her. I think I mean, she looks worse. Think about like, I love this design better, where they really frame it. Like that's great. This I I'm oh. just not feeling it. It, it does feel a bit more generic, doesn't it? Well, it feels like. Well, uh, let's not let's scroll that far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> All right, another another article that Lance was supposed to be here for. So Bandai gave the legendary Elden Ring player Let Me Solo Her a real sword. So are you guys familiar with Let Me Solo Her? I am after you screened that documentary for us. Vaguely. I'm vaguely familiar. So um, we watched a uh, we watched a, a, a YouTube video that broke it down, and it was actually pretty cool. Um, basically in Elden Ring, it's, it's from the, from software people. So it's like, uh, Dark Souls where it's a brutal. I'm, I'm familiar. 
Yeah, Brad, yeah. you're you are saying you see Nintendo, they make games and all right. Consoles. Anyway, what I'm saying is that it's brutally difficult, and this one particular character whose name is what's her name, Melania? Yes, it's not Melania. character, it's a boss, yeah. but yes. Yeah, this yeah, character who is the boss character, Melania, is so brutally difficult that it's it's almost impossible to defeat her, especially because if she causes you to take damage she regains health mm -hmm. and her moves are like they'll if you're in the best armor they'll knock you down to like a third or a fourth even of your health in yeah, one and then in when one you go, think you've got right? her yeah and so um <laughs> so she basically restores all of her health anytime she lands a hit on you basically and the game is brutally difficult the, the boss is just like times 11 right and so um it is possible to dodge her her attacks, but the window of time for you to forecast what attack she's doing and be able to dodge is like a fraction of a fraction of a second. And so this one guy played the game enough that he got so good at dodging her attacks and being able to defeat her. Because if you dodge her attacks, she doesn't re re regenerate her health, right? Um, that he actually um created this character that has no equipment on so he's like no armor the basically pot, he's, for the he's in a fundoshi yes except for a pot over his head right which arguably isn't doing much uh to to buff his defense and he goes in with two katanas right so he 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 wields these two katanas uh and he solos this this boss character in the game uh and has like I don't think ever since he started the let me solo her persona, I don't know that he's ever lost. Like he doesn't even take a hit. Like he's that good at dodging her moves and stuff. So um, in the game, there's this, there's this thing where you can leave a, um, a message for other players um, to give them hints and stuff or whatever. Um, and so he has a hint or whatever there no, I they, think it was like a, a name for a lobby to try and get people to help him. A summer. No, it, it's, well, or, yeah, there's a, there is something separate in the game where okay. you can drop off hints, like messages to other players who are, who are playing the game, but you can also set it up as a summon. So he set it up as a summon so that when people, um, when people accept it, the summon he is called, let me solo her. So he gets he gets called into the game and he plays the game and defeats the boss for you. And basically his his title is let me solo her. So it's basically stand back. I'll handle this kind of thing. Right. And he's just fucking incredibly good because he's he's going in with no armor. This is like this is like yeah. in Minecraft going against, you know, uh, the wither with literally a wooden stick. Right, and that's it, you know. And keep in no mind health as well, potions, uh, nothing. when you join a multiplayer session, they compensate the enemies yes. to be stronger. Yes. So, so he the is number of people a harder version yeah. of the boss that's already hard as balls to kill. Yeah, so the number of people in the map, like in the in the game, the boss's HP bar gets multiplied by that number. Right. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Anyway, so so this guy is such a fucking badass that um, that Bandai actually got a sword made and sent it to him. Uh, that's that's basically the gist of it, and it's, it's pretty cool. And it says uh, it says rise tarnished on the blade. This guy clearly isn't maidenless. Yeah, this guy fucks, is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, maiden, maidenless, that's the, the meme from the game, because that's what they say. Oh, you're maidenless or whatever, because maiden is like a, a function in the game or something, because uh, you have this maiden character that's like your upgrade character or whatever it is. So it's just like, oh, you're maidenless. So then that became the meme of like, oh, you're not getting some snatch or anything, huh? Yeah. <laughs> This guy clearly fucks. Right, this yeah. guy so clearly anyway. has a maiden. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's cool of Bandai Namco to do this. Anyway, moving on from here. Minecraft Java update introduces player chat reporting, grants Microsoft the ability to ban players from private servers. 
So there's a hashtag going around <laughs> called hashtag save Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> So a recent update to the Java version of Minecraft has sparked outrage after it introduced a player reporting system whose workings grant Microsoft the ability to ban players from both public and private servers. Yes, so it's a chat reporting feature. And if you get reported and, and Microsoft decides to ban you, you literally cannot play on servers anymore with your account. You are stuck playing single player for the rest of, of having that account. So first tested in the game's 22W24A public test. That's uh, week 22. No, year 22, week 24, uh, a snapshot. Public test before being added to Minecraft Java with the recent June 28th release of its 1.19.1 patch. The game's new player chat reporting feature allows players to now submit in-game reports regarding abusive messages. Now, I don't know if you've ever played a game in your life before, but part of the fun is taunting your opponent, <laughs> especially yeah. on a whitelisted server where you're playing with friends. Yeah. You like may that also... was half of the enjoyment of playing Xbox Live back in the days, the 12 year olds showing the N-word at you. <laughs> <laughs> Getting called a double N-word in Mario Party by your friends. <laughs> <laughs> you may also have seen our new parents. <laughs> <laughs> you may also have seen our new profanity filter on realms. These two functions are different, Mo Yang explains on their official Minecraft Help Center. Quote, a chat report is always initiated by a player. No reports are created automatically. Basically saying, hey, uh, if, if you get banned, it was your friends who did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Further, according to the same support article... When you submit a player report, you are required to select the individual chat messages that contain the objectional, uh, objectional, objectionable content, as well as the category of the report, to provide the best context for our moderation team to take action. These report categories include imminent harm, self-harm or suicide. Yeah, you know what, man? If I'm going to fucking commit suicide, I need Minecraft to ban me. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> fucking... <laughs> but Minecraft's your method to commit it, isn't it? Like, in Minecraft, that's what people always say. Yeah, so so the, the categories include imminent harm, self-harm or suicide, child sexual exploitation or abuse, terrorism or violent extremism. Yeah, man, you know what? If I'm gonna if I'm gonna talk about my plans to bomb the World Trade Center or something, God, just ban me. Don't have a chat log with my with my plans going out there. Just ban me. Hate speech. I think they mean like uh, recruiting, probably. But hate speech. Uh, so no more n words. No more <laughs> n word. Can't call your best friend an f word. You're right. Imminent harm. Threat to harm others. Non consensual intimate image. You can send images on Minecraft. Can you send fuck? links? Are they yeah, talking I guess, about I guess it's I guess they mean links because art? no, because you can you use I think you can send uh, URLs. Um, it's been a long time. I, I've not, I haven't had a, any reason to do it in so long. I think I think that is that they are hyperlinked. Like even when you take a screenshot and it says screenshot saved, I think you can actually um, hit like T. To, to like keep the chat up and I think you can mouse over and click on that and it'll open the file in your computer or something like that. So anyway, harassment or bullying, defamation, impersonation, false information, false information. Fuck like, Oh yeah. Like the new crafting recipe for a boat requires a shovel. Oh uh, no, they, they unpatched that. They unpatched like that was the thing. They they put that in the game for like one update and then took it out immediately because it was wait ass. that was real. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. So defamation, impersonation, false information, and encouraging others to partake in illegal drug related activities or encourage underage drinking. Well, what? That's fucking bullshit. What's <laughs> underage in in the U.S. isn't underage in Germany. <laughs> yeah. As per their own description of the lifetime of player report, life uh, sorry, as per their own description of the lifetime of a player report, after a player submits a report, it is sent to a team of Minecraft investigators. 
wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Just, where is my where is my homeless Overwatch hero? We need more representation. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's what I'm talking about. Watch the tits fly and eat nuts. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of language that'll get you banned in Minecraft. EA banned Japanese video gamers for saying run in Japanese. Yeah, Nigeto before. Don't. You just got yourself banned. Also, uh, I like to oh, think that the yeah. Minecraft investigators, like, they go in-game in Minecraft. You see their Oh, like, like the... What was that stupid, like, fake... Uh, feminist gamers thing where they like the bully hunters or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, so, uh, when reports are submitted, our team reviews not only the phrase reported, wait, no, I skipped the part. Uh, there, a moderator reviews the report and the evidence, sorry, reviews the report and the evidence and assigns an appropriate action, if any. And if action is taken, the offending player's account is suspended from online play for some duration of time, or in extreme cases, permanently. When reports are submitted, our team reviews and not only... You know what would be really cool is um, blocking. Oh no, this guy, he's killing me at spawn. Block. And then that guy can't see you. And you can't interact with him, and he can't interact with you. You know that... Um, uh, the game is Java based mm -hmm. and hacks have been made for the game mm -hmm. and the java version of the game is just running on your computer like the the when you host a local uh, a server it's just locally running on your computer oh, yeah for a LAN at least server. It, it used to be is yeah, it they is used, it different now? i used to host a server from my from my house yeah Oh, is um, it different now? It's the, I mean, I don't, I don't do it that way anymore. It's easier to just pay for a server, but I don't yeah, know. okay, but my okay. Either way, you're hosting the server. Look, ultimately, right? you should theoretically be able to get around this by literally just buying another account. Hold, hold on, that's not where I'm going with. But I'm just saying, well, you theoretically could just buy another account. Okay, but so what I'm getting at is. You can just hack in the fact that your friend is talking shit and then oh, report that. Sure. Well, I like, guess nothing stopping you. And and how would you how would Microsoft even know the difference? You're going to report a fucking like what's a sword in uh, some MySQL mm. database? I have no idea. But um like some But some, recently um like, Yang, my point is the Java version of the game isn't like the most secure, top rated, right. like hosted on independent servers from Microsoft. Like, no, this was like a, a independent Jackie ass game that the guy made and mm -hmm. it, it blew up and they've built on top of that Jackie ass game for years Janky? now. Janky, yeah, this whatever. This is the new scene. <laughs> Janky. Ah. Um, yeah. So, um, recently, um, Mo Yang stated, uh, like when you when you open up the game, it says that you have to migrate your Mo Yang account to a Microsoft account, right? And they're like, "But don't worry, you get a free cape," you know. So they're like, they're they're trying to bribe you with a cape to uh, to upgrade or to to migrate, which I fucking did like a dumbass before this came out. Hey, uh, now, dumbass club, right yeah. here. <laughs> did, did you do it too? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, so so that's I think that's how they're trying to do it is that they're migrating everybody to, to Microsoft accounts, which I think have a uh, it's harder to um, they're making it there. I think they're patching the thing you're talking about. They're trying to make it so that you are forced to go through Microsoft. And I bet you I bet you eventually Minecraft will be it'll be a subscription based uh, game. At a certain it'll just point be called it. craft but at that point. Unless, well, one, the, the, the fucking, um, the tier I bought in at said I get free updates forever. So fuck that. Uh, no subscription for me. But the anyway. The tier you bought in? Are there tiers when you bought in? It, well, when I bought in, it was the pre alpha or whatever. 
I'm pretty I sure know. that every but every if you buy the account right now, you get free updates forever. That's how it is. That's how that's how it's designed. But I haven't I haven't looked at it at like forever. But, but it would be interesting to sue uh, Microsoft in a class action lawsuit over that if that ever happened because of the fact that uh, if you if you had um, proof of the uh, terms of service or whatever when you when I bought it, it was pre alpha and uh, it was back when. Uh, when Notch was making it, Notch was still on it, and yeah. he was, and it said like, if you pay for this now, you will get free updates for life. Yeah, um, that's that's what I've got as well. And I and and but honestly, I'll be real with you. Um, have you have you played it pretty like regularly? Not maybe not regularly, but like you've you've played it over time since pre-alpha and seen the uh, incredible amount of changes that have happened, like the yeah. updates. Uh, uh, I stopped before the. Like when they made the Xbox version of the game, mm -hmm. uh, like the Windows Store version of the game, um, i.e. the non-Java game, I stopped playing. That was like yeah, but, much... but what I'm saying is, um, when I bought in, like two weeks later, they added jungles, and then yeah, like, the biomes. Oh, yeah, so uh, past that, the they Nether. Added, they completely revamped everything. Now it's like the game is unrecognizable compared to when i bought in and i don't care i'm still not paying thing. for updates no no i'm just saying it's give a good me thing. free updates well yeah, yeah like obviously. i'm enjoying it I, I think that the game is fan it's a it's a remarkable investment my return on investment is is legendarily good right huh. for for paying once you know um but i'll be honest like it is the game is updated on a scale where if i were asked to pay monthly or yearly for the game it would be worth it like for if i didn't already get the fact that i was getting free updates or whatever after i paid in once um what they have done to the game would legitimately be worth a subscription well because i can they... see them pay i can see them adding a like a subscription for like okay we'll host your your realm or whatever mm -hmm. right um, I could see them doing that, but and that wouldn't. I be... mean, that's just paying for realms. I mean, like, that's yeah, just, that's just a subscription they... to a realm. <laughs> but then they, so you, well, you would be able to create however realm, however many realms you want, or whatever. Yeah, but I'm um, just saying, like, if why would you? You don't even have to pay Microsoft. You could just pay your no, your I know hosting site. Yeah, you the could, same but then you, you have to spend, you know, kind of thing. But then you have to manually set it up yourself, right? Ah, it's not that hard. So, so I know it's not, but that's the only way that they could say, well, we're going to start a subs uh, subscription thing for well, me all, to, all I'm saying, to say, hey, that makes sense. All I'm saying is that so far the game has been a tremendous investment for, like I said, just sure. pay for it once. And the game, it's like every year I'm playing a new game almost like like yeah. the. The amount of stuff that they've added, the new things to do, the the changes to how the game mechanics work that make the adventure sort of like you get to relearn everything in a way that is challenging and fun, you know, that if they made the game, um, you know, a subscription thing, you know, and, and imagine all of a sudden they're getting, because th this is the highest grossing game ever bes behind just uh, Tetris, right? And Tetris has been released a million times, you know? Um, so imagine that they actually got the player base of this game and, and, and you're not paying a lot. Like, what do you pay? Like 20 bucks for the account back in the day. Imagine all you're paying is 20 bucks a year, you know, it but was 10 euro or nine euro. Or yeah, so it's, it's absurdly low, but look, just imagine then that you're paying that per year and they actually have that much more to invest into con constantly updating the game stuff. All right. Now look, I, this would be a fantastic uh, thing if it was Mojang and not Microsoft. I'll just say that. But anyway, um, my gonna, whole point yeah, go ahead. is for the this fucking thing, unless they're hosting the fucking servers and they're hosting your realms, where they're in control of the server code. Mm -hmm. Anyone can hack in anyone saying anything in chat and then report it to Microsoft and say, look at this dipshit. He's saying all this shit yeah. in my server and fuck with people that oh, yeah. way. Because yeah. there's and no way for Microsoft to verify 
unless they're hosting the server code, which they're not. So and, and my, I think uh, it's Mojang stupid. as well. Um, Minecraft has there's a special server that's you know free to join and everything that has a literal library in it and articles that are blocked in like North Korea, for example, are available to read in the books in Minecraft wow. as a way to uh, circumvent. circumvent countries firewall in like China and whatnot. Um, and so that is going to disappear because of Microsoft wanting to cater to these different, you know, places like China and whatnot. They're going to build into the code uh, ways to control the system. Right. So, uh, it's a fucking terrible idea. Everybody agrees. And a lot of people, you know, there's a whole hashtag movement going behind it and everything. But anyway, so when reports are submitted, our team reviews not only the phrase reported, but the surrounding context and the authenticity of the report to determine if our community standards were violated. When someone doesn't follow our community standards, it is possible that their account will get suspended. So what you need is team speak. And just talk to everybody. You throw the N-word around that way. <laughs> you, you mean Discord? Oh, never mind. <laughs> However, concerns have risen over the very system itself. In a thread on Minecraft subreddit, JewelTK posted that Java chat reporting from the perspective of a server host looks like. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. I saw this. I saw this pop up on uh, on on Reddit when I was scrolling one time. Anyway, uh, so what, what they exposed what the job of chat reporting from the perspective of a server host looked like, asserting that it goes against everything community servers stand for. I see it only doing active harm to the game and its community, solving a problem that never existed to begin with. Jewel explains that while private servers in any game allow players to find those who, who play the way they like or make their own, uh, the ability to report to Microsoft undermines the independence of private servers who could previously choose to use third-party options such as MC bans. Forcing this change upon the community removes our control to play how we wish. No problems will be solved by this addition, and only new ones will come of it. Mm. Report abuse and false positives are just a few of many issues. After briefly noting that he and server staff that banned players with chips on their shoulders could abuse the feature to, to have private server owners falsely punished, Jewel added, Oh, I'm sorry. After briefly noting that he and server staff that ban players with chips on their shoulders could abuse the feature to have private server owners falsely punished, Jewel added, quote, if Microsoft wants to enforce the rules and report system on the realms they provide, that's okay. But they should not have a say in how our servers are run. A Microsoft moderator should not be allowed to police my language on what is essentially my property. He further expressed, I mean, imagine, imagine you're throwing the N-word around, but the server is all black people, right? <laughs> imagine getting banned for saying a word that, uh, that you're, you've got the end test, right? Oh, wait, that's like, that's like us getting banned for saying cracker. Honky? Right. <laughs> So uh, he further expressed concern over how Microsoft would handle the context of such reports, as he notes that that though the LGBTQ players on the servers use gay slurs in conversation, it's done with everyone's consent and understanding that such talk is allowed. Right? This is exactly the same thing I just said, except for with LGBT instead of uh, black black players. Anyway, I feel like as LGBTQ individuals, we have some right to say the in what is effectively our own house, he posited. Recognizing that family-friendly servers should have the right to ban those players who use foul language, Jewel emphasized the concept of personal choice, arguing that it should not be Microsoft deciding all servers must now follow their rules whether or not people want them. Ultimately, Jewel warned, do not let this feature pass. Understand where us server hosts and staff are coming from 
when we say we hate this feature. The report system is primed for abuse and is being deployed by Microsoft to control players outside of their platform. Microsoft just wants control. Unless we make our voices heard and let Microsoft and let Microsoft know that we don't that we won't stand for this, it will be the beginning of a dark time for Minecraft and could potentially kill hundreds of servers. He declared, concluding his video by begging those watching to voice their concerns to Microsoft and Mojang. As of writing, Jules Post has received over two over twenty thousand four hundred upvotes, numerous Reddit awards, blah blah blah. Anyway, uh, once the system goes up, everybody should just report every single chat that is sent. There you go. Overwhelm the system and make them see how stupid it is. One of the worst things about this will be dealing with ban appeals. If a per if a player gets banned by Mojang while playing on my server, he will probably make an appeal on my website, but I can't unban him because I didn't ban him in the first place, and I guess my servers will be confused and frustrated and never return to, to my server or Minecraft in general. Anyway, so I think uh, I think generally we all these are all um, arguments we've either addressed or are kind of don't need to be addressed because they're obvious. So basically, uh, this is very disconcerting, and I very much hope that in the future podcast coming up, we're going to talk about how uh, Microsoft um, Minecrafted themselves. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, any thoughts before I? Uh, no, we kind of got it all. Six and a half hours. <laughs> Good God, that green line mic setup. Right on. <laughs> okay. Nintendo fan buys 40000 US dollars in stock to ask about F-Zero. So a, a self-professed diehard Nintendo fan spent 5.6 million yen to purchase stock in the company, to attend a shareholder meeting and get a chance to ask Nintendo's leadership about the future of F-Zero, Bots and Kaitos, and other such games that have not seen a new release in decades. The shareholder, known as Momiji, explained that he bought 100 shares at 56,430 yen per share, over $400 per share, in, in February after selling his stock in another company. Momiji was presented a chance to ask Nintendo president Shintaro Furukawa a question, and he asked if they had considered relaunching older fan favorite games, specifically F-Zero, though Bots and Kaitos was also mentioned. Momiji would later uh, profess great love for F-Zero in an interview. Quote, I have been playing Nintendo games since I was a child. Among them, I can't get enough of that sense of speed of F-Zero. Furukawa gave a non-committal answer and expressed appreciation for such undying love. Quote, It is realistically difficult to develop new titles and remakes, including sequels, for every Nintendo game that people request, but we are very grateful and appreciate the expectations our fans have for our games. Nintendo's managing executive officer, Shinya Takahashi, gave a more optimistic answer. Quote, we are always considering how to develop new titles and remakes that can be enjoyed by many players. I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, news of <laughs> news of uh, a Nintendo enthusiast attending a shareholder meeting and asking about classic games reached the internet thanks to a Twitter account transcribing the questions and answers from the meeting, and Momiji's uh, portion also appeared. F zero. <laughs> Momiji eventually appeared and disclosed how much it cost to ask about F zero. So it was. I spent $43,000 to make this statement. Can you fucking imagine? This is Elon Musk trying to buy Twitter. <laughs> Momiji later tweeted a PDF transcript of the meeting, highlighting his portion, and informed his new followers that he mentioned way more games than F-Zero, but they were omitted. Huh. Thoughts? Can you imagine? <laughs> well, hey. That's, you know, he had something he was determined to do and he did it. Do you think he immediately sold the stock and put it back into the businesses that he had sold it from to generate the cash? Mm, maybe. If and he wasn't you, satisfied with the answer. I mean, you'd still have to pay capital gains on it. Like, that's a fucking, like, you better hope Nintendo, uh, in, like, that, that you get your value just out of Nintendo, I think. 
All right. Anyway, <clears throat> Lollipop Chainsaw remake confirmed for 2023. Now, I'm pretty sure I highlighted these. Not a fucking course not. Uh, great. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. So they've uh, teased that they're going to make a, a Lollipop Chainsaw revival in the works, right? The establishment revealed that it will be a remake, tentatively titled Lollipop Chainsaw Remake. Now, um, they had mentioned that 14 years have passed since they started Lollipop Chainsaw Project. And basically they said that, unfortunately, um, there's a couple songs in the soundtrack that they aren't going to be able to retain the license to. They mentioned that they're going to make a more realistic approach to the graphics as well. So fans are starting to fear censorship and skipping straight ahead to this. Lollipop Chainsaw Remake Devs Address Censorship says they will negotiate with platform holders. Sir, yes, I need to highlight stuff. Good. They said, quote, we have taken notice that there has been speculation that the remake will change the story. We believe that Lollipop Chainsaw Story is a huge part of what fans love about the original game. And we, the development staff, feel the same. As such, the story will not be changed in the remake. Additionally, we do not intend to change the aesthetics of the game. The mention of how the game will have a more realistic look in the previous announcement was meant to refer to how we will be able to use the advanced rendering technology available in current game consoles. We do not wish to change Juliet's design, and the assumption that we want to is baseless. We were the ones who created Juliet's model data after great trial and error 10 years ago and feel attached to her more than anyone else. So real quick, that's what I had this one for. It was the, uh, so that's what she looks like, right? And one of the major things about this game is all the different costumes. So uh, people are concerned that they're going to uh, tone down the outfits, right? Is this the high school DXD outfit? High Holy school of the dead. Shit, I think yeah, it yeah, is. High, high school of the dead. Yeah. yeah. Looks like it. <laughs> that works. So finally, we learned after the announcement of Lollipop Chainsaw Remake that many fans are worried about censorship in the game. We have not yet discussed the issue with the platform holders yet, and thus cannot say anything about the topic. But what well, what we can say is that we intend to negotiate with the platform holders to make it so the game can be as close to the original version as possible. Not going to be on any. So there goes all faith in the <laughs> in the adaptation. Not going to be on Switch, that's for sure. I think Switch is going to be the only one it will be on. Really? It's not going to be on fucking PlayStation. Sony's going to censor the shit out of it. I thought Switch or like Nintendo didn't, nah, didn't Nintendo's, have any. Nintendo's Nintendo's been the only one lately letting this shit fly. Oh really? That's a. Am I wrong? That that is a thing, nope. right? Yep. Yeah. So. Although, if, if there's a question of if it'll run on the Switch, that's a different question. All right. So, uh, yes, that's, that is a question, but. But no, I don't know. Yeah, because it's a remake. If they if they they should mo they're probably going to model it for the Switch, uh, lowest common denominator for the remake. You know, because the Switch could handle the PS3 graphics, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah. So a study finds video games with sexualized content do not cause misogynistic attitudes or body images. <gasps> oh no! Oh no. my Anita God! You're, you're telling me wrong. You're telling me that women aren't threatened by this body. <laughs> <laughs> so according to the results of a recent study, psychologists have found that the evidence is weak that sexualized games influence player attitudes and behavior. Set to have its results published in the October 2022 edition of the journal of the journal computers and human behavior under the title, does sexualization in video games cause harm in players? A meta-analytic examination. The recent study sought to address the oft-touted claims of the perpetually offended, such as disgraced critic Anita Sarkeesian <laughs> and numerous gaming journalists. 
and answers the question of whether video games with sexualized content do or do not relate to mental health and body image problems in players and slash or sexualization and hostility towards women. Damn, you're like fucking 10 years too late on this study <laughs> for it to have done us any good. <clears throat> I'm back. Shady's back. <laughs> well, I, a bug fell from like the lights above my on my ceiling, and it freaked me out. So I disposed right. of it. Good job. Are uh, we still on uh, lollipop chainsaw? No, we're oh. on. We're on a study found that video games with sexualized content do not cause misogynistic attitudes or body image issues. Well, that's we could surprising. say it's, it's like an extension of the lollipop yeah. chainsaw article conducted by Christopher J. Ferguson perhaps best known for his work debunking the similar claims that violent video games inspire violent behavior. James oh, this D. guy's doing work. Yeah, James D. Sauer, <laughs> Aaron oh, Drummond, God, disciples. Julia Neer, and Emily Lowe Calverlabe, great name, the study explored the degree to which sexualization in games was related to both well-being slash body dissatisfaction and sexism slash misogyny among <laughs> players in two separate meta-analyses. What about the rise in feminism? Let's mm -hmm. look at that. In doing so, the team reportedly found that sexualization in games was neither related to well-being slash body dissatisfaction nor sexism slash misogyny. What do you know? Better designed studies and those that showed less evidence for researcher expectancy effects for sexism slash misogyny outcomes tended to find less evidence for effects. Wow, what a statement. <laughs> <laughs> they oh, the people that weren't looking for it didn't find it. Quote, as appears commonly in other realms of media effects, the evidence is weak that sexualized games influence player attitudes and behavior. Psychology-centric news outlet SciPost explains that these conclusions were derived from a meta-analysis of 18 other studies, all measuring the results of exposing subjects of exposing a subject to video games both featuring and lacking sexualized content. 15 of these measured aggression towards women along with sexist attitudes while 10 measured factors involved with depression, body image, or Did anxiety. they interview someone being like, uh, so do you want to like, uh, so when you play this game, tonight? does it make you, <laughs> does it make you want to be mean to this lunch lady? <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I want to beat the, uh, beat the hell of her. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking to side post. Oh, what was this. the game though? Um, Red Dead Redemption though. You, you could Where string you could up, beat up like the suffrages. The, yeah. The suffrages. The suffrages. Yeah. Speaking to Cy Post, Ferguson prefaced, quote, I've been studying the effects of video games on players for two decades now, most of it on violence. I think most people have come to accept that there's no relationship between video game, between violent video games and aggression or violent crime, despite some holdouts, including the American Psychological Association. However, wow, that's a game. <laughs> However, people, Ride that horse. people still ask a lot of questions about sexualization and whether games either make male players more sexist towards women or whether women players experience more body body dissatisfaction and other well-being concerns. What about men, male players getting body dissatisfaction? You know, I, I, saw, a meme, them? I saw a meme today where uh, it had that, you know, like the, uh, the, the Wojak of the girl, right? And it's like it's like a sexy woman. It's like, no, this is so damaging. Women don't look like this. And then it has a picture of like fucking Conan the Barbarian, and it has the Chad meme guy, and he's like, Well, time to hit the gym. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> uh, so as alluded by Ferguson, wait, hold on. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a much smaller research field than the violence field, so we hope to bring some clarity to it. As alluded to by Ferguson, the theory that video games cause real-life violence has been debunked in three studies from 2020, 
one being a self-declared definitive study from Oxford University, along with studies from 2019, 2017, two from 2016, 2015, and 2008. Overall, the moral panic over video games and the sexu and sexualization is pretty much following the paint-by-numbers pattern of the video game uh, violence debate. He continued, lots of, hyper uh, lots of hyperbole and moral outrage, but very little evidence that video games are causing any harm to either male or female players. It's a purely public health issue. This doesn't appear to be much of a concern at all. I'm sorry, as a purely public health issue, this doesn't appear to be much of a concern at all, Ferguson condemned. Quote, that doesn't mean people can't advocate for better representations of, fem of females in games. They just need to be cautious not to make claims of harm that can be easily debunked, thereby calling into question what might otherwise be reasonable advocacy goals. I, I just love the idea that in the near future, the pendulum is going to finally swing the other way and games are just going to get so fucking raunchy. <laughs> They'll all be the last It's going to get uncomfortably too. raunchy. <laughs> so sexual it becomes hostile. <laughs> I need to incorporate that into our clips. <laughs> no, so sexy it becomes hostile. <laughs> Speaking to the players the team analyzed, Ferguson said of their quality, quote, the major caveat is simply that many of the studies just weren't very good. The good news is that the higher quality studies were less likely to find evidence for negative effects than lower quality studies. Right. That's what made them the higher quality studies. <laughs> In some cases, wow, one of those boobs is really uh, droopy. <laughs> <laughs> in some cases, <laughs> scholars probably interjected their personal moral opinions into the studies, if unintentionally, he proposed. Granted, it's still a fairly small research area, but this initial data has been so underwhelming that I'm not sure there's much uh, that there's much to be mined here. Quote, Obviously, we go through these cycles of blaming media for social problems, Ferguson reminded. At least with fictional media, the evidence often reveals that we're probably scapegoating media and fiction rarely we're, we're probably scapegoating media and fiction rarely causes social problems. Again, to be fair, advocating for better representation of females in games can't be a worthy cause even if the games don't cause harmful effects. He concluded uh, uh, he uh, what he covered his ass, right? I support those efforts, just hope advocates don't misrepresent the evidence as a part of their efforts, which, unfortunately, is all too common among advocacy groups. You're basically telling Anita Sarkeesian to abuse your, your findings. Despite these findings and the overall results be, being an already common point of understanding among players, yeah, the truth is already self-evident. Uh, these outcry cycles over sexism in video games have resulted in numerous instances of censorship. For example, in October 2018, a developer working for Japanese studio Light claimed, claimed Sony Interactive Entertainment was demanding them and other Japanese studios to censor sexual content in their games. During a PlayStation event that December, Sony Interactive Japan Asia President Atsushi Morita was asked about how the alleged policy would balance with freedom of expression, to which he explained about the censorship, we tried to meet global standards. That's your mistake. Regarding the balance of the freedom of expression and safety for children, it's a tough problem to deal with, he admitted in follow-up. A Sony spokeswoman confirmed the existence of this policy in 2019, justifying its existence by citing the rise of not just the Me Too movement, but also the increasing popularity of video game streaming on YouTube and Twitch. Well, you know what? We just got to start that stream on Pornhub. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this censorship was even afflicted upon games explicitly designed to be fan service heavy, so much so that it led Senran Kagura producer Kenichi Takai to leave Marvelous later that same year. Damn. Uh, however, <clears throat> it's not just Sony who have taken a stance against sexual content in video games, especially when they feature an anime art style. 
series such as Mortal Kombat and Tomb Raider notably desexualized their characters in recent entries, while Capcom censored R. Mika's butt slapping taunt in Street Fighter V. Did they really? How dare you? <laughs> Didn't wow. we cover that? Not no. No, I don't think we did. The butt slapping of R. Mika? I don't think so. We covered Hey, come on, come on! That is not Street Fighter Five, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we did cover that. So uh, Evo Japan 2019 saw organizers cut the live stream of a demonstration of Dead or Alive 6 when director Yohei Shimbori demonstrated the game's photo mode in a lewd manner, while two real-life really? models demonstrating the game's jiggle physics in real life. <laughs> 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 Fucking Chad dude for that one. Comment commentator started. How did I not hear about that? <laughs> well, I think we know what game we'll have to play on stream sometime. <laughs> Commentators <laughs> stated upon returning that the footage quote does not reflect the content or intention of Evo. And that's why you fail. Tifa Lockhart notably had a sports bra under her iconic tank top in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Director Tetsuya Nomura later confessed that Tifa's bus size was limited due to a mandate from Square Enix Ethics Department. I mean, do you really want her free balling those titties underneath there with the pokies sticking out? That'd be so goddamn distracting and, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, immersion breaking. <laughs> The list of what kind of version you want. <laughs> the list of redesigns. I mean, if if uh, every time she comes on screen to talk to Cloud, porno music starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, it's the sax solo from Careless Whisper. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy sax man. <laughs> Have you seen that that YouTube video? <laughs> Sexy sax man Sergio Flores. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. They're like, -doo 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 -doo. yeah. The, the, this guy made a persona called Sergio Flores, and he literally just plays the George Michael song "Careless Whisper" on saxophone, and he like goes into public places and just goes, right? He's like shirtless, and he's got like a fake mullet and a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> like, you haven't seen that? I gotta send that to you. So the list of redesigns and censorship of <laughs> this could be the weirdest doc when it's like, oh yeah, study finds video games with sexual content subtopic sexy sex. <laughs> the list of redesigns and censorship of sexual content in video games over the last five years or so, not including allegations of Western studios intentionally designing female characters to be unattractive or localized or censoring scenes of that of that could even potentially offend women. Uh, I think censoring scenes that could even potentially offend women or so is almost endless. Most recently, the VR release of Resident Evil 4 received numerous cuts to its script in order to, as explained by Facebook spokesperson, update the game for modern audiences. However, an insider who leaked those edits ahead of the game's release claimed it was done out of fear of the contents that the content inclusion would result in social media backlash. In fact, it may be this fear of being branded sexist by the outrage mob that has led these companies, all of whom have cited a 2015 study that said video games don't make people sexist or simply ignored the offend the offended demands. Hold on. Okay. She said, in fact, it may be this fear of being branded sexist by the outrage mob that has led these companies, all of whom could have cited a 2015 study that said video games don't make people sexist, or simply ignored the offended's demands to instead choose to kowtow to the first, to instead choose, the, they, they structured that sentence poorly, at the first signs of trouble. <clears throat> However, there are those pushing back. Platinum Games has kept Bayonetta shamelessly sexy as intended by her female designer, Mari Shimazaki. By ignoring accusations of sexism and sticking to the intended vision of the series director, Hideki Kamiya, the studio was able to produce two quality titles that, that, uh, that have been well-received by both fans and critics. Top Hat Studios also caught flack for... Okay, so I, one of the things that they did with the new Bayonetta is that they have a streamer mode so that all the sexy stuff is toned down so that it's um, compliant for streaming things. So that mm. if you're playing on Twitch, 
you know, or if you're playing in the living room and, you know, little brother's coming by, right? We, we talked about this before, about, like, I proposed Dynamic. the concept, uh, right? Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk uh, 2077 does it, too. Yeah. Does that, too. Yeah. So Top Hat Studios also caught flack for Sense a Cyberpunk Ghost Story, a game set in the future where body modification and as such hypersexualized appearances have become the norm. I mean, there you are. Uh, however, in response, the developer stated they would, quote, categorically and absolutely refuse to censor the game, even going so far as to share a number of abusive messages and gaslighting attempts leveled against them by industry-adjacent people. Good on them. Right. Amid rumors of Tales of a, that Tales of Arise would be censored on PlayStation, Bandai Namco was compelled to state the game wouldn't be censored on any platform. Wow, that... That whole second half of this article was just a, a recap of everything we've covered in the last, like, three years. Uh, anyway, uh, so water is wet, I think, is a, a good a good uh, explanation. We all knew this. Yep. Glad we read the whole thing. Damn it, Random Levin. I wish I hadn't seen your most recent private chat, because now my joke is going to land poorly. <laughs> all right. In release news, um, yeah, we're still we're only not in here yet. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna tap out after writing stuff. Just saying. Well, there's not actually a lot in random merch, and uh, I think you want to be here for the missed news, so uh, stick it out. <laughs> All right, so uh, Luigi the Metal sixty four at seven twenty p.m. my time <laughs> said. Seven C said they will correct the "I think I turned my childhood friend into a girl" translation. We know they are only sorry for getting caught. I am worried about Yo uh, Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko. Why does that have what? a lot of pronoun usage mismatching? So here is Seven C's um, official statement on "I think I turned my childhood friend into a girl." Volume one. In response to fan concerns, Seven C's has thoroughly reviewed our English language translation of I Think I Turned My Childhood Friend Into a Girl, Volume 1. The subject matter in this book is delicate, and we took every effort to keep the language respectful and inclusive. However, after discussing the matter with the rights holders, we realized that <laughs> our edition differs in certain details from the author's intent. What? BTFO'd Katrina Leonidakis. <laughs> This is this is the one I'm where they said uh, people were contacting the author on Twitter and the, the author was like contact the publisher yeah. please yes <laughs> all your concerns go to the publisher so with that in mind we will be revising the English script of this series to address various concerns and to more accurately reflect the original intent of the creator. This revised translation will be available in reprints of Volume 1, and the translation for future volumes will be handled by a collaborative transla translation team oh, to shit. ensure a faithful and accurate translation of the original work. We're sorry for any confusion or stress caused by our first printing of Volume 1, and we thank you for your passion as we bring this complex and wonderful manga series to English speaking audiences. Okay. I am going to invite everybody here to like this tweet. <laughs> that's a, uh, that's a, you know, because we agreed to a union, we can't fire this person, mm -hmm. but we're firing this person. <laughs> we're going to get is... someone else to do it for them. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it's great to know that they are going to have collaborative translation now instead of, I don't know non-collaborative to not verify things I, oh, I guess that's what they could mean collaborative with the um i think they the mean japanese, with the japanese uh, yeah, yeah 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 okay well, the, I, the way you first read it I, I thought they were meaning like we're gonna have multiple translators working on this thing i don't we're know why they don't the do that script. always <laughs> i don't know why they don't do that always as much as i want to say something like uh, oh i'm so glad it's like I mean, at the end of the day, I probably I don't care about this manga. So, it's, but, right. but it is good for the people who are a fan of it, you know. So why am I not surprised? <laughs> Dimitri <laughs> Monroe is at the top of the uh, <laughs> the replies. 
Good on you. you. Get a hold of one of those rare first editions. Yeah. I I, I don't want to though. I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, we'll to have the. For me. I'll, to, I'll take it. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll let the super fans have those ones. Yeah. All right. So moving on from here, Dempa licenses Pan Panya's Fish Society manga. Ooh, Fish Society. Ooh. All right. Moving on. Nozomi Entertainment announces licensing of several Macross anime series. I certainly highlighted this right. Fuck me, I didn't. Okay. So just this part. <clears throat> ah, Macross Seven. And also Macross Frontier. And, and also, also Macross, Macross Delta. Delta. And also The only on. one that seems to matter because it's got the girls in the picture. <laughs> well, Macross 7 is the one that has the uh, the guy who plays electric guitar in, in his mech. <laughs> right? Well, so Anime Limited, like a good, good thing. Anime Limited announces upcoming release of Macross Plus on Blu-ray in North America, UK, and Europe. So I think I can't remember. Did we did we talk about Anime Limited doing another show for the North America release? Uh yeah, it was a uh, bartender, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. There Watch is. Club. Thank when. you. God damn. <laughs> Forgot about that. Um. So there you go, guys. We finally have some new Macross that has never been outside Japan coming over well, and on Blu-ray. Okay, but Macross Plus has already come over. Bitch, I was referring to the other stuff. I know. <laughs> that was a whole clip ago. Yeah, all right. So anyway, <laughs> Anime Ego is also going to be bringing out Macross 2 on uh, Blu-ray. Wait, really? Yeah. So previously it was released by... Um, U.S. manga corps. Isn't this the one that's like a manga essentially a movie that's kind of a recap? Yeah, uh, it's kind of shit. It's kind of shit, unfortunately. Wait, wait, so, no. Macross Two was a TV series, but we got like a compilation version that got dubbed. I think. So Robert uh, Robert J. Woodhead tweeted out on July first. <laughs> We'll probably announce our next Kickstarter on Monday. Checking the film transfer now. It isn't Macross Two. Couple extra T's that need to be dotted and I's that need to be crossed. Announcement later this week on July fifth. Uh, still waiting on that announcement. <laughs> so far as I've seen, so I can't wait. Uh, and in right stuff news, ooh, we got okay. oh. I'm still anticipating the you know the OG Macross with a five point one track with uh, the one with the dub with Vic Mignogna mm -hmm. and all that. I I just want that. As soon as we get that, I'll I'll be happy. But I'm already, I guess, happy that we're getting this much progress. This is gonna take. Forever. All right. So before you go, um, this, this is it, right? That's it. No, it's not. It's not. Keep uh, going. We covered this, right? Shogun That's, Samurai. Trust me. Keep going. They're, they're okay, but I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. So do I need to open these as well? We did cover these, right? So no. I can skip these? You can skip these. But okay. there's two in particular. Go to page two. Did we cover Tales of Fantasia on Blu-ray? I don't think we did. That's or, a discotheque one, isn't it? Yeah, or Beelzebub. Yeah. Did we cover these? Yeah. I thought we did. I don't think we did. Okay. I'll pull these up. Then open up those other Simpo two. Simpo gear. <laughs> Simpo <laughs> gear. <laughs> okay. So, uh... Common Rider! I, no, I don't think we did cover... Common Rider, Common Rider. Cool World, even though that's not an anime. Mast Rider. Mast Rider. Seito Kayaku in Domo Movie 2. I think we covered Girls in Panzer Volume 3, Ghost, Ghost uh, Gunbuster, which remember it was the one that was like also okay. coming out the same Click time. Click on that Fake Grand Carnival one. That one's brand new. Hell yeah. Osaka Behime. Yeah. <laughs> and then... One. On, the, on page three. Thank God you're here. Is no, one, thank God he's here. Right there, the first one, Ranking of Kings. Ranking that of one, Kings. for some reason, is all the way back on page three. Wow. Incredible. All right, so in that There case, might be something on page seven. No! <laughs> <laughs> we missed that one. All right. Battle of the Super Sons on Blu-ray and 4, 4K for some reason. 
Wow, everything's I, don't better you, in 4K. Don't you love it how every DC thing is like they got these painterly effects, like oh, they're yeah, so and it fucking still epic, like ash. and then they just look like fucking cartoons when you actually watch them. Um, Pokemon: The Movie Secrets of the Jungle on DVD and Blu-ray. This is Burn, that's Coco, right? Yes. Yeah. Burn the Witch, also known as Butch. Bitch. <laughs> uh, so that's the limited edition blu-ray this is the regular blu-ray the limited edition cover looks like ass oh yeah it kind of does yeah it looks really yeah. bad where the fuck is you to kaizen viz media yeah it's gonna be solicited for like freaking march scarlet or- nexus don't even care Love Live School Idol Project Superstar. Oh, great. There's fucking more Love Live for us to cover. We haven't even started our watch club. Thank God we haven't started. Oh, yeah, the Vampire it. Dies in No Time Season 1 Blu-ray. I want this so bad. It was a fun show. It looks so good. I, I haven't seen it. it. I need to watch it. It's, it's got a banger opening. Well, that's the only good part of it, apparently. Well, this is as we nation. know, if an opening is good, the anime is good. <laughs> right, Random 11? Definitely. <laughs> I thought I, we, Random 11 was I said that one. That's what I just that's, said. That's what he said. I thought you said Green Line. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, Watch the bot. I'm, I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> so Higurashi, When They Cry, So Too Season 2, Blu-ray. As I learned today... Uh, I didn't realize that Go had a part one and a part two, and then this is a separate uh, sequel to that. I thought this was part two of Go. I'm an idiot, but I'm glad that, you know, now there's like 36 or whatever episodes instead of just 24. You're welcome. <laughs> that time I got reincarnated as a slime... Fuck, I gotta get this shit. Season two, yeah. part two. That uh, thing that I, I I totally called when I think someone said like was worried about like, oh, they're not they might not give us a part two. I'm was disappointed. I'm disappointed in these uh um in um, in this fine. the the way this is gonna look next to the other one is like if they keep going with this, it's gonna look pretty bland. Huh. Oh, that's what I mean. Uh, that's that's fair. I mean, I guess maybe the next yeah, one will be freaking like a laptop sticker. Wow, I'm so happy. Maybe the, the do they give you a slime flashlight? Remove, remove flashlight. Here's the uh, season two part two uh, standard. standard. What, what, Free. What would you rather have? Oh, the, wait! All the standards that are bland as shit, or the the limited editions that are bland as shit. Footnote: uh, uh, I I don't know. It depends. <laughs> Footnote: uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. Haven't every one of the free releases so far had a stupid like thin LE? No. They've all been regular sized. Also, I decided to change. No, but my they have LEs, right? The, uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, they do have LEs. And, so, and the, the third... Like, hold hold like on. The... Zoom in on that cover. The top. Why? The teeth? That guy's neck. What Wait. the fuck? Which Wait, one? neck? Did you look at a neck? Did you say neck? No, look at, the, look at the other guy. This guy? No, the sorry. Uh, the guy on the guy? right. The, the guy. center guy on the right. Okay. Now his neck goes down. The uh-huh. center guy on the right, not him. So Other one. The, to the left. That, that guy. One. Yeah. Look at his neck. His neck goes down. Now follow uh-huh. his neck down to the other guy's shoulder. Hang on. Yeah, There's... there you go. Down, yeah. down there. That looks like it's all one big neck. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's a double ended neck. Yeah, they're Siamese twins. Haven't you seen the show? <laughs> but anyway, uh, st- season one and two and th- three. Is there a fourth one? God damn it. Um, they all have LEs. And the uh, movie collection, all three of the volumes or whatever, are in one LE that's slightly bigger. Thank God Harmony Gold never had the chance to have Temple the Balloon Girl to run. 
I've no I've idea what the never fuck heard that of that. Is. That's something that they allegedly. I don't know if it was like they almost had the rights or they did so, and did nothing. Um, as we say in the anime community, uh, what was damn? I already screwed up. We At don't least say, your anime isn't. <laughs> we don't say I love you in the anime community. We say may your favorite anime never be licensed by Harmony Gold, and that's beautiful. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of dumb. It's like they've licensed a total of like what three things in their lifetime. I know. And nothing about, you know, <laughs> Zombie Land Saga Revenge! Joining the club of season two, not getting an LE. So Wait, here's a question. Oh. Um, did Funimation, uh, quote unquote, fix the pronouns? <laughs> Were they broken? Oh, they? No, because um, <laughs> when uh, this character is a guy, Right. Uh huh. So anyway, I was, I was gonna say, like, would they be so woke as to give the incorrect pronouns when all the characters referred to this character, not yet knowing that it was a guy? Anyway, moving on. I don't care. I'm too tired. Ah, oh, fruits basket. Moving on. <laughs> Kingdom season Whoa. three part. I. That's the final thing for my rock collection. <laughs> <laughs> his pet rocks I can How? finally complete those goddamn rock bastards why did you want them to begin with you are a I, I didn't I, I didn't realize how ass this would be but I got roped in I can't get out he, he got that friggin art box and you had to get the rest of the rock kingdom season 3 part 2 Hell this yeah. show looks like it probably has a lot of CG in it. No, no. The first two seasons were all CG, but this one looks like it has 2D in it, is what I'm saying. It's like the reverse. We went down a berserk. whole dimension and somehow improved it. <laughs> it's the reverse berserk treatment. The reverse berserk treatment. If if Kingdom can do it, you can do it, berserk. Yeah. I believe in you. Oh, apparently this is... Holy oh, the... shit, that says digital. That can't be right. What? Go back. The banner. Blu-ray plus DVD plus digital. The, yeah, they don't have digital anymore because it's Crunchyroll. Mm. Oh. Crunchyroll's the one releasing it. Mm. Oh. Mm. You can't get a Crunchyroll fit, uh, digital copy. But all the other ones, they they stopped doing the digital one in like freaking May. Are you sure? That wasn't Are released in May, dumb shit. That was last year. What's, what's the date? Yeah, but do you think that they're just going to keep it up for that the ones they had already started it with? Doesn't matter. Freaking uh, slime. Look at the slime one. Good. There's been a 32% price drop. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, I'm not, I don't care enough. <laughs> Beelzebub. Yeah, th th I could have sworn we covered this. Good. Moving extent. on. Tales of Fantasia on I was about to I think about did, it. I think we did cover it. Okay. Yeah, we Oh, no, we didn't cover this. We didn't cover this. This is the one that has the uh, Believe in Justice Hold the I Determination to Fist. You. Is that, is that the, the thing? I can't read it. It's like, can I open the, in a new tab and see it? At, God, that's small. The, sub, the subheader is Believe in Justice and hold the determination to fist. That's the name. Of, that's the subtitle for it. To fist. <laughs> yeah, hold the determination to fist. <laughs> well, now I gotta get it. <laughs> All right, Urusa Yatsura, uh, the final chapter, Blu-ray, which is actually the second final chapter. <laughs> yeah. By the way, um, an ultimate final chapter. By the way, I didn't. I didn't include this article, but. Um, the new Urusa Yatsura is going to be a two core, I think, is what they said. I think they confirmed like 48 episodes or something. Something like that, yeah. Uh, Common Rider Kuga! He's a cougar. Mass <laughs> right. Rider. Also, Kim Basinger, Gabriel Byrne, and Brad Pitt in Cool World. Wow, Randomly. look how cool Randomly that is. Sold on ride stuff. <laughs> yeah, shout select. Select my ass. All right. Seiko <laughs> Kayaku in Domo, the movie two. And then Fate, twenty four ninety eight. Is this the one with? Are, are they gonna? Yeah. Uh, Yamate Kuda stop selling these at a high price, 
Well, it's only like 40 minutes or something, or like 24 but this, minutes. This is the one with Osaka Behime, right? I'm pretty sure. Add to cart. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> it's it's like why does it long. why does it not look like it's the proper dimensions? <laughs> We'll find out when you get. How, it. how are they going to have a whole Grail War in forty minutes? What the fuck is going on with the saturation on this? No idea. More saturation equals better. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm curious to know if it's going to be like the the uh, cells are working. Why are there or, two uh, Arthur's? Have it where it's like the the. No, one of them's the um, the pen dragon. Is like. We'll There's like many more Arthurs in the Fate verse. <laughs> Can we let Greenline get his thought out? Because he's trying to say something. I was wondering if it was gonna look at the if the box set was gonna look like shit like Cells at Work. Cells at Work has got that paper thin, plastic thin fucking box that the, you, you're supposed to keep the MRI case in. It's like a hot garbage, like thin yeah, ass. Yes, yeah, so it is probably gonna be that. Yes. Oh, that's sad. I, I apologize. <laughs> I mean, but, twenty-four yes. bucks. You can't really complain. I yeah. mean, you yeah, can, but yeah, no, that's fair. One episode long. Two, if it's forty. Okay, but this is Anaplex. 60. We're gonna take what we can get 60. here, dude. It says sixty, so that's like okay. a look at look at value. fucking Fate Grand Order the movie, sixty-nine ninety-eight. God, how does it feel to get raped every single release? <laughs> well, ask Lance who bought that. <laughs> and yeah, then Ranking of Kings, Season 1, Part 1. I'm excited to rewatch this, not going to lie. All right. Well, when does it come it out? Release? We'll do it for a watch club. <laughs> All right. I, I just want, since since October? you zoomed past Beelzebub, what is it? Um uh just a reminder that that's the one that uh Sveikos was all talking about like uh we were kind of tossing back and forth between if we're gonna do an upscale or uh just the sd uh so they chose sd sadly but the elzebub is so good that i recommend you buy it <laughs> okay so <laughs> random 11 do you have something to say here <laughs> oh my Christ. i had to see it so you all have to see it <laughs> So this uh, is what you were looking at when when you were looking at his neck. Is this my new yes. neck profile? <laughs> <laughs> I take your silence as yes. I, I'm just I'm thinking. <laughs> Comparing the two. Yeah, I don't know, man. This one's not this one's not really real though. This is a fake neck. <laughs> Yours looks better. Yeah. Mine isn't a neck implant. <laughs> This is not a real neck. You're... <laughs> <laughs> you're... Yours is the neck with two C's. <laughs> All right. Okay. This neck goes further beyond. <laughs> I can't believe we're finally here. If you would like to support this podcast, fucking buy something on Stealth Week. <laughs> <laughs> Also, um, I had somebody buy this shirt and complain that the colors didn't match because apparently what has happened is the fulfillment center that I use has actually upgraded their printing technology. So now it's printing glossy instead of like a direct to garment print, which is what it was previously printing. So I'm going to need to um, update the colors on a lot of these uh, because they like this one comes out purple now instead of this like almost violet. So that's uh, in the works, but it's the point is that the print quality has actually improved in terms of how the shirts are print printed. So um, that's cool. Moving on. There's also these. Shield Hero Child Form Raftalia figure indescribably cute. But she's 12. I mean, so she's cute. So it said cute, Random 11, not fuckable. Oh, my. <laughs> every, every time I've seen this, I my brain pictured this was a piano that she was somehow sitting in. But it's just a weirdly shaped mirror. <laughs> Anyway, she's got the slave seal. Anyway, near Automata A2 figure, scantily clad and ready to fight. 
Ready but she's 12. Yeah, she's ready to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and you were going to leave it right, Steph. <laughs> anyway. Commercial <laughs> replica of Full Metal Alchemist Alphonse helmet weighs 11 kilograms. But he's 12. $1,200. <laughs> Man, it's actually and... multi purpose because you can use that horn for some stuff. Oh, yeah. It's, a, it's just an elaborate butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> I can buy it on eBay. They have the 3D model. Why don't you just print it? It wouldn't be made out of steel. You can it's use a steel printer. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Fabric or hair? <laughs> uh, that's just semen. And and like the the first <laughs> the first fifty have Al's blood seal on the box. They've made more than one. Welcome back. You missed all the articles I included specifically for you. <laughs> wow. I'm, I love that my ISP fucked me just yeah. so I could miss them. I totally you know planned else? it. You, you know what else can suck you? Fucking <laughs> 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 <Jesus, laughs> how, how would you like to sit on this Alphonse helmet? <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. That's all more right. Reese's thing than mine. <sighs> I'm trying God, to get my damn Bluetooth to connect, but for some reason I can't get it to hook up. I hate my life right now. So Facebook is labeling 2D Lolita content child sex abuse material. The utterly despicable Facebook has followed in the footsteps of Google when it comes to dealing with Lolita artwork as the social media platform now labels the fictional content as child sex abuse material. And likely to not be much of a problem, as Facebook has already avoided me, uh, is already avoided by many due to its censorship and political bias. So I guess, yeah, if you search Lolly into Facebook, the service issues a warning to the user saying it believes the user search is quote associated with child sexual abuse. Child sexual abuse is illegal. Hello, 911. Where can I get drugs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the get help and support button provides the user a pop-up window that suggests the individual seek aid. If you're concerned about your own sexual thoughts about your children, <laughs> no, about children and young people, oh. or, by, or by someone else's behavior, such as a friend or family member, there are organizations that can provide support for people who need help coping with these feelings and urges. Remember, it can be criminal to produce, possess, or share photos and videos of children. Look, I just want to say, the only time I have ever seen what you would consider actual child pornography was fucking on Facebook that day they got hacked and some Indian kid who must have been like 11 is running around with a fucking boner about the banks of it. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so Facebook, that's on you. <laughs> I, I want to form a class action lawsuit that I had to see that because you let that slip past your radar. Because of that hack that one day. Anyway. That was uh, uh that was too much for me. So remember, it can be used child abuse way. Is also against Facebook's terms of service and community standards. That's the more important thing here. Right? It's not about the fact that it's illegal. <laughs> you can also learn how to report images of child exploitation on Facebook. If you're going through a difficult time, contact a helpline. If you or a friend needs support, you can visit our emotional health hub or find a helpline. Many will find this decision absurd considering platforms such as Facebook are known to be cesspools of actual grotesque child pornography. Wow. Yes, I'm afraid to click on that link. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah, this is news. Uh, I don't much care. But uh, I, I, do, I do dislike the idea that we have mistakenly given 2D drawings human rights again. I think that is a mistake. But. Moving on. Q D drawings have more rights than conceived fetuses. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
2D drawings have as many rights as guns or whatever, whatever this, that ridiculous statement people make is. Anyway, so a Gifu man was arrested for entering another person's home and hanging women's underwear to dry. How long is this article? That's fuck? great. Okay, I like, I like that this is short. It seems to be the opposite of underwear theft, and yet it's still very creepy. There are crimes of passion, crimes of desperation, crimes of opportunity, and then sometimes there are crimes that just seem to defy all emotion and logic. Once that a whole paragraph to the tune of the Arthur theme song. <laughs> I don't know the Arthur theme song. Come on, random Listen 11. to the beat. Listen to the heart. Uh, I can't do it, but anyway. <laughs> All right, I'll take your word. What for is God I, theme? I, I the, vaguely the, remember this. The pentamic parameter, whatever that is, it was following okay. the beat of it. Iambic pentameter. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I said that. Can... That was what I okay. said. Yeah, we can hear you. You sound okay. like that. What's the guy theme? Yeah. One such. Yeah, that goes with everything. One such crime occurred in the relatively quiet prefecture of Gifu in the form of unlawful drying <laughs> of underwear. On the 12th of May, a 61-year-old office worker was returning home from work at around 5 p.m., but received a shock upon looking at his laundry rack. There, next to his own undergarments, hung an undisclosed amount of women's underwear <laughs> that he had never seen before. <laughs> I swear, officer, it wasn't there <laughs> <Not> before. <mine. laughs> <laughs> like, is it, that's like your girlfriend comes home, who the fuck's underwear is this? <laughs> I've never seen it before. Oh, <laughs> God. The man called police. <laughs> 911. 911. What's your emergency? Yeah. I have yeah. unknown underwear on my clothesline. I'd like to report a bra I've never seen before. <laughs> What's the size? 38 D? <laughs> hey. The man called police. An investigation was launched into the mystery underwear. By checking surveillance camera footage from the surrounding area, the Gifu Prefectural Police were able to learn that at about 8.20 that same morning, a man had entered the property and hung the underwear. So you think this guy like wore the underwear in and then took it off and hung it out to dry and then walked out? <laughs> the more difficult task was then tracking the suspect afterward and identifying him. But the police eventually managed to do that too. And on the 5th of June, arrested a 66 year old man living in. It's, what the fuck is up with these weirdos? <laughs> the police. In, yo, I was just town. trying to give that person all my collection of women's underwear that I stole 40 years ago. <laughs> Goodness He's been wearing gracious. one pair That's... every day for the last 40 years. <laughs> As of this writing, there has been no announcement on whether the suspect admits or denies drying the underwear, but he is said to be cooperating. Did he wet it? <laughs> the authorities, <laughs> the authorities are also trying to determine what, if any, relationship exists between the suspect and victim, as well as a possible motive. They're certainly not alone either because netizens are at a complete loss to understand <laughs> why someone would do such a thing. <laughs> ah, yes. Just as I thought. I don't understand this at all. <laughs> I wonder if this is a level of perversion beyond my comprehension. I, I, have, a, I have an idea. <laughs> yeah. he, he hung it out to mark the property if the... Uh... If the, the clothes rack is visible from the street, like mm -hmm. pick this house, Jose. We're gonna we're gonna right. rob it tonight. Maybe he was he was quality assuring uh, testing. Like I, I broke in already. Line. This is the one we can get into. No, no, no. He was making sure that the clotheslines could support the amount of weight that they were rated <laughs> for. <laughs> I it's a new breed of criminal. Was the underwear his or did he steal it from somewhere? Maybe it was a setup. Like he was trying to frame the guy for stealing underwear. Maybe it was just a little present. I wouldn't even bother reporting that to, I mean, maybe the guy just had dementia and walked into the wrong house from the laundromat. 
I wonder if the victim was married and the other guy wanted to break them up. Even as a joke, I can't understand it. Indeed, there are still too many unknown variables to draw any conclusions from. Whose underwear is it? Is the victim married? Did they even live in the same town? Hopefully the police can get to the bottom of this so the fine people of Gifu can sleep off a big plate of fried chicken. Okay. Without fear. <laughs> that someone will hang to what the fuck? <laughs> that was such a reach. Oh my god, I'm not even gonna click on it. <laughs> All right. A Tokyo man has been arrested for putting his brother's skull out for recycling collection. What? The suspect claims he thought it was a fake. On the 21st of June, workers at a recycling plant in Adachi in Tokyo were given a shock when mixed in among the refuse that had arrived, they found a human skull and job on. I'm always amazed when you hear stories about stuff like this, where they're actually able to trace it back to the house they got it from. You know, like mm -hmm. once it goes in the truck, it should just be game over. You know? Yeah, especially here. Well, especially like, I don't know if their trucks do this, but our truck. Well, they probably check oh, this. Okay, I got freaking, it, I got it. They probably check this dental records. Yes, thank you for continuing to read, Reese. <laughs> Since bags came from all over Tokyo, there was no read. telling who the bones had belonged to, so they had to check dental records. Is it really oh like I just God. it's hard to believe there's a fucking database that they can just like got it, you know? <laughs> got him. I, I don't want my dentist a, sharing have a feeling in your molar second on the left. I don't want my dentist sharing my personal <laughs> right. uh, information with the government. Soon after, they identified the skull as 67-year-old Hideo Murai of Kita in Tokyo. This was corroborated by a bank card with Murai's name on it that was also found among the trash in the bag with his skull. Naturally, the Tokyo, Metro the Tokyo Metropolitan Police launched an investigation into the matter and on the 29th of June arrested the deceased older brother, 68-year-old Shoichi Murai, on charges of illegal disposal of human remains. That's not my skull. I swear, <laughs> officer. Murai denies the charges, however, and claims that he found the bones in his brother's room. Well, I mean, it isn't his. It's his brother, But right? assumed they were replicas. The brothers were said to have shared the same house in Kita, with Shoichi living on the first floor and Hideo living on the second. Shoichi claims that he had not spoken to his younger brother since at least March of 2017. Jesus Christ! And was cleaning the room the in order fuck? to sell it when he found the skull. He added, I wondered if he was hospitalized somewhere. I mean, where's the rest of him? <laughs> well, the, the, there was a oh decomposed fucking stink in the house? A decomposing body? What the fuck? I mean, well, no, but where's the rest of him? Was it literally just his like acid washed skull just left behind? By the Yakuza sending a message that he never got? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Police searched Hideo's residence and found the rest of his skeletonized body lying on a bed. No! What, what the fuck, dude? According to an autopsy, at least several months had passed since his death, but he was confirmed to have been alive in 2017 when Shoichi claims to have last interacted with him. The authorities are also looking into a possible cause of death, but reports so far say that there are no signs of violence. If there's nothing but a goddamn skeleton, how are they going to tell? How do you how do you let a body decompose to the point where it's only skeleton, Dude. and you come downstairs from your apartment and you go into your brother's apartment and Freaking, you see a skeleton? The, 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 the stink in that. Like, what the fuck? The amount of times that this has happened in Japan that we have covered on this podcast is astounding. But, like, the shit around... Like, there would be... If if that was, like, on the floor, there'd be a worn spot on the floor where the body was decomposing. You know what I mean? Like, it wouldn't I mean, be just, like... It wouldn't just, just be, like, a, a, a white skeleton on a chair or something. Like, the chair would be disgusting. Right. It, would, it be would be melted destroyed. into the chair. Yeah. No, for sure. It, 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 it's baffling. So, 
The authorities are looking into a possible cause of death, but reports say that there are no signs of violence. There are dozens, there are still dozens of questions surrounding this incident, though, most of which were asked online, were asked in online comments about the news. Quote, even if it was a replica, why is he throwing away his brother's stuff like that? No, no, not even that. Not the side of the question. Guy, why is there a whole ass skeleton attached to it still? <laughs> they lived in the same house and he didn't notice his brother died until he was a pile of bones. Why didn't it smell? Why just the head? Did he see the rest of the skeleton? What's going on? What a horrible brother. <laughs> Even if he was reduced to bones, wouldn't there be stains? Did he try to recycle the skull? I wonder if he's just in a very, very deep state of denial. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wonder if he's a murderer. <laughs> was the skull placed on a table or something that made it look like a replica? If it was lying on the pillow of a bed, replica wouldn't be my first thought. He was probably collecting the guy's pension. It's the same old story. Yeah, that's got to be it. Sadly, cases where people have left deceased relatives' bodies secretly hidden in order to continue collecting pensions or other benefits are not unheard of. However, that also seems like something the police would be able to look into rather quickly. But they haven't reported anything about pension or welfare payments being misappropriated so far. On the other hand... People not realizing that a sibling they lived with had been dead in the house for years is also not without precedent. In the end, yeah, I have, it, yeah, you, you know, you know, you've got a roommate and you haven't seen them in like six months. They never left. They never moved around. You never heard their goddamn TV. No, nah, man, you're definitely not going to go in there and check it. What the hell? Is going I mean, on. this is after five years. Yeah. Right. In the end, he was like, "I've got the best room in the world." He always pays this part of the rent somehow. <laughs> in the end, it'll be up to the police to untangle this mess and determine if Shoichi needs to be held accountable or was just very confused. <laughs> I mean, come on, definitely freaking got accountable. Jesus Christ! All right, adult video mosaic destroyer's trial ends with guilty verdict. What? In Kyoto oh. District Court. Can you fucking no! believe that? First of all, Ken Akamatsu, huh? you need to be getting on this instead of your stupid game project. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. Really. Machine learning AI used to, to try to skirt Japanese censorship laws. Last October, officers from the Kyoto Prefectural Police arrested Masayuki Nakamoto a resident of the city of Takasago in Hyogo Prefecture. Nakamoto stepped into the sites of law enforcement when he began selling copies. See, the problem is you sold it, dude. When he began selling copies of adult videos online, and on Wednesday, a verdict was reached in his trial. The videos the 44-year-old Nakamoto had been selling weren't just simple pirated copies, though, but videos that had altered the appeared that he had altered to appear uncensored. Japanese adult videos are required by law to obscure the performer's genitals. With placing a mosaic over them, the, with, with placing a mosaic over them, the most common form of compliance. Nakamoto, though, was selling adult videos that looked like they had their mosaics removed. Looked like is because since the mosaic is hard coded into the image of the commercially released video, it can't really be removed. Instead, Nakamoto used an AI program which via machine learning gained an understanding of what uncensored genitals look huh. like, then used the knowledge to create a photorealistic simulated visual representation. I just like the idea that wow. like, remember, remember when we did the, um, the female versions of ourselves in the intro, oh, how gosh. janky it looked. Remember because it like, it wasn't normalized across every frame. So like mm -hmm. like my hair was like flowing all over the place and everything. I just imagine that that's what you're looking like. The the penis going in the vagina is just like oh sometimes it's a black dick. Sometimes it looks you know, <laughs> oh my God. like every other frame, like some, you're getting a seizure over the fact that it keeps changing. <laughs> you know, I got I want to point out that it, it, this what he did was stupid. First of all, but you know what's even dumber? The fact that they would buy this. 
I don't know. I mean, have you seen the mosaic shit? Like that probably gets pretty stale. <laughs> They're probably oh like God. desperate times call for desperate measures <laughs> mode, you know? Dude. Oh my I god. Okay. I don't remember I, I have a hard I have a hard time not also really feeling bad for whoever was dumb enough to purchase this. I, I don't remember this is Japan. I don't remember what documentary it was. It might have been the anime related documentaries, actually. Um mm-hmm. No, I think it's a talking no video. Yeah, it's a talking no video. There's a there's a guy in there who uh, mm-hmm. he has a pair of glasses that are like mm-hmm. um, what do you call it? Like uh, polarized or whatever lenses. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and they he's work. he's got like this whole like setup of these glasses that he has like all these gadgets and stuff on, and he says that he uses he uses them because it makes the mosaicing a little bit less noticeable or something like it. Huh. That was something in that movie that stuck with me. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> that guy's going to jail. <laughs> anyway, um. <laughs> there, was a, there was a joke. I don't know if any of you guys ever played Yakuza. Nope. No. But there's a place. That, okay. Well, the, the series is badass. So I'm just going to go with that on that. But the thing is, like, in the Yakuza series, uh, you're walking around as, uh, as Kiryu, and you walk up to this dude on the street, and he's going off about how he's able to see through the mosaics and porn in Japan. <laughs> and here he was all blown away. He's like, how? And, uh, Teach me your ways. I'm going to do. <laughs> it's this whole little joke they go through. And I kind of think about this with that, with this glasses thing, because it's like, one, that doesn't make any sense. Because, I mean, I'm, I can't have glasses because of my eye condition. But here's the thing. Don't glasses technically make you see better? Hey, flooding them. You got a pair of glasses not too long ago. Wouldn't it be kind of weird if they kind of blurred your vision to make you not notice something? I mean, that's effectively what they probably were doing, because it's like when when you upscale something, you're effectively blurring the pixels in, mm-hmm. to some extent. So. So, ba- so basically, he was making it harder for himself to see. So again, he was tucking himself. Well, it's like looking at something at, in the big picture. So there's some art, some paintings that look realistic and great from like a distance, but up close they look like a mess. So in the that same way, perhaps <laughs> the glasses putting that extra like separation um, mm-hmm. helps them like see the bigger picture, read between the lines. I guess you mm-hmm. could say it's kind of like wearing a, a really tight fitting. It's kind of um, like beer glasses, but for art. Maybe. Uh, I mean, it's it's like if <laughs> wearing a form-fitting like bathing suit or something versus I don't know, uh, wearing something that is. Uh, wow, what am I thinking of? Where are you going with this? Continue. I don't know. Like maybe <laughs> maybe I'm thinking of like a form-fitting thing that doesn't like. Uh, have the details versus something that's very baggy that has the detail. I don't even know where I'm going with this, but like, <laughs> like the baggy thing. All right, dude, look, I have no idea where you're going. The with baggy this. clothes overall look look less great, but because they g- give you the because you're thinking it's more detailed. Uh, be- mm-hmm. well, I guess because it looks more detailed in the parts mm-hmm. that count. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Th- I don't even. I don't so basically, so basically let, me, let me try to save you here. What you're trying to say is, is that by allowing <laughs> himself <laughs> to like the the for his for him to increase his imagination effectively while looking at this image or imagery or another video, by distorting the village by distorting his own vision, he's allowing himself to imagine something better than what's there. I mean, technically, does that mean I always see the best the world has to offer? But we won't go there. Yes. Can we move uh, on now? Yes. No, <laughs> Sorry. No, I, we can't. I had to. St- I had to step out of the room and pee, and then I had to get alcohol because you. You totally this missed is... how fun them. How fun them described baggy clothes and tight swimsuits. You gotta go back and watch that. Honestly, oh, I had I the AirPod in. I heard the whole thing. Ah! Uh, so oh, okay. this is the two hundredth podcast, and this is the two hundred more. I poured way too much. <laughs> this oh. is the two hundredth shot. Oh God. Keeping so, up with people now. Good thing you're not working tomorrow. How, how long? <laughs> That's how long what are... you think. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we get the ads for StreamYard while we're streaming with StreamYard. <laughs> Honestly, it's probably one of the best ads to get because you're like, okay, you're wasting your ad. Money. Yeah. 
but all of our viewers, it, I mean, it's like we practically have the the stream yard powered by stream yard going on, right? Like it's a constant reminder. <laughs> anyway, so um, all right, so uh, Nakamoto was selling. Uh, I read that. Uh, Okay. Nakamoto used an AI program, which via machine learning gained an understanding of what uncensored genitals look like, then used the knowledge to create a photorealistic simulated visual representation. Nakamoto then placed the simulated image over the mosaic, making the on-screen performers appear completely uncensored, despite this actually being the second round of digital additions to the original really want footage to and, and offered his doctored videos for sale online. All of this, all of that brought charges of copyright violation. And I just, it's, I like the idea that you, that he developed, he trained a deep fake, but instead of over faces, he's putting it over people's crotches. <laughs> oh my. Well, it sure goes deep, don't it? <laughs> oh, come on, Lord. All of that brought charges of copyright violation and, quote, display of obscene electromagnetically recorded media down on Nakamoto once the authorities caught wind of what he'd been doing. Though he was, re uh, though he was released on his own recognizance, Nakamoto was back in the courtroom of Kyoto District Court on, jo on June 29th, where presiding judge Shinsuke Danjo sentenced him to two years in prison with the sentence suspended for three years. The, two uh, the harsh two-year sentence, Danjo explained, was because Nakamoto had regularly and repeatedly engaged in beating off. No, wait. And what? selling <laughs> videos over the course of roughly <laughs> 10 months. While the three-year suspension, which gives him the opportunity to avoid doing any actual jail time, was in recognition of the remorse he has shown since his arrest. Nakam See, it seems like Japan's conviction rate is really over the fact that people have learned that if you just admit to everything, yeah, there's no mistake, it was me, and you just go through the court, you just get a suspended sentence, you don't serve any jail time. You know, <laughs> Nakamoto was also fined 2 million yen, roughly 15,000 US dollars, which isn't chump change, but it's still quite a bit less than the approximately 11 million yen he reportedly earned selling the videos. Well, Damn. No wonder he did it. <laughs> God, Three God. years to spread a sentence. That's a slap on the wrist. Much. I'm going right back in. You know? Okay, <laughs> I, kinda, I, thought guys, <laughs> I thought the guys who spent all that money on Genshin were dumb. <laughs> Goddamn. 15 million? Holy shit. 15, no, uh, 11 15, million. 11 million. 11 million. Yen. Yen. Oh, sorry. I'm wrong. Yen. Yeah. So that's $15,000 is 2 million yen. Now, how much did he make? You said 11 million yen. 11 million yen. So that, what, 110,000 US dollars? Uh, uh, less, no. less, less than that. Yeah. Okay. Well. The yen ain't doing so good. That's another thing you okay. can thank Shinzo Abe for. Abe nomics <laughs> uh, and the quantitative easing. Uh, Twitter Twitter reactions to the verdict have included so close. <laughs> 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 he made the dream that men have had for so long come true, but has now been suppressed by the power of the state. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the battle cry for the anarchist. Right. This is uh, Shimonetta becomes real. I can't, I can't wait till we have that day where we can finally say who is the owner of this boner when we're watching and reading this bullshit. Thank you for making our impossible dream come true. Our modern day Jesus has been crucified. <laughs> How could they treat a man of such holiness like this? <laughs> Nowadays, you can find uncensored foreign adult videos online pretty easily, but he wanted to see uncensored Japanese Poochie so much that he went all, he went to all that trouble to try to get around the mosaic. Look at he, I, this is the thing. He trained the 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 AI on Western porn. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than just going to Western porn. Yeah, like how else would he have done this? I don't know yeah. if that makes him amazing mm -hmm. or an idiot. <laughs> Regardless of how clever Nakamoto's technique technique may have been, 
Let this case serve as a cautionary tale and a reminder that other uses for AI, like using it to design a cool-looking katana... Oh, fuck these articles. Or turn a hugely popular anime character at an office building receptionist. It's also like an indie open court. Okay, uh, that's, that's a... I think I... I, think I, I, th green... I I thought of a better analogy from what I was saying. Uh, oh. Think of, of like, <laughs> think of the glasses versus uh, blurred glasses, or whatever. Kind of like, uh, uh, what is it? A, someone with a nice ass wearing jeans versus someone with a not great ass wearing tight fitting pants. It's like, sure, the one gives you more detail, but it's not. There's nothing there. Whereas the one with the less detail but more sh uh like you interpret the shape uh differently yeah, that might be uh, you might like that more i don't know <laughs> all right let's move on i want to go to bed that's why so, we're trying to move on so yeah what? me too <laughs> i'm sorry okay. i'm, Am I'm I my bad? hung up on this ass comment here <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> i just want to remind everybody to smash that like of Jill Valentine's ass in the jeans. <laughs> You're not treating the one's not screen. Oh, what? Oh, I got not, it. Right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and so reminder: you this is the posterior collector. <laughs> That's how you got you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, next article: No sexual partner. World Health Organization to classify you as disabled. Top eight. <laughs> so. Wow. <laughs> you know, not getting wow. laid your entire life and everything, that sucks and all, but at least now you got a handicapped parking spot. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, the fact that it was fun, but nobody tells you when you have one of those and you go to park in like a theater and there's no available spots. R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so uh, it doesn't fucking matter anyway. It, it, it's funny that they... so. Okay, hold disabled. up, hold up, hold up. Random Eleven, you messaged me and said this looks to be fake news. Yes. Because but it was it originally confirmed. reported <laughs> it was originally yeah. it was originally reported in 2016. Mm -hmm. Okay, that it's just around the corner and it's still being reported in 2019 when this article Well, was this written. is the WHO. It, they they're known to sit just on their around the corner. This is India <laughs> today reporting it. I haven't heard anything about this. Hey, and you know what? I think you have because it was I'm in pretty the, sure India it was today in the Huffing was the one who reported <laughs> on Sam <Hyde>. uh, <laughs> You know, it was, the guy who killed the shit so hot, man. <laughs> it was in the Huffington Post. Okay. There seems to be some credibility behind the, the rumor, but whether or not... Uh, like the, the rumor started somewhere and then the, the news media kind of took it and it did go through. So it's not like India Today is making up the story okay. from the whole cloth. So my but head cannon. It seems like it <laughs> is, is not happening. <laughs> I mean, it would be funny if it was, but it seems like it at least... If it was true, they realized how stupid they were for thinking I, I of just, it, I, and I they backed up. I live in a world where incels become, you know, they get a, uh, a new lease on life with all the benefits that come with being disabled, uh, <laughs> which are very few, to be honest. <laughs> well, <laughs> well what, what, if, you, if you read the article, it, uh, it goes on to it say, right uh, I really wish we didn't, but uh, it, it, I'll just summarize. It's it goes on to short. say, Jesus, let me read. No, oh, let him summarize it. it, man. Go ahead. It goes on to say that it, basically it's going to apply to gay people too, because if if you can't have a kid, uh, then you're disabled. So if you're in a relationship, okay, with yeah. A, so it a, says people who guy, don't have sex or struggle to find a sexual partner to have children will now be considered disabled. Okay. Yeah. So uh, gay people are uh, gonna also be, or would also be disabled under this. Uh, 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 same reasoning. So, according if, to reports if, in this new guy, the World Health Organization is all set to classify a person who is unable to find a, a suitable sexual partner or achieve pregnancy after 12 months or more of regular unprotected sex as disabled. <laughs> You're broken, <laughs> bitch. <Yeah. laughs> the new rule will cover heterosexual and gay couples who will be given the same priority like a couple seeking intro... Um, 
vitro pseudo fertilization is that what, whatever that is yeah uh, be yeah because of fertility problems all right so i'm just going to give some advice and i know that nobody in our audience is getting laid so they don't need this advice no <laughs> everyone's get your disability package if you aren't able to get pregnant you know with your spouse go to a chiropractor it is actually one of the most common things that they deal with and I, I can't tell you how many times when I was working for a chiropractor, we'd have couples come in who talked about how they were trying to start a family and they were doing it like multiple times a day, every day. And by the next time oh, they came in after the first visit, they were pregnant. I'm just throwing that out there. It is a thing. How does that uh, work? Sounds like woo woo to me. <laughs> well, I, I can't tell you how often that seemed to occur anyway. So, um, All right, moving on. I, I was hoping that this video was going to be about it, like they actually did a thing, but it's about the poor condition of health in the state. All right, moving it's... on. Let's talk about summer penis. <laughs> oh, dude, <laughs> sitting here in no AC. <laughs> tell me, tell me about your <laughs> the, the massive girth you're experiencing <laughs> with your no AC. <laughs> summer penis oh. is real. Doctors agree that heat may make men's penises appear larger. The real reason Elon Musk is going... Oh, no, Mars is farther away from the sun. I always forget about that. <laughs> 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 summer is in full swing, and so too apparently is a phenomenon called summer <laughs> penis. <laughs> so the internet has been a buzz about the idea that penises appear to be larger in the summer and smaller in the winter. Where's the clip? Like, I was in the pool <laughs> from uh, <laughs> Ever since journalist Tracy Moore wrote about it earlier this month in a feature for Mel magazine. In her story, Moore explains that summer penis is a temporary fluctuation that, thanks to heat and warmth, gives you a months-long leg up on shaft size. What the fuck? It'd be to... like if a woman's boobs suddenly got huge from May hey, to August. who says yeah. summer boobs don't exist, huh? <laughs> sure. Moore quoted... What the fuck? Moore quoted Reddit users who claimed in a 2016 forum that in their personal experience, summer brings on bigger penises, better <laughs> erections, and larger testicles. It's probably because of um, uh, blood flow. Because um, they... Uh, they argue like it's it's been it's been stated for people who are trying to increase their testosterone that men were not like the body wasn't designed and no, actually that makes the opposite point because the balls actually need to be cold in uh, according to according to the people who talk who are proponents of the uh castration the raise your um raise your testosterone they like to take the cold showers uh, they say that because modern underwear keeps your your junk up to your body, it actually keeps it warm, which actually lowers your sperm count and all these things. Anyway, so it actually works against their theory. So I shouldn't have brought it up. So Moore spoke with several urologists who backed up the men's claims and attributed the apparent growth in penis size to the fact that blood vessels may expand in the summer to regulate heat, unlike in winter months when blood vessels contract. I mean, I, I'm just going to need to get like uh, one of those like uh, tape measure that has the, you know, like the oh measuring my. tape, not, not a tape measure, but a, you know, the measuring tape that you use for like uh, tailoring and whatnot. I'm just going to have to, to, to like... Categ uh, categorize this data over the course of 12 months and find okay, out if there's any so, fluctuations. So, so if you start now, you'll be at what? An inch? <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> 
Well, the yeah. way that you measure a girth is not, it's based on circumference. So. Oh, you're talking about girth? Oh, uh, yeah. sorry. Uh, two, so mil two, two mils? <laughs> two millimeters? Yes, I am Tracy Wilcox, Damon Mills, a uh, rape victim. <laughs> Whoa. When it's hot outside, you may take in more water, which may, in combination with the sweating, make it appear like your body or skin is bloated. Right. So it's actually bloat. Bloat works in your to, uh, to your advantage in, in the nether regions of men. Uh, a urologist with Orlando Health uh, said, and that may give you the perception that things are larger. Another urologist, Dr. Dudley Danoff, <laughs> told Moore. <laughs> that the fluctuation is likely caused by vasodilation. The warmer the ambient environment, the more the blood vessels dilate. And the warmth allowing vasodilation, whatever the vasodilation, increases blood flow. They're making up words. <laughs> so if we, were, if we think of the penis as these two sausage casings that fill with blood. <laughs> And the one channel that that carries the urine, then the He's sausage the casing will swell and expand to its energetic or so to its genetic limit, depending on the volume of blood. What the fuck? <laughs> the increased blood flow will increase, and the corpora, the erectile tissue, will be expanded, and the penis will be larger. But I don't think it holds true in the flaccid state. There, <laughs> there would be no explanation for that. <laughs> so the doctor emphasized that the fluctuations are temporary and essentially nothing more than an optical illusion. Health.com spoke with a third urologist, Dr. Jesse Mills, director of the men's clinic at UCLA, who agreed that men's penises can, in fact, appear larger in the summer months. I just, yeah, I've, I've got all this data to back it up. <laughs> Unlike Dr. Danoff, Mills thinks even the flaccid state can be affected. Oh. Sorry, did you say Mills? Is Damon yes. Mills on this? <laughs> Damon Mills. <laughs> I, I that would be hilarious if a <laughs> random article about penises had Damon Mills input. No, unfortunately, it's not Damon Mills. It's Jesse Mills. But well, why don't you why don't you on Twitter ask Damon Mills what he thinks? Damon like, Mills, have you? Well, first of all, I'm blocked. But second of all, <laughs> Damon Mills, have you experienced growth in the summertime? <laughs> Penile size in the flaccid state is purely a function of how much blood flow is circulating in the penis. He said, the warmer the environment, the more the more show a man is going to have. But Dr. Mills said the phenomenon doesn't hold true in all summer situations. Stick a guy in an ice cold lake in the middle of summer. Where are you going to find an ice cold lake in the middle of summer? And his penis will shrink to winter size. Wow. Another article of water is wet. <laughs> so uh, I just like to think that someone like dates a guy in the summer and then dumps him by the winter because <laughs> it's that millimeter smaller than I was advertised. <gasps> that appearance of girth that isn't actually real. <laughs> All right. China man's urinary problem has doctors discovering a shocking cause. Are you guys ready for the SpongeBob? Oh, is it, it's shoving things in your dick a thon? <laughs> Is oh. it is it an eel? Well, I, eel. I I thought. Do I, I want to know? First. Do we even want to know? A recurring urinary problem afflicting a man living in China had him going to a doctor to learn that he is actually intersex and has been menstruating for twenty years. A shocking development that will have many wondering how this wasn't discovered sooner. The 33-year-old oh. Chen Li, <laughs> not to be confused with Chen Li. Well, he had, <laughs> they had to change it uh, because after, after finding out the regendering. Who has altered his name. <laughs> Is he trans now? Is he going to change it to Chen Li? Of the Sichuan province was informed by doctors that despite having a penis and testicles, he was born with female sex chromosomes and also has a uterus and ovaries. How do you fucking miss that as his doctor? Like, I assume this man, maybe not. This a is lot of China. Time, but like, 
they have to have some checkups every couple of years, right? Every few years, like <laughs> he probably should have uh, figured it out when he stuck the uh, whatever he, he stuck up his dick. Up his dick. <laughs> <laughs> I, was gonna, I was like, wait a minute, no, it's so varied. I can't pick one well, thing you and know have what? it be immediately identifiable. <laughs> For once, that practice is actually going to come in useful because he's going to have to start shoving tampons up his dick. <laughs> 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 right. Oh, oh, oh. oh dear God. <laughs> <laughs> Suffering from blood in his urine for two decades whilst oh also being stricken with There's abdominal a... agony every month. How did he not see a doctor sooner? <laughs> Holy crap. Chen was appalled after learning he also had female reproductive parts and subsequently had them removed. Well, that solves that. <laughs> Now he can just shove things in his dick as normal. <laughs> now he can do it for pleasure instead of utility. <laughs> <laughs> Bewildering doctors who couldn't pinpoint an exact cause for Chen's bloody urine and abdominal pain that had been recurring since adolescence. They initially believed it was appendicitis, but Chen's issues persisted after being treated. I am scared to scroll down. I'm going to double check this. <laughs> I didn't actually read past the first paragraph. All right, okay, we're it's good. It's good. We can we're, we're okay. <laughs> A medical checkup last year at long last uncovered the source of Chen's problems. That that being, he was actually intersex and had female reproductive organs, and his bloody urine was from his menstruation. Chen had the dysfunctional female organs removed through surgery. Did I already read this? Like, I feel like I just read, read remove. What the fuck? Why are you going to state this again? He had the dysfunctional female organs removed through surgery, but his surgeon noted that he will sadly never have children as his testicles are ovaries. <laughs> what? No, they were the testicles weren't producing sperm. <laughs> oh, what a travesty. That guidelines, fucking sucks. Guidelines from the United Nations describe intersex individuals as those who do not fit the typical definitions of male or female bodies. Whoa! Well, are you telling me all the non-binaries are just intersex according to United Nations? Anyway, that's it. Apparently, that's the. I thought there would be more after the images, but no. I don't even well, know what I'm looking at here. According to the articles before, uh, I guess he's disabled now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand what this image has to do with this. They got the character with the glasses, but not in... I, I don't understand. Anyway... So, that was podcast 200. Isn't that the character from Comey Can't Communicate? No. no. Is it? It looks like it. I don't okay. care. So. No. Uh, Dagashi Kashi Modified? No, that's not the character. Oh, oh eight hours. All right. I'm surprised we did it in under nine, honestly. Um, so... Watch Club. <laughs> no. <laughs> you fucking I'm done. Good night. All right. So everybody who is still watching, you are troopers. Thank you for sticking with us. Honestly, again, this is podcast 200. Like this is, you know, this is no small feat. We have, uh, we have persevered through tremendous odds. Uh, and uh, I'm just happy that we still have uh, people who watch this shit. <laughs> so... <laughs> So thank you for being here. Um, does anybody else have anything they'd like to say before we? Uh... I had to be up in an hour to freaking pour concrete. Oh. oh. Rip. It's eighty-five degrees. I want to go to bed. It's eighty-five degrees. My dick is bigger than I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. All right. Play the outro, Sam. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Take it easy, everyone. Make sure you like the video.